What is that sound you made? You're so nasty. Nasty girl. All right, boys, here we are. I gotta change over the windows, don't worry. Sorry that the intro is just so quiet. I was just trying to make sure I downloaded it right. Lord, okay, so. Glad I ate as well. Wasn't exactly sure, so wanted to get everything squared away. <laughs> All right, looks like it's in. We love to see it. Okay, so let's load it up. I don't even have my earbud in. <laughs> I don't even have my earbud in. Lord, I really, the second I saw the notification, I fucking actually sprinted to my PC. Like, not that I had to go very far, the bed's right there. And thank you, Diamond. You can stay there if you'd like. But, oh, not me. It's closing it out. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. One second. Let me get a couple of more things figured out. Dave, close that. All right, we're here, guys. The day has finally arrived. It's been a busy week, especially for me. Uh, had a lot of fun with a bunch of games this week, you know, so it feels good to kind of cap it off with the finale today. I am almost 90% sure we're not gonna be able to finish the entire finale today. Even if I do go longer, I'm probably gonna just stick to my regular screen, uh, stream schedule and not stream any longer than like three hours, but um, I will be picking it back up next week. I don't know exactly what day, probably sooner rather than later. We'll see. Um, but before then, you know, let's just, let's just get to it. Oh my gosh, not me about to load an ARC one. <laughs> uh, it's like, what's going on? Okay, the cabin is exactly as I remember it. It's warm and strangely comforting. And also my desktop audio is not on, so I'm glad that I noticed that so we can... Because what is Our Wonderland without the music? It's not... Uh, how do I get the menu up? <laughs> not me, just us immediately not remembering how to do stuff. It's okay, I got it, don't worry. Probably. No, okay. Well, I can stop skipping through dialogue now. Uh, it's warm and strange and comfort. When I get the chance, I'll make sure. I don't think there's any music in this section anyway. Uh, there's even something cooking atop the stove, filling the air with a delightful scent. Almost as though it has been waiting for us. Waiting for us for a long time. I look around, my gaze jumping from the stove to the table to the bed. My focus lingers there for a second too long, and I feel my inside start to twist. But I shake my head to clear my thoughts, jerking away. Gidget looks equally as uneasy in front of me. I see their own gaze traveling from the bed to the kitchen floor. Oh god. Don't think about it. The color momentarily drains from their face before they grit their teeth and moving purposely to the center of the room. Well, we're here, they say simply. Yippee fucking skippy! Genzo lets out a sigh, shifting Orlom in his arms. 
was kind of hoping for a no vacancy so we had an excuse to vamoose the fuck out of here. Didn't that kind of happen already? I wins. Well, well, for some of us, anyway. I throw a pained glance in Oilam's direction, who responds with a non-committal grunt. <laughs> he's just, he's just like aggro this entire time now. Cool. He's embarrassed. Okay, what happened last time was a lot. Okay. Gidget begins wandering around, first to the table, scrutinizing the plate of full cookies at its center, then to the pot, slowly shimmering, um, shimmering, simmering atop the stove, then back to the wall. And only notifications being on. How unprofessional is this stream, huh? Jesus. <laughs> anyway, okay. To the door, I swear to fucking God, I had never been there before. At least not in reality. Interesting, I muse. Then try to handle. It doesn't budge. Gidget gives a few more solid tugs for good measure, but it's locked up tight. Guess that's a no-go. Or we could just walk around to the back of the house like a real passel of problems always. Genzo snorts and lowers Orlom down on the bed. Let's go, Gray! Hey, what's up? We are, like, I spent the first, like, 15 minutes of stream. No, it hasn't even been 15 minutes. <laughs> I spent the first five minutes of stream just making sure I downloaded it right so I wasn't, like, because I'd never had to do it, but I had no issues. The persistent data went, and it was no issue. So, we're right back in it. I've only read maybe, like, five lines, so you're as early as you can be. Genzo snorts and lowers Orlom down on the bed. I stare at the door in question, a strange gurgle dancing in my gut. I don't know. I clasp and unclasp my hands, fingers bouncing idly. Something tells me it doesn't lead behind the house. Gidget looks at me, then back at the door. I wonder if they're feeling the same strange sense of otherworldliness that I am. They grunt and cross their arms, slowly moving back towards the table. Well, whatever it leads, we wherever it leads, we can figure it out in a bit because I need at least five minutes peace right now <laughs> that we're not being actively hunted for once. Well, hell to the f hell to the fucking A. And I'm gonna fix me a heap and bowl of whatever that is that's smelling like the divine comedy over there. Genzo claps his hands together and with an eager grin as he starts for the stove. The divine comedy, that doesn't make any sense. Or <laughs> not him correcting us like immediately. Oh no. And I didn't do my Orlom voice. Fuck. Okay. Orlom holds a hand to his temple as though staving off of a headache. <laughs> Orlom has immediately turned into, like, anti-hero. Bothered anti-hero who now has to side on, like fight on the side of the heroes. That's exactly what he's feeling like. Are you sure it's safe to eat that? I bring a hand up in wary admo admonition? Admonition? There you go. But even as I do, I can feel my own stomach grumble somewhat cer unceremoniously in response. Gidget brings our hands to their hips with a sigh. I'd be equally as leery if I weren't fighting the tingling suspicion that it was left here for us to begin with. That, and I'm also ridiculously hungry. Well, you better hurry the fuck up then, because once I start slopping, I ain't stopping. <laughs> Fucking yeah. It doesn't take long before the four of us have filled up a couple of bowls with stew and taken our seats at the table. Four chairs. Just enough for us. I wonder if the others have noticed I anxiously squeeze my spoon between my fingers. The stew smells even better up close. And I see thick uh, chunks of potatoes, carrots, and beef within the thick broth. My stomach gurgles, ag gurgles, it <laughs> gurgles again the last time I ate. I need to make sure that the music can be heard. So. Okay, yeah, it's quiet, but it's there. So. Let's make sure that puppy up. That puppy's up. My stomach gurgles the last time I ate. When, when was the last time I ate? That's a great question. Um, the rabbit hideout. R.E.P. Jerry. Uh, breakfast back in the burrow? Probably. My brow dro droops. The burrow. The rabbits. Jerry. Jerry! It somehow feels like a lifetime ago already. Yeah. <laughs> and yet I can still picture his face clearly in my mind. The way his eyes had turned sharp as he chatted for me to run. As he'd held off the assaulting rabbits. As he'd... I bite down on my tongue. I can't let myself think about that now. As soon as I let one demoralizing thought enter my mind, they all start pouring in like a landslide, and I can't afford to let myself wallow in a debilitating despair. Not yet, at least. Yeah, we'll we'll save that for therapy on the on the surface. Not when we haven't found buck, bucks yet. Uh, not when we haven't brought this this fucking horror movie to a close yet, if that's even possible. I dip my spoon into the stew, watching the wooden surface bump and jostle the colored chunks as I slowly stir it. Then finally, bring a scoop to my mouth. It's warm against my lips but I can't seem to taste it. It rolls around like mush in my mouth. 
Is this even edible? I say, Orlon prodding at his own stew with his spoon, a thinly veiled uh, look of disgust on his face. Oh, he's sad because it's not people. I'm sorry, Orlon. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about your strict humanitarian diet. Yeah. Would it be, <laughs> would it help if I card out a hunk of my stomach for you, your highness? Orlon starts, and I'd forgotten you'll eat anything that's placed in front of you. Pardon me for still uh, having some semblance of taste. Taste? Taste, says the cannibalistic dictator. What is this? Freaky deaky opposite fun time murder land? I stare down at my stew, a thin uh, film of sweat gathering across my forehead. Guys. <laughs> God, there's so much catharsis. I know. It's like, how the fuck are we here? Like, so, like this feels unthinkable, you know? Because we've never seen them interact or, like, have, like, friendly-ish banter, you know, in Wonderland. So it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'd assume we were going to keep things pleasant until we made it out of this internal pit of torment, but apparently not. Would you like to get into every one of your abhorrent vulgarisms, or can we enjoy a single meal in peace? Genzo slams his hands down at the table, jerking to his feet. I mean, Jerry's not here, so <laughs> Genzo has to argue with somebody. At least I haven't butchered anyone. Everyone at the fucking table, Mr. High and Mighty. No, you'll just slowly chip away at them from the inside until they want to die, so you can blame it on, all on someone else. Uh, no, it's like we've gone through so much of that it's like, I don't know, like, a sigh of relief. Yeah, exactly. Guys, my voice is quiet as a whisper. Better than melting someone's face off with a fucking cattle prod, you twisted dipshit. Yes, that was one of my finer moments, wasn't it? Your face is so delightful watching him squeal. Would you two fucking stop it? Now it's Gidget's turn to slam their hands down on the table, which is enough to shut the other two up immediately. The cabin goes quiet, nothing but the sound of slowly dwindling uh, drizzle on the rooftop. Look, every one of us has done some pretty horrific things. Smith, me especially. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I'm here now. I had to finish all my- No, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't apologize. We're not even that far in, as you can probably tell, because <laughs> I spent like way too much time just setting up. <laughs> <laughs> and I had prepped things in advance, too, and it still took me a hot minute. Whoops. But it's okay. Don't worry. It, we're all in this together, maybe. And then gave myself five minutes to calm down because my- Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Just lurk. Relax. I can't even imagine how scary it is right now, but it's okay. We're all okay. It's gonna be fine. We're having a good time. So, look, every one of us has done some pretty horrific things. Their gaze is focused somewhere on the plate of cookies in the middle of the table. We've all- hurt each other in unforgivable ways. At this, however, I see their eyes flicker towards me for just a moment, and I feel myself sink just a bit, as though wanting to disappear into my stew. <laughs> I mean, that would make it more edible for Orlom, I guess. Um, yes, I feel in a bit of a haze. Oh, no, it's okay. Don't- yeah. And it's gonna take some long, long talks before we can even start to work things out. I'm only going to be here for a little bit because I have to go on a long bus ride later, but I'm so happy, so happy that it's out. Yes, everybody, congratulations. Feels good to be able to do it on stream. I feel like, at least for me, like it's good to just sit here and it's more just for documentation purposes. <laughs> I didn't want to miss a second. Okay, everybody's been ahead of me for fucking ever. Now I get to be ahead of them for like two seconds, just two. But hello, thank you for dropping by. And oh my goodness, if I slam my keyboard down again. Um bloated and heavy and seemed to hang over everyone in the room before Gidget slays their hands with a bark. But for Christ's sakes, can we get out of this alive before you start going at each other's throats? No, for real. Like, <laughs> just put a pin in it. Just keep a journal. Write down all your, like, strongest insults and then just, like, read them out, you know, powwow style altogether. Like, it'll be fine. He's the one adding unnecessary commentary. Yeah, well, maybe I don't want to get eaten in my sleep. <laughs> You. <laughs> Yank that shit off his head. You. Gidget reaches over and wrenches Genzo's cap from his head, then hurls it to the floor. Sit down and shut up. No one's eating anyone. I see Genzo pressing his lips together and barely suppressed chagrin, but he does as he's told. The chair creaks as he slumps back down with an audible snort. <laughs> Next to him, Orlov Snickers. <laughs> Grow up, you two, please. Until Gidget points their fingers straight into his face. You, eat your damn stew and stop complaining. No one cares about your delicate palate. Orlom's lip curls downward and he looks as though he wants to say something. But he ultimately stays silent, obediently picking up his spoon with a distasteful click of his tongue. And you. <laughs> what did I do? Gidget turns to me this time. And I must uh, give them the most spooked owl look in the history of our friendship because they seem to lose their spunk. 
How dare you? How dare you? This is mutiny. Oh shit. Yes. <laughs> okay, I was scrambling. I was scrambling stocks. You'll have to forgive me. I was scrambling. I got the notification. I was like, okay, shit. I gotta get OBS set up. I gotta put my green screen on. My hair was done, but I had to fix it. I had to get a bottle of water. I was all over the place. I'm too ADHD for this shit. <laughs> I can't keep track. And I was like, I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> And it was you. I was missing you. I'm sorry. This is almost unforgivable. I was waiting for the stream. I wanted the finale. We're not even far in. We're not even far in. It took me way too long because I'm bad at downloading and I was worried that I had to do an extra step because I forgot about Rempi fucking... What's the word? Continuous data shit. You know, so I worried for nothing. But we're not in. We're not in. The only thing that's happened is that Orlam and Genzo are just fighting, which is just nothing new. But Gidget's like doing the the mama bird treatment and just giving them all the business the business you are forgiven this time only this time <laughs> okay okay i'll take it i'll do better in the future thank you <laughs> we're only like 10 minutes in yeah yeah we're good honestly at the pace i'm going it's probably not even <laughs> they win so let their arm fall then gesture limply towards my stew make uh make sure you eat enough they rub at the back of their neck their eyes strained you look like you could keel over if anyone so much as looks in your direction. Then they sit awkwardly back in their chair, pulling up uh, the table with the creak of the wood. <laughs> That's so true, I always write that you need to copy saves over, but actually, if you still have the game downloaded, it should let up all the data automatically. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm glad that I didn't delete it at any point, so. It goes silent again, until Genzo takes an overzealous bite of a stew with a, damn, this is some fine-ass fucking stew. Which seems to be <laughs> to release some of the tension, and all of us begin to. Air oh, my dumbass. Okay, what did she say to Iggy? What did Iggy do? Oh, yeah, yeah. I still can't seem to taste it, but the warmth feels good in my stomach. It must put some color back into my cheeks, too, because Orlum comments that I look less like a corpse as we're carrying. <laughs> our well, that's good. <laughs> our falls back to the counter, which I can't help but feel is a bit ironic. Just a bit. Gidget rinses off the bowl using water from one of the buckets next to the stove as the rest of us clean off the table. And Genzo wraps a cloth around the gooey stump of his finger before- Oh yeah, I forgot, he lost one of his fingers. Uh, before nabbing one of the cookies, munching on it. <laughs> it's only been a week, too. I can only imagine how many things people who played The Last of Arc 5 before the finale, like, they're like, oh, what the fuck happened again? <laughs> like, it was pretty, like, strong. So it's a little hard to forget, but, like, the little itty bitty de details might just- fly out of your brain, munching on it as we instinctively meander over to the back door. The three of us stare up at it, silent expect except for Genzo's munching. Now <laughs> I'm still like chewing away until Gidget finishes up and joins us. Then the four of us simply stand there. It's locked, huh? A few crumbs fall from Genzo's mouth to adorn his jacket. Seems like it. Uh, Gidget mumbles in response. I sniff, rub at my nose, then step towards it and grab the handle. I give it my best college try, really tugging it, but all it does is rattle on its hinges. Yeah, it's pretty stuck. I wipe up my small beads of sweat that have formed on my forehead somewhat sheepish as I step back. And we're sure this is where we have to go? Orlon seems unconvinced. Well, I rub at the back of my neck, then look to Gidget. Who looks to Genzo? Who shrugs with a warbled cookie smother? I don't know. <laughs> it's helpful, thank you. Uh, this is... this is the cabin, right? The cabin? I bring a hand to my forehead as the others begin gesturing in a feigned attempt at self... Uh, per persuasion where all this has been leading i mean we've all we've all dreamed about it haven't we this result in three abject stares from my companions i blink <laughs> cock my head to the side orlan sways his hands considering all of us seem to have met some kind of untimely demise here i highly doubt this would be any of our dreams homes <laughs> you fucking got him yeah uh, i'm literally so distracted because i'm just staring at you <laughs> i don't bad <laughs> And you know what's worse, Gray, is that I'm going to be saving Gidget for last, like, the entire of the route, so you're going to have to wait even longer. I'm so sorry. I just, I can't. Um. <laughs> Good lord. Okay. I thumb my palm against my forehead in a series of tiny whacks. No, that's not what I... I turn back to the door as though it will give me some kind of answer or sign or something. I will wait. <laughs> then I'm back to tugging on the handle, on the handle, uh, desperately this time. Iggy. Iggy. Gidget steps towards me, a hand on my shoulder. It's okay. Don't go postal on the poor door, Hicks. <laughs> Genzo laughs, sending crumbs to the floor. I let Gidget pull me away from the metal knob, now greased with the sweat on my palm. My shoulders slump. But 
I make another vague gesture that ultimately falls limp at my side. This is supposed to be... We'll figure it out, Gidget says, their voice almost resolute enough to calm me. Almost. Yeah, eh, we'll fuck around and find out. Do you even understand what that means? I wince. Hey, we might not have dreamed about it, but all of us were pulled here one way or another. Sometimes multiple times. Gidget's brows twitched just a bit at this. This is where we were meant to come, and we'll figure out what to do next. We've come this far, haven't we? I rub at my arm, the, the, still feeling mildly as though I've let everyone down. Images of that night 20 years ago flashed through my head. The book in my lap, everyone gathered around. I'd wanted so desperately to impress them, to make them happy. The same as I do now? Or is it... Yeah, I say with a sigh. Maybe we get some shut-eye until morning at least, approach things with fresh eyes tomorrow. Me and my stump approve of this plan, not my stump! <laughs> Don't name it, Kenzo. It's not the worst idea. Well, I'm scratches at his necks. When I was doing this scene and they first all appeared on the screen at the same time, it was such a touching moment for me seeing them all together. The band is back together! <laughs> it took a lot. It took a lot for us to get here, guys, but we're, we're back. We're so back. Holy shit, we're so back. Yeah, I say again, this time allowing Gidget to pull me back towards the center of the room. I study the grain of the floorboards, my hearing especially keen all of a sudden. The rain seems to have stopped, leaving everything silent save the crackling fire in the stove. Come on. We attempt to figure out sleeping configurations after that. This bed is clearly not big enough for all of us, and after Orlom insists the part of it should be on his account of his blood regeneration-induced fatigue, no one else is keen to join him. So we pass out uh, what pillows and blankets we can uh, find and establish our own little corners. I curl up with a blanket next to the stove. Gidget insists on taking one of the chairs despite it looking in no way comfortable, while Genzo takes the floor nearest the front door on account of his belly making the perfect door stop in case anyone tries to get in. Okay, well... It took a lot, but that's why it feels so good. <laughs> Cuddling time? I, I'm kind of spoiled because we saw one of the CGs on Twitter. But still, is it still? It's going to be fun. Uh, no one, however, stays for that long. Ten minutes in, Genzo grunts and says he needs some air and wanders out the door. Ten minutes after that, Gidget gets up, says they're restless, and figure they'll check things out behind the I, Yeah, I don't know how anybody could sleep in this fucking place. Leaving no one but Orlam and me in the cabin. Hypocrites. I hear Orlon mumble beneath his breath from over on the bed. I pull my blanket tighter on my shoulders and stare up at the fire. I'm restless too. Exhausted as I am, I can't seem to keep my eyes shut for more than a minute at a time. The dark void of my eyes seems to tempt my anxious thoughts to assault me en masse. And the dull ache of my injured arm makes finding a comfortable position more than a little difficult. Oh my god. When I fucking... One time I fractured my ankle, like in high school... And sleeping with it was one of the worst things in the fucking world. Because it always had to stay elevated when I was asleep. So I would have to, like, stack pillows. And, like, that doesn't sound too bad. You try to fall asleep with your damn... One of your legs just, like, propped up. And then you couldn't see the TV or anything like that. And then, like, you'd wake up and then your leg would be somewhere else. And the pillows would be fuck knows where. It was the worst. I hated it. And I was off of it for, like, almost three months. And it was just... Ugh. <laughs> but at least I didn't have a potential axe murderer in the woods, so, you know, can't complain too much. I'm listening to the sound of my breath. Bucks probably isn't a murderer right this night, like, at least not right now. Okay. <laughs> the creaking of the cabin walls, the occasional hoot of a bird outside. I shiver despite the dancing flames. I do think it's weird that either we didn't, like, I don't remember them talking about the dolls in the forest, or, or maybe they're just not there. Because there is one difference and we brought the doll with us this time. With the messenger bag. Is the messenger bag with us? I think so. Um, at least not right now. <laughs> For once in my life, I wouldn't mind talking to someone. No. I feel a need to talk to someone. A need to be near someone. As though my heart will disappear into the darkness if I don't. I sit up, still shivering. Why am I so cold? I can't stop. Shivering. I can hear my teeth clattering against each other, a deep guttural chill curling up through my bones and around my heart. Why am I this cold? I shouldn't be this cold. Don't I deserve to be warm? I glance over at Orlom, then at the door. That need is still there. I can feel it pulsing inside my heart. I need to be near someone to share their warmth. Is it so bad to seek warmth from someone else? No. To want somebody to share it with? I've always been so stubborn, insistent that others' warmth uh, should come first. But without warmth, I'll die. No, literally. Uh, without warmth, I'll fido fade away into nothingness. <laughs> My affection is too low with Gidget. Oh, no! 
<laughs> oh shit. This is heartbreaking right here. <laughs> Holy shit. Everything I've done <laughs> was for naught. All that work and what did it get me? <laughs> I'm like so sad. Holy shit, no! No, no bitches! <laughs> I made it list! <laughs> this sucks! Okay, not that I'm going for Gidget first anyway. I've already made the speech so I'm gonna go last, but just the fact that I don't even have the option. Not even just the, 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 I could. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is devastating. I will never recover from this mortal blow. Holy shit. Well, at least Orlon wants me, I guess. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh no. Gidget, no. <laughs> this Austria will determine your final ending. Are you sure you want to talk to Genzo? I've never been sh more sure of anything in my goddamn life, Carrot. No. <laughs> like, yes. yes, I will. I have committed. Oh. I push myself to my feet with a little wobble, blanket wrapped tight around my arms. Then start for the door. It feels strange, like walking through the veil of a dream, not comprehending everything I'm doing yet, feeling more in control than I ever have in my life. Where are you going? Uh, Orlum rolls over to blink at me curiously from the bed. He's like, you had just as many points with me, dog. <laughs> Sorry, Orlum, you're our sandwich. We keep you in the middle. That's your place. Uh, Joy, you're just like me because when I was playtesting, I was like, don't ask me those stupid questions, Kenzie, sweet. No, for real, honestly, like, it's not even a competition. I like to say that it is. Okay, here's what it is, and I really don't want this to be taken the wrong way. If it was a competition of who is best for me between Genzo and Orlum, uh, not Orlum, Genzo and Gidget, for me, Joy the person, it's tied. It's tied. I couldn't pick one. Shoot me. Um, if it's for Iggy, Genzo easily. Genzo easily. Like, it's not even a question in my mind. Um, and then Gidget and Orlum kind of back and forth seesaw with me in terms of, like, who belongs with Iggy at any given time. That's how my brain works. Does it make sense? I don't know. You know? But, like, that's how it is. <laughs> that's what it is. W where are you going? Mm. I stop, look at the door, at my feet. I suddenly feel as though I'm being judged. <laughs> Hey, hey, you should understand better than fucking anyone, Orlom. Don't judge us. Don't judge us. <laughs> uh, seesaw, seesaw. They sound the same. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Brain is expanding. Just need to clear my head. Suit yourself. I see him roll over back. <laughs> like you didn't pick me. Okay, fuck you, bud. <laughs> you, it's like, not me turning into a tea kettle. Holy shit. Orlom, it's okay. We love you. He looks incredibly small, all curled up on the bed like that. I chew on the inside of my lip, just standing there for a moment, then push the door open and step outside. Does that mean that if we chose Orlom, we got to sleep in the actual bed, though? Because, uh, it's wet outside. While no longer actively raining, a residual sense of moisture continues to cling to anything it can latch onto. The grass, the dirt, the leaves, the trees. Has it ever rained in Wonderland? Uh, even the very air itself, cool and crisp and heavy as it brushes against my cheeks and nose. I pull the blanket tighter on my shoulders, still shivering. Genzo's unmistakable, even in the dim haze of early dawn. His cap, like always, acting as a beacon through the darkness. He's sitting on a downed a log a short distance from the cabin. He looks like a paunchy frog. <laughs> All bunched and hunkered over. Uh, cigarette smoke marbles in the air above his- He has infinite cigarettes, by the way. I don't know why I never thought of this. How many cigarettes does Genzo bring into Wonderland each time? It's gotta be, like, three or four packs. Like, my mom is a chain smoker. Like, I know. There's no way at the rate that he's going that he doesn't just have- Was that his wish? <laughs> I know his wish was the eyesight. But maybe his second wish would have been infinite cigarettes. I don't know. He's fully prepared. <laughs> That's true. That's true. He always got his shit on him. He keep that shit on. I mean, he does have deep pockets, probably. Uh, he attempts to clean his stump of a finger with water from a small bucket. I don't think that's sanitary, my dear. He looks tired. I watch him for a moment, feeling a bit uh, like a ghost in the night, then finally wander over. Hey. Hmm? Genzo's shoulders jump as he whips his head up so fast he nearly loses a cigarette. Oh, it's just you. Not just me. Hey. I see him perhaps instinctively try to hide his hand. Forcing a laugh as he moves a cigarette to the other side of his mouth. You're gonna catch a cold, you fucking twig. Go back inside. I couldn't sleep. Join the club. Pretty sure all four, four of us are so traumatized at this point we'll never sleep again. You're probably not wrong about that. 
I stand there for a bit longer, not quite sure what to do. Genzo looks a tad uncomfortable, shifting back as he grabs a cigarette to let out a long plume of smoke. He's still got this right hand tucked against his belly. I finally take a seat next to him, close enough that our shoulders touch. Let me see it. No. <laughs> let me see it. Give me a fucking break, Iggs. It's fine. It's not fine, and you pretending it will will only make it worse. Genzo mumbles and explodes uh, beneath his breath, but removes his hands from its hiding spot. He, gl he balances it on his knee, curling his fingers in and out with a thinly veiled grimace. It doesn't hurt. You lost a finger. Yeah, well, I didn't need that one anyway. Who needs five fingers? Am I right or am I right? <laughs> I fucking not Genzo Ichihara, that's for sure. I don't respond to his self-deprecating wisecrack. I do, though. Uh, instead, cradling his hand between mine so I can better observe the damage. It's a clean chop, at least. I'll give Orlom's nice skills that much, <laughs> I guess. And it's stopped bleeding. Uh, the blood has congealed into a thin layer of jelly ugh, across the stump, dark and clotted, and I can only barely see the white of the bone peeking out from the middle. <laughs> uh, but it's dirty, spackled with dirt and grime, bits and pieces of grit lodged in the gooiness, <laughs> and drawing patterns across his fingers and hands. <laughs> my brow creases, and I hold my hand out uh, for the cloth he'd been using. Give it. Genzo sighs, but he does as he's told. I dip in the water and begin softly wiping at his skin. I'm careful as I work trying as hard as I can not to irritate the wound even more than necessary, though there's only so much I can do. And when I have to uh, touch the stump directly to wipe away some of the ground and muck, I feel Genzo's body tense. Ooh, the music. He hisses. Grumbles another expletive. Uh, takes a long drag on his cigarette. I wait for a sarcastic evaluation of my efforts, but none comes. So I keep up my menstruations in silence. Uh, Genzo's hand is wide and rough between mine as I work, so different from my own. When my fingers are long and bony, his are short and thick. When mine are pasty and smooth, his are warm and calloused. I let my thumbs trace somewhat instinctively across his palm as I wipe up the streaks of dirt and caked on blood. A strange sense of sadness tucks in my heart, of a helplessness I've long kept buried inside of me. You should take better care of yourself, I whisper as my voice catches the back of my throat. Oh sure, I'll remember the next time someone else comes at me with a giant cleaver. <laughs> Just gonna stop you right there. Yes, please, eggs. Uh, set... Uh, just gonna stop you right there? Yes, please. Uh, Iggs said I should take better care of myself, so if you'll please refrain from forcibly separating pieces of my body. Uh, I didn't mean... <laughs> I'm getting weepy eyed. I squeeze, I <laughs> squeeze. I feel like it's just gonna be endless tears for you today, Carrot. At least you'll keep all your crops watered. I squeeze my eyes shut for a moment, then blink them back open. You never care about yourself. Genzo laughs at this. Why the fuck should I? I'm basically a walking, talking sack of shit. Not them both having, like, the worst- I mean, everybody has the worst, like, fucking self-esteem in this group. This is the negative self-esteem group. Like, Orlom's the only one who can, like, pretend- well, him and Genzo both pretend, but it's all a fucking front. <laughs> At least now I'm finally starting to correct some of my copious wrongs. So rather than actively hurting anyone, I'm only passively annoying the fuck out of them. That's as close to a win-win as you're gonna get with me. <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up. The words leave my mouth before I can stop them, and Genzo still stills instantly. His eyes go wide, cigarette hanging between his lips as his breath hitches. I feel the telltale sting in my throat as water builds beneath my eyes, but as far hard as I try to ward it off, my unprecedented snap has already opened the floodgates. My trembling renews as the tears begin dribbling down my cheeks. You have... I can't seem to form the words. I stare down at Genzo's hand until his fingers blur. Have you ever thought about how I feel? I swallow hard, my voice a warbling tremolo between my lips. Watching you get hurt for me? Another swallow. Watching you die for me? Yeah, yeah th that's not easy. I'll say that one because <laughs> cause it doesn't say anything. I can hear him breathing, long and slow. I see him blow out another plume of smoke into the air. I don't need you to be my selfless knight. Silence. I just need you. More silence. I wipe up my cheeks with a sniff, blinking until the world clears a bit. Then go back to Genzo's hand, wiping the last bits of grime and blood off his knuckles. Once it feels as uh, clean as I can realistically get, I give the cloth a final rinse in the water before gently trying, uh, tying it around the stump to prevent any further contamination. There, I say simply, my voice still quivering. Hopefully that should, should help. Genzo grunts, wiggles his fingers. His cigarette is burned down to the filter, so he tosses it into the grass, uh, stamping out the remaining embers beneath the toe of his shoe. 
More silence. Damn, there's so many cigarettes in Wonderland. <laughs> Wonderland. The two of I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm threatened by the the emotional vulnerability I'm gonna feel, so all I could do is choke <laughs> until my last breath. The two of us just sitting there on the wet log, our shoulders barely touching as we stare down at the grass. Genzo crosses his arms. I hear him let out a long sigh, see his knee bouncing ever so slightly. Iggs, he finally says, his voice uh, crackles with phlegm. I, I glance over, waiting for him to continue. I can try to be better. I pa a pause. I can try for you. I sit up at this, my back and shoulders getting tense. No. Genzo's brow twists into an expression of sheer befuddlement that in any other situation might have made me laugh. I won't laugh. But now it just frustrates me even more. I shake my head, uh, hands digging into the fa fabric of my pants. Not for me, for yourself. Eggs, come on. No, Genzo. The stupid fucking tears come back and I grip my teeth so hard I swear I hear my jaw clack. Who, who was it that told me to think a little bit more highly of myself after I nearly jumped straight into that eye thing's mouth, huh? Who, who was it that slapped some sense into me when I said everything would be better off without me? Eggs, because, because yeah, I do have a big problem with blaming everything on myself. But at least I don't try to hide all those woe is me stuff behind some big goofy tough facade. So, so that everything thinks I'm perfectly fine until I'm not. I punch the bottom of my fist t uh, lightly against his shoulder as I start to crumble. Until you're not. Another punch. Genzo's mouth is tight. You were never fine, Genzo. I stare down at the zipper on his uh, coat, unable to look him in the eye. The tears are running rivulets down my cheeks again. Genzo just stares down at the top of my head. You were never fine, and I never knew. Silence. I, I never knew. What does it matter? He finally says his voice sounds hoarse. Who cares if I'm fine? Who cares if I'm not? Now he's getting louder. His voice crackles as it turns sharp. I get by. I always have. If I want to hate myself, who the fuck cares? I care, Genzo. I shout, my throat clogged with phlegm. Why? <laughs> Genzo shouts back, equally as vehement. Why the fuck do you care? Because I love you. There's a split second where both of us just stare at each other. And I realize <laughs> my heart is going to break. Um... Uh, then I'm pressing the list against this. Holy shit! Holy shit! <laughs> Actually befuddled. Good on you, Iggy. Even with the hurt arm too. Good on you. Because it's the only thing I can think of, think think of to do. <laughs> my brain's short circuit and there's actually spoke in my ears. My brain is too shell shocked by the words coming out of my mouth to process anything else real. Uh, my heart beating too loudly to allow me to think of anything else. And in that moment, we're back on the bed in the darkened room. And we're kissing for the first time. The first kiss I'd ever had in my entire life. And all the fear and all the anxiety and all the sheer hopelessness of our situation disappears for just a second. Oh my god, I didn't register that! No matter what it was, no matter what kisses we have with Orlam or Gidget, Genzo was our first kiss. Get wrecked! Get wrecked! Genzo, Genzo just for say winning! We can't stop losing! I mean, winning! Holy shit. We can't stop winning. We're so good. Holy shit. Wow. Not me just now realizing that. It's so late. It's so late. Um, I kiss him even as tears and snot leak down my face as my lips tremble against his as my fingers cling to his jacket as though I'm about to fly clean away. I'm about to turn into a fucking boomerang up this bitch. <laughs> Kenzie on top. Uh, and only after I realize he's not kissing me back do I pull away. Ooh. I blinked about away the tears clouding my vision. My mouth hanging open in apprehension. Genzo just staring at me, his eyes as wide as dinner plates. Oh, not the small pool of tears. As a fresh pool of his own tears gathering in dark bags beneath his eyes. I feel my cheeks start to heat up and jerk my gaze away, suddenly self-conscious. So sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I apologize, but that's nothing new. I'm always apologizing, aren't I? You are. That's pretty much my thing, yeah. Felt. The tears are running rivers down Gedzo's cheeks now. He brings a hand to his mouth, holds it there, sniffs, clears his throat. Uh, another sniff. Fuck, uh, he seems to be really struggling, yeah. And I turn back to him with a look of confusion. Now he has two hands to his face, rubbing at his eyes and cheeks. Are you okay? I ask quietly. No, I'm not fucking okay, Iggs! His gaze goes hybrid as he pulls down his cheeks in growing mental anguish. I... I never... I never... I wipe up my nose, watching him struggle. I never thought I'd... A pause, long and choked and hanging in the air. Hear you say that. 
Something about this brings the color back to my cheeks as I drop my gaze. Uh-oh. <laughs> now both of us are just staring down at the bucket of water, crying like a couple of love-struck losers without the emotional maturity to comprehend their feelings. Damn, Carrot, you let yourself really <laughs> stick right here. Damn, didn't even try to hide it. Well, because we kind of are. Genzo coughs. Did you, uh, did you mean it? Nah. Nah. I didn't, it, JK. <laughs> I sniff, still not looking at him. Yeah. I, uh, I see. He starts bumping the side of his fist against his nose. I clasp my, my hands, unclasp them, start picking at my thumb. I, I know that we have no idea what's going on, or what's going to happen, or if we're going to make it out of here, but, but I guess I... I wanted to make sure you knew that, so that no matter what we- I love you too. <laughs> I blink, glance over. Genzo has his hand over his mouth and staring so intensely at the ground, I'm surprised he doesn't light the grass itself on fire. His cheeks have turned a brilliant shade of red. A tiny smile forms on my face. <laughs> Genzo is so cute, see to kill me. He's cute every fucking day of his life, he can't. Yeah, I know. Genzo glances at me, then clutches his hand to his face again. What's wrong? I bring my hands up in a panic. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that you had to take the extra step to draw another damn fucking- This is incredible! <laughs> this is incredible! Oh, he pulls his hat down over his eyes, then all the way to his mouth and starts gnawing on it like some kind of rabbit chipmunk. <laughs> Gets out! Now I really don't know what to do. The complexities of a man in love for 20 plus years are apparently lost on me. I don't know what to do. I hear Genzo mumble half muffled through the fabric of his face. Is that why? <laughs> and then, it's worth it, yeah. And so soft, I could barely even hear him. I think my heart exploded. <laughs> Help this man! It exploded. I grip his uh, shoulders in abject terror for all of five seconds and realize he's being facetious <laughs> and feel my muscles unclench themselves one by one. Literally playing for this for the first time and I was screaming, crying, throwing up, throwing up things at the wall. <laughs> I have to like really keep it together because if I just start doing like what I would normally do by myself, I would look fucking insane. Oh, oh right. Mm -hmm. After a few minutes, he finally pulls his hat. I love when his hair is out. I love it so much. He finally pulls his hat all the way off, clutching it between his hands. You're so cute, he mumbles. Oh, he said the thing he could never say it all those other times. <laughs> he mumbles, his gaze still pointed downward. The lights a fire behind my cheeks, and I run a hand clumsily through my hair. <laughs> That's so normal, guys. I'm fucking quaking. Um, because it clears his throat, shifts a bit, as though trying to reassert whatever dignity he had left. Uh, I see him glance at me, his face soft. Can I, um, kiss you again? Yeah, I mean, he didn't kiss us the first time, so redo! Gotta redo it. Like, uh, you know, all proper and shit. Oh, uh, sh sure. I turn towards him, uh, feeling very much out of my element, despite my earlier assertion. Proper? What does proper mean? Don't overthink it! <laughs> we'll figure it out! I slink one of my legs over the log and scooch closer, fingers clutching at the damp bark between us. <laughs> that laugh again. I can't tell- oh, I can't quite tell if it's at me or at himself or at the situation in general. Yes! Yes to all. Uh, which just makes me even more flustered until his hand finds my cheek and his palm is soft against my skin and my eyes flutter just ever so slightly closed because it's warm. So fucking warm. When Genzo speaks again, I can hear the tears return to his voice. I love you so fucking much, Eggs. Uh, and then he kisses me. I'd like to wax poetic to about how it feels. About the way he feels close about the way my heart seems to swell up about five sizes of my chest, and even about the way my fingers and toes suddenly don't feel like they belong to me anymore. Some weird floaty, tingly appendages attached to a weirdly floaty, tingly mass that's my body pressed up against his. Well, well said, but... Oh, I've never been much for one for words. Unlike Carrot, who has the best words. Gosh, this is so tender, what the fuck? <laughs> What the fuck? Aggressively? Huh? <laughs> I'm mad. I'm mad about how cute it is. I'm mad about how much I care about these fucking bitches. I hate it. Release me. <laughs> I want to be me again. <laughs> I melted into goo and it's like, okay. Understandably, if I fucking drew this too, I'd become just a mask. 
I need to remember to drink water. I'm not gonna survive this. Sorry, death by our Wonderland finale. Here we come. Or feelings. Or words about feelings. So you'll just have to trust me in that moment. I didn't feel one single bit cold. Oh, tender icky. That was a really good seed. Wow. Meanwhile, get in an oral, I'm just doing whatever <laughs> somewhere else. We don't stay out much longer after that. I guess flustered confessions of love kind of put an end to a serious conversation. Uh, that and Genzo's fervent insistence that my fingers are definitely turning blue, and even if we're all gonna die soon anyway, he's not about to let me get pneumonia on his watch. That would suck. <laughs> For once, I really don't care how morbidly sarcastic he's being, because that's, well, Genzo. So I let him usher me back inside and back over to the stove. That's my man. That's the one I chose. That's the one I chose. That's the one we're, we're marrying. <laughs> Assuming we don't die a horrible death. Uh, I don't even complain when he won't stop looking at me. Because I don't want him to stop. I don't want him to ever stop. His fingers curl around mine like an anchor keeping me ashore. Yeah! It's the one I was referring to on Twitter, so the other ones fucking threw me off because I was like, I don't know you. Who are you? Um, also, the glasses. That's such a great detail. Me as fuck. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> and my forehead finds his shoulder. And my own safe little cocoon. Where there aren't any expectations. No judgment. Just love. Acceptance. And a warmth that fills me up from the inside out. My warmth. I need you. I've always needed you. As Genzo's fingertips trace my cheek, and his lips press against my forehead, I let myself drift off to sleep, for once, not worrying about that morning may- about what the morning may bring. Now we already won, dog. That's it. It's over, guys. Hope you enjoyed our Wonderland. Good time, everybody! Good time! Wow! Damn, that was quicker than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> You're just being ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. I'm being rational and conscientious. I'm not wearing those. And I'm not carrying you 20 minutes and when you complain about your feet. They are vile and grotesque. <laughs> You're vile and grotesque. Well, at least I don't resort to childish, uh... Denigration. <laughs> not me sounding that shit out. I shift my head and crack my eyes open. Sun is filtering in through the far window and casting long shadows across the cabin floorboards. Morning already? I feel like I've slept about five minutes. My face is pressed against the crook of Genzo's arm so snugly I can practically feel the creases that have formed across my cheek. I resort to whatever I need to ensure that we make it out of here in one piece. Then you, uh, wear the oafish foot accordance. <laughs> Akramans, or whatever it is. Orlam, I swear to god, I am- I push myself up to a seat, which prompts the two standing by the table to halt their discourse. Hark waketh night's pale maiden, fool and bright. Let's try that one again. You know what, Genzo? I mean, Orlam. I'm gonna lay back here on Genzo, and I'm gonna close my eyes, and I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that, and I'm gonna wake back up, and you're gonna try that again. Because what the fuck? What did you say to me? Pardon? Let's try that again. It's okay, sweetie. You got it. Take two. Like, what? <laughs> Iggy. Uh, Gidget's voice sounds slightly strained. You're, uh, you're up. I blink, then reach frantically for my glasses, quickly donning them and squinting back up at the sun backdrops visages of my companions. Sleep well? The audible smile in Orlam's voice becomes visible. Don't you fucking start. <laughs> for a second, my sleep-addled mind attempts to make heads or tails of the conflicting tones ooming at me. Then I glance down at Genzo, currently splayed out on his back and snoring loudly at the ceiling. <laughs> Does they give a fuck? Oh, right. They, uh, we, uh, I was cold. I'd say so- you don't gotta explain yourself! Uh, uh, but surely the red I can <laughs> feel fast-tracking its way out into my cheeks is enough to complete the story. Yes, I suppose that would be one thing he's good at. <laughs> and he'd be quiet for once, too. Uh, doubly less done. The rabbit has seen paradise by the dashboard light. It's fine, Iggy. We just didn't want to wake you. Right. I scratch idly at my arm, not particularly enjoying my current moment in spotlight. I found porridge in the cupboard. Gidget holds up a burlap sack as though lifting a prized trophy. You want some? Thought I'd make one uh, once we're all up and about. Still, we need to figure out the door and all. A pause. Or wherever it is we need to go next. Sure, that sounds fine. I'm staring down at my legs, but I glance back when I don't get a response. Gidget is just looking at me. I can feel sort of restrained sadness in their gaze. Yeah. 
it's gonna hurt no matter what we fucking do that's the craziest part so that's great <laughs> but they quickly shake it away right they pat the sack right i'll get started on it i watch them head towards the cupboard in search of utensils then let my gaze drop back to uh to genzo still fast asleep a long tendril of drool has worked its way out of his mouth and is currently dangling off the side of his lip I press my lips together uh, to keep from smiling. Memories from last night, or would earlier this morning be a better descriptor, color both my thoughts and cheeks, and I instinctively curl my knees in towards my chest, momentarily lost in thought, only to jerk out uh, out of it when I notice Orlam is still just standing there and staring at me. Orlam, can we be normal? Orlam, be normal challenge? Impossible. Fucking... <laughs> What? I freeze in place as though I've been caught with my hand in a cookie jar. <laughs> They're so cute. Orlov's face. Look at that fucking crooked ass. That's him. I love this little nerd. Uh, or the brown sugar Tupperware as my case when I was little. Oh, don't mind me. Can a connoisseur not appreciate the arts? I mean, I guess you can. Uh, with permission. Connoisseur, my butt. I can feel the warmth rise to my face. Orlov, go get some water. Orlam grimaces. <laughs> You're thirsty. <laughs> Go get some water. Go drink something. Orlam is never normal. <laughs> uh, yes, dear. He starts with short. Not these two big, like, <laughs> old married couple. That's so funny for them. He starts for the door. And wear the boots. <laughs> he stops. Grimaces again. Then begrudgingly dons the old tattered pair of boots that have been sitting by the door. Yes, dear. Then <laughs> he grabs the buckets from off the pile and goes clomping out the door. <laughs> I watch him go, not moving for a few moments, then eventually turn back to Genzo's sleeping form. What have I give for this to be my apartment? My bed. We've just awoken on a Sunday morning, and there's zero reason for us to get up. So I could just curl back up its beside him and return to the sweet bliss of sleep. But that's not reality. Reality is far too cruel for that. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And so I lean down and softly trace the side of his cheek with my finger. Him and Gidget having old married couple wives is fucking hysterical. That's just what it's like to be friends for 20 years. True fucking that. Not that I've been friends with anybody for 20 years because I'm barely, you know, I'm only 25. But I've been friends with people for 10 plus years and them bitches affectionately, you know. <laughs> I, we argue like every time they come over to my apartment, I'm like, girl, fucking get your shit together. <laughs> Gun. Genzo's nose twitches. He mumbles something, lets out an unbecoming snort. Gidget going, put the damn boots on. It's so funny. Practical Gidget versus ostentatious drama queen Orlov is truly so peak to me. It is. It is. <laughs> he mumbles something, lets out an unbecoming snort, then creaks open his eyes. Hey, he says softly. Hey, I say softly in return. I'm weak. For this ass trope that not ass trope but when this is just like in fiction and fan fiction especially i'll say that i'll say that um there was one author that i fucking loved and they would always do the hi hi you know like as a start and it's so fucking cute kill me <laughs> hey, hey hey porridge coming through i need the stove people gidget steps are oh they're not handling this well uh steps around us a large pot in their hands as they attempt to reach the stove top i jerk back out of the way promptly falling on my butt as next to me, Genzo groans and slowly pushes himself to a seat. And guess I can make <laughs> I can make way for food. Genzo yawns, wiping blearily at his face. Yeah, yeah, the breakfast bugle and all that. Gidget hums beneath their breath as they start messing with the burners. Move the blankets while you're at it. Not about to trip and break a leg while providing the group with sustenance of all things. Aye, aye, Captain. Uh, Genzo starts gathering up the strewn upholstery littering the floor. I take this opportunity to push myself up to my feet, stretching out the kink in my back as I take in the uh, tint of the morning sun on the hardwood floor. For having been nothing but a place of nightmares leading up to this, there's something quite soft about it now. And maybe it's just because of what happened between Genzo and I last night, or maybe it's the sheer fact that all four of us are here, waking up, making breakfast, and sure, perhaps getting along isn't the right term, but at least we're not actively trying to murder each other. That is a huge step up for y'all. Congratulations, guys. You've worked your way into barely functioning friend group. Holy shit. I didn't think you guys were capable. Uh, either way, something about the sight soothes me. If only for this moment. I love my chaotic family. <laughs> Things feel at peace. A respite before the storm. Before we venture out to make our party whole again. And bring this saga to a close one way or another. I sigh. Letting my hand fall back. Uh, fall, fall to the back of one of the chairs as I take it all in. Breathe in. Breathe out. 
yo, does this place have a Kaibo? Because I've got to take a massive ship right now. The... Genzo, please. <laughs> Genzo, that is disgusting. What the fuck? <laughs> Hey, as a wise old man once said, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Uh, I bring a- you don't have to announce it, though. I bring a hand to my mouth, cheeks warm as I chuckle. We're so fucking smitten. Damn, goddamn. You know, though, my husband does do the same thing. I think it's just male behavior to just be like, hey, I'm gonna go take a shit. It's like, I didn't need to know that, but thank you. I, I, I thank you for including me in what I didn't need to be included in in the first place. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, at least some things will never change, correct? They really won't. <laughs> Now let's talk about charts again. Remember that, Gongo? Um, a man, not, not Genzo being like, charts, poop, funny, haha. Not me being like, that's my man right there. That's the man of my dreams. That is the best guy. <laughs> it's like, Jesus. I I'm insulting it, but I am just as bad. Despite a few disparaging comments and a near argument, uh, the rest of the, ar the morning goes about as smooth as you might expect. We eat our porridge, continue investigating the premises, tend to or retend to our wounds. I finally get a proper clean and wrap for my arm. Gidget takes a look at my stitches, which somehow, in spite of everything, haven't come out again, but still could use a bit of hygiene. Our clothes get a bit of spot cleaning, though there's uh, only so much water and a tiny bit of soap can do to tackle the staining properties of blood. And I continue to monitor the door in vain. Oof. All four of us have tried it now on separate occasions. And not one of us has had any luck. Gidget also confirmed my suspicions that the door was visible from the other side. I'm so sorry. Uh, strange, isn't it? A door on the inside that isn't visible from the back? All the more reason for me to believe Wonderland's testing us with its trickery again. Or at the very least trying to keep something hidden. But why lead us all the way here only to block our path? Because you don't have everybody yet. You don't have all your party members. There must be something we can... I'm staring at it again, my fingers tapping idly on the table as Gidget and Orlon peel potatoes from a sack they found in the pantry, a task that had been deemed too difficult for Genzo in his current defigured, defingered state, so he'd been sent to chop a few more logs to add to the stove. I can hear the sound of him hacking away at the cabin, punctuated on occasion by an aggravated FUCK! <laughs> I continue to stare at the door even as we finish cooking dinner. Then as we're eating, then as we're lounging around restlessly listening to Genzo bring up another ridiculous story from our youth, or Arlong complaining about the moldy cabin air starting to seep into the marrow of his bones. I'm here, Iggy. Oh, hello, hi. Hi. Uh, yes, yes, that's what you said. I remember that just fine, thank you very much. You're here, I'm here, we're all here. But what do you want from me? To, for, to make a wish? <laughs> I made my choice. Yes, I made my choice, didn't I? The choice? The choice I had to make before we could move on? Before I could mo move on? The choice for myself? I chew on the inside of my cheek, throw a glance at Genzo across the room, who is currently sitting on the floor with his back against the bottom of the bed, just staring open-mouthed at the ceiling like some kind of fish. My cheeks grow warm in spite of myself, and I flick my gaze back to the door. My thoughts return to last night, that desperate feeling of needing to talk to someone that went against every instinct I normally felt. That wasn't the first time I felt like it, that in recent memory. No, the first time was... I blink. For the briefest moment, I'm back in my apartment. I've got my phone in my hand, having just gotten off a call with, from Hunar, thinking that I needed to... change things. A pivotal moment that had happened time and time again. All the events following it determined by that one single thing. Call. I sit there a moment longer, motionless, then begin frantically checking my pockets. Of course I still have it. I had it when I left Genzo's apartment. I've had it every time I've entered Wonderland. But what's the point of a phone in a world cut off from reality? I find it in my lower right leg pocket. Turned off, of course, and likely dead. It hasn't been charged in days, after all. And have been knocked around, bludgeoned, plunged in water, and who knows what else. There's a thin web of cracks across the dark screen, and I rub at a sticky spot of something rather uh, along the bottom edge. This is stupid. It's so, so stupid. And yet, in spite of this thought, I press the power button. And the phone. Against all fucking odds. And defying every possible realistic explanation, springs to life. What the fuck, Eggs? You gonna order some pizza or something? I hear Genzo sticker. Oh my god! Holy shit! It's like in the first act when I was like, oh my gosh, uh, fucking Iggy's gonna order a pizza for his final wish. Uh, how is it even still working? Mine died weeks ago. I didn't even sure where mine went. It's probably under your bed, dog. I resist the urge to tell Orlam I know exactly where his phone is. Instead, I watch intently as the phone runs through its startup animations, taking it especially an excruciatingly long time before finally revealing the color laser light show that's default wallpaper I never change. The icon as a corner informs me that the phone is at 0%. Interesting. 
The icon is the other uh, corner informs me that I have no signal. Also interesting. Disregarding both of these ultimatums, I instead bring up my contacts and start scrolling through names. I should call Box. Call someone. Yes, yes, that sounds like a good idea. Call someone. Call who? Call Genzo. Huh? Oh, fuck it. I scroll down to Genzo's name in the list. That's right. I've made my choice, and now I'm going to decide my happiness. I press my thumb to the call button. It immediately starts ringing. I just stare at it, at the little pulsing uh, phone icon flashing on and off. And now everyone else is staring too, just listening to it ring. Ring, ring, ring. There's a click, but not from the phone, from the door. I look up, unfazed, expecting almost, as the back door to the cabin slowly creaks open. Fucking what? Not as having the remote control to this bitch. All of us just stare at it. <laughs> Genzo looks horrified. All the, I mean, they all kind of do, but uh, all <laughs> the rectangle of darkness now exposed on the other side of the door. Across the room, Genzo hisses between his teeth. Well, shit. I wasn't expecting that. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Axe starting off strong, okay. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> we don't say long after that. Why would we? We're chomping at the bit as it is. We do a final inventory check if you can refer to it as much. Double checking that our injuries are as secure as they can be. Keeping things ominous. <laughs> I can see that. That we're not missing any of our belongings. Uh, that we've cleared things up, put out a fire in the stove. Genzo props his hat up on the middle of the table, giving it a little pat. For good luck, he says simply. But I can't help but wonder if it's not some kind of parting gift. An homage to the final resting place and the night of comfort it had provided us. Because we're not coming back. This is it. One way or another, this will be the end of things. For better or for worse. I notice Orlam grabbing a knife from the kitchen as we start to gather at the door. What's that for? I ask, even though I know the answer. I'm not venturing into the black unknown without something to protect myself, he says simply, fastening it to his belt loop. The three of us stare at him blankly, before Gidget tosses a glance about the room and promptly reaches for the broom standing in the corner. They give the bristle end a swift series of stomps until it pops off. Gidget's so hot. <laughs> Leaving nothing but unadorned stick behind. I'm sorry. Uh, right then, they say simply, tugging it against their side. Now all eyes go to Genzo, who simply balks. What the hell... What the hell you think I got this thing for? He hangs his screwdriver out of his pocket. Because they sure as fuck aren't any bikes to fix around here. Charming. The knight's noble blade is the same size as his- oh, Ah! That's actually not a bad size, depending on what the fucking wrench is, Orlum. Uh, a wrench? Screwdriver. I'm a dumbass. Okay. Get your- <laughs> Not the screwdriver, Elmo! Oh Alright, I think we're uh, already sat through more than enough inflammatory discourse these past 24 hours. I would prefer to leave this place with some semblance of dignity left. This is followed by a series of grumbles, but they must be willing, as there's no more protests um, as all three of them start for the door. Oh wait, guys, I I bring a hand up half in fear and half in confusion. What about, what about me? I receive nothing but a trio of blank stares in return. Yeah, I feel like uh, maybe have a weapon would be worse for you. I can tell Kenzo is choosing his words carefully. You're more like our uh, our anchor. Gidget smiles just a bit too widely. Anchor? I let out a squawk. Yes, we've all seen what happens when you try to help, haven't we? Rude! Not us getting to the fucking endgame and then being like, ah, I don't know, Iggy, you fucking can't. Do you? Well, you guys were dead. But I fucking killed Bucks at least once, dog. All right? That's more than, it, well, it's not more than y'all did, but it's something. It's fucking something. Um, he played as a cleric and had no, no weapon, no offensive magic. I cock my head to the side and blink. They watch as they continue on their way. Wh what does that mean? Huh? But they're already at the door. Hey, what are you ta even talking about? I go jogging after them, feeling mildly affronted. However, as soon as I step outside after them, my voice and my umbrage is swallowed up completely. We stand there for a moment just outside the door. It's black. Like, pitch black. Everything. Like, one long, endless black void on- Oh god, this is the fucking- No! I, like, said it twice in the fucking arc before. We're gonna go down this dark fucking black alleyway, and there's only gonna be one person left with us, and the other two people are fucking who knows where, and- 
Uh, and it's quiet. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm bad. Definitely quiet. No sound of wind or leaves or small creatures tittering in the dark. Completely and totally isolated from anything and everything. Why does it suddenly feel like we've just walked in this thing's butthole? Because you're a disgusting human being who can't stop himself from making scatological associations. Hey. <laughs> Hush, both of you. Gidget brings a finger to their mouth. I feel like we're... I pause. They uh, fit their gaze... Flit their gaze back and forth in the darkness. Being watched. I don't say anything. All of a sudden, my heart feels like it's trapped in a vice. Stricken with an overwhelming feeling of sadness. Come on. Gidget finally says, and I see their vague outline being moving forward. The three of us fall and step behind them. And I hear Genzo grumble something that sounds like I'd watch too if someone was climbing up my butthole. Uh, we walk uh, slowly through the darkness. It's the strangest feeling, like moving through nothing. The only evidence that we're making progress is the slowly shrinking rectangle of light emanating from the door behind us. That and the feeling of the grass underfoot. Because there is grass, I can hear it crunching beneath my shoes. Feel the ever so slight strain of it. Dude, I'm so scared of the dark. Uh, providing traction against my souls. And there are trees too. We can't see them at first, but they're there. The further we walk, oh, the more visible they become. The darkness giving way a bit to reveal faint outlines of branches and bark. We're still in the woods, just deeper, an untouched track within the darkest bowels of Wonderland itself. Moving closer and closer to the heart, we walk and we walk. Walk until the trees are readily visible. All around us, endless in the way they spread out in every direction, Crooked, curving branches forming a tangled mire overhead as jumbled roots poke in and out of the dirt underfoot like worms prowling the earth. A sprawling wooded maze with us like ants navigating its walls. I step just a bit closer to Genzo. I feel strange. More scared than I've ever felt in my life. Same. Uh, while simultaneously like I'm returning somewhere I've not been in a long, long time. A place I once found comfort in. I bring a hand to Genzo's shoulder, the texture of his jacket helping to ground me even as my insides feel like they're spiraling. I see him glance back. Shoot me a look that's not quite a smile, not quite not. A shared connection within the void. It's getting lighter now. Dots of uh, grayish-green sky appearing like pock marks in the overhanging canopy of leaves, uh, casting piebald uh, patterns of gloom on the forest floor. The hazy beams of light seem almost tangible as they cut through the darkness, and I can see floating specks of dust and plant life suspended in their sheen. The further we walk, the more the forest opens up. The trees are thinning just a bit, the shrubbery less dense, the roots less coiled, lighter and lighter, until the veil ab above us gives way, and I realize we've stepped out into sort of a clearing. We stop then, just glancing about, taking in the new development in our surroundings. It's a large open area nestled between the trees, the ground carpeted in overgrown grasses and thistles, and the bordering brush acting as a sort of rim to hold in the static, still sea of turf. It's like looking at a painting, beautiful but frozen in time, and as I gaze across it, taking it all in, my heart begins thumping like a steam engine. Defeat it? What am I defeating, dog? I must make a noise of distress as I crumple inward because all three of us turn to look at me. Iggs! Genzo's hand is to my back, wide and warm, but providing no comfort in my growing dread. Iggy, what's wrong? I clench my fingers into the fabric of my shirt as every nerve in my body crackles like a fucking firecracker, all at once and everywhere, shooting across my skin like electric fire. It's here, I whisper, voice hitching. The fuck you talking about? Pull yourself together, would you? I bring my hand to the side of my face, terror locking my muscles, pounding through my veins. It's here, it's here, it's here. What's here? I guess it spins around wildly. But there's nothing, nothing. I've got zero fucking clue what he's talking about, but I'm starting to think we need to get the fuck out of here. Come on. Gidget gestures forward and the four of us take off. Genzo grabs my wrist, pulling me along, even as my knees threaten to give beneath me. Then we're running, running careening across the clearing. I can barely breathe, barely hear myself think. I force whatever focus I can on simply keeping my legs moving. My eyes trained on Genzo's grip on my wrist. Run, 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 run. The clearing. When did the clearing get so fucking big? It seems to go on and on, never ending. The trees on the other side always, uh, one more sprint, one more burst of speed away. I blink, back tears as my lungs begin to burn. Just run, run. But then Gidget stops, so fast the three of us nearly go flying. And the look of blood-drained horror on their faces enough to stop any any of us before we can ask what's wrong. Because they're looking towards the far side of the clearing. The patch of grass that has been empty mere moments before. Ooh, what the fuck is that? What is that? What is that? Who is that? Who is that right there? I don't, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you are. 
What the fuck is this? <laughs> I'm actually like, what? But now it's occupied by the largest creature any of us have ever seen in our lives. I don't even have words to describe it. A twisted abominable beast of a thing. It's visage warped and snarled tissue. Is that supposed to be like a heart thing? Eyes sunk in between meaty slits. A uh, gargantuan body sagging as though too heavy to remain upright and all of it rippling. Strange, undulating motions make its muscles twitch and lurch beneath its skin, its jaw stretching, stretching, stretching to the back of its skull. This whole party t uh, really tested my artistic skills, but that's good. It looks good. Whatever it is. Um, and an axe with a blade of the size of a small car depressing uh, ground next to it. Is this supposed to be fucking bucks? Are you kidding me? Uh, it's just standing there, unmoving, menacingly, staring at us from across the clearing, almost like some kind of statue. Guys, I see Gidget's lip trembling. None of us move. All of us frozen in place. I can't tear my eyes away from it. I feel Genzo's grip tighten around my wrist. Tighter. Tighter. And that sadness. That deep longing. Despair. It's carving out a rut inside of me. So deep I can't seem to breathe. Then that thing. That giant. Hulking. Monstrosity. It reels back its head. Stretching back, back, back. As its neck's muscles fold and throb. And... It's like a dinosaur! We love dinosaurs! Remember we had a stegosaurus backpack? Don't worry! For a second, my consciousness dances in and out. The sound is so deafening, I can't even think. Like 50,000 thunderclaps, it all landing upon my ears at the same time and making my very brain rattle against the side of my, sk my skull. I bring my hands to the side of my head as my vision goes white, then black, then white again. My breath itself stifled somewhere in the base of my throat. I'm surprised we don't pass out more than we do. Uh, then as abruptly as it had started, the roar ends. The beast lowers its head, raises its axe, and charges. It comes fast, faster than I would have thought possible, crossing the length of the clearing in two giant steps. Oh yeah, I do remember in the dream it was like you have to defeat this giant monster that's like in this like canopy of trees, the heart, all that stuff. Okay. But Genzo yanks me out of the way just as it brings the giant hulk of an axe head straight down the ground at our feet. I don't even realize I'm screaming as I fly through the air. Stumble. Oh, the music. Then go face first into the ground a few yards away. I can still feel the tremors rippling through the earth from the axe's impact. I hug at the ground, hug at Genzo's arm around me, keeping me pinned. Then try to move, push myself back up even as my vision shimmies and my ears ring. Genzo pushes me back down, his uh, face pressed closer to my ear. Iggy, stay down. I can hear the quiver in his voice, the slight hitch in the back of his throat, and then he's leap oh and then he's leaping back to his feet, screwdriver yanked from his pocket as he goes charging back towards that thing. I can't bring myself to look, not while my head is still trying to stop spinning, so I do what I'm told, shakily crawling in the dirt to try and put some distance between myself and these horrifying tremors. I can hear it. Hear them. Another roar. I clench my eyes shut and dig my fingers into the dirt so deep the grit uh, clots painfully beneath my nails. Another giant tremor. I can feel my stomach shoot up in the back of my throat. Bile stinging. I crawl until a thud to my left hones my brain back into focus and I shoot a glance towards my side. Orlom. I see him with his back against the dirt and a grimace on his lips, blood leaking from his mouth. But, he's, but he pays it and me no heed. Quickly bouncing back up on his feet and raising its already bloody blade with a growl. I'm so impressed by them. I clench my eyes shut, then attempt to push myself to my feet, turn around. I immediately met with a rush of air straight to my face. I gasp and throw my hands up. But it's just the sheer force of the axe being thrown around. Every swing forms jets of air that go cascading along the ground, making the grass dance. Damn, we really are in our dragon, <laughs> dragon's dogma, uh, like right now, era. Left, right, left, uh, turning the clearing into a roiling ocean before slamming down again with an earthquake-like shake that nearly sends me backwards onto my ass. I chant another peak, my heart beating in my ears. They're fighting it. Somehow, they're actually fighting it. I can't say they're winning, uh, but their size and speed at least seem to be keeping anyone from getting crushed. Yet. I dash off to the right when it seems the commotion is about to head my, uh, head my way. My hands to my, my head. The beast lets out a throaty snarl and charges in Gidget's direction. Dude, Gidget's expression's so good right here! Uh, swiping left to right down in the rapid succession. It brings its axe down with another mighty crack. And in the short moment where the blade is still buried deep into the earth, Gidget stabs their pole straight into one of the meaty slits of its eyes. Yeah! Fuck you, go Gidget! The beast roars. Des responding with a seemingly instinctive swipe of their hand that hits Gidget square in the stomach, they go flying. Okay, tell me Bucks is going to come out of nowhere and help us. As the creature yanks its axe free of the dirt, Orlom climbs uh, onto its back. I see him stab his knife into the thing's neck again and again in rapid succession, but the thing simply shakes its head. 
Or I'm last. It's either it's either Bux is this thing, or Bux is gonna help us with this thing, or maybe it's completely unrelated, and I don't know shit. But there's literally an axe here, um, narrowly avoiding the beast as it whirls around, axe slicing through the air. The thing rears up. Another charge. Genzo barely has time to roll out of the way. Not T. Uh, he misses the swing of the axe, but gets hit at the beast, sends a claw out. Um, that explains the claw marks on their like countdown thing. That I was like, what the fuck happened to them? You know? Okay, makes sense. Uh, I bring my hand to my head, uh, heart pounding, eyes frozen. Again and again they attack, but again and again that thing uh, simply bats them away. Their strike's too small, like mosquito bites against the hulking beast's hide. They're sent flying, tumbling, bludgeoned, and bruised. Claw swipes uh, carving across the skin, their narrow escape from the axe growing tighter and tighter. Another roar, the loudest one yet. I slap my hands against my ears as I feel my knees trembling. It's getting angrier. It's rage palpable in the way its howl crackles in the air, in the way its feet pound with increasing speed against the earth. Faster, more desperate, more infuriated. Iggy! I hear Gidget's cry right before I open my eyes to see it charging straight at me. Legs moving on instinct, I go flying to the side. Thump, 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 thump. It's on me in less than a second. And I only just managed to escape the fury of its feet. And I don't, but I don't see the axe. Mm. The butt of it catches in the hurricane forces of its si side swipe. Something cracks in my lower back. Oh my god, then I'm flying. And it all happens within a matter of seconds. One moment I'm sprinting across the turf, the next I'm tumbling, my face in the dirt, rolling and bouncing as my arms and legs play on flop at the sides. I don't see Gidget scream and go hurtling towards it. I don't see Orlon latch onto the thing's claw like some kind of furious tick, stabbing at its fingers. Don't see Genzo racing towards me, tumbling to the ground next to me. Only when his face overtakes my vision do I realize I've fallen. Iggs! My body is screaming at me, a sharp shooting pain radiating from my back, and a cold wetness forming on the back of my shirt. Eggs, fuck. He's lifting my head up off the ground now. He's fuzzy at first, a hazy outline topped with a blob of black, but he sharpens into view as I take grasp gasping breath and feel my lungs expand. Talk to me, Eggs! I wince, attempt to move my arms and legs and my fingers. Everything still seems to be working despite the throbbing ache. I'm okay, I say, because I have to be. I have to be if we're going to get through this. I push myself up on my seat, Gunzo's hand going to my back. His face is contorted in fear. I'm okay, really, I say again. This is accompanied by another roar, a pained one. And both of us look to see Orlam sinking his uh, knife straight into the thing's claws. It sends out a cascade of blood that saturates the grass. God, fuck. I hear Genzo whisper beneath his breath, and for a moment he seems to be uh, lost in shock. The s sight of it taking another swing at Gidget, though, must snap him out of it because he pushes himself back to his feet with a grunt. I've got, I've got to help, he says with a grimace. Blood stains in uh, front and neck. I can see where the claws have torn through his shirt. Keep deep gashes that rip open into the skin. Stay down! Then he's off again, because there's no other choice. I watch him go charging back into the fray, launching himself at the thing's tail and burying the point of his screwdriver straight into the bulging muscle and tissue. I need to get up. I rock forward onto the balls of my feet. My back is still screaming at me, and I notice red on the grass where I've been lying, but I push up anyway, tottering up and onto my feet. I bring a hand to my head as I attempt to fight my balance, and with every thump of my heart, another shooting spark of pain zigzags up down my spine and out through my legs. The tears are forming hot and stinging in my eyes now, but not for me, for them. I watch as Gidget is flung to the side as the beast whirls around, as Orlam is thrown to the ground so hard I hear the air snap, as Genzo is whipped off the thing's tail like a fly and set bump, uh, bumping and rolling, and yet they keep fighting, because they have no choice. We have no choice. There's something strangely familiar about the sight. Not Orlov taking a bite out of it. Okay. Uh, as <laughs> This looks really good, though. And as I stand there watching the tears clouding my eyes, I can't help but feel like I'm peering through some kind of looking glass at, it, at any one of possible futures and past. And through that scatterfold threshold, I notice the cries of that creature, that horrible, repulsive, abdominal beast of a thing. I love how this CG turned out. It looks so good. The glitch act. Sounding more and more human. No, it can't be. We couldn't. We could never. We could never hurt. I start limping forward. Guys! But my voice is nothing more than a gravely hitch in the back of my throat. Guys, stop! Still, the fight continues. Another roar, but I don't even attempt to block my ears this time. Not when I know I can hear the pain in it. The despair. I raise a trembling hand. Stop, that's... It's Bucks. Louder now. I force the... Uh, they didn't say that. I'm saying that. I force the sound from my lungs, even as they rattle and screech. Uh, while in front of me, I watch my friends tear each other apart. That's Bucks. Uh... They said it this time. Uh, Genzo close and <laughs> closes as he turns around. Uh, what? He shouts right before the beast whips around and clocks him square in the chest. I hear one of his ribs crack as he goes flying. No. No, 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 no. My chest feels like it's caving in on itself. That's, that's Bucks. I try again, my voice tight as the tears start leaking down my cheeks. 
Orlan buries his knife into the top of the thing's head with a deep squelch, only for the beast to reel back with an agonized. We gotta show him the charm that or uh, Hunar gave us. Show them the charm, Biggie. Uh, what are you talking about, Gidget? At this time, their arms litter with ga gashes as they narrowly dodge a swing of the thing's tail. It's Box! I shout again, so loud and so desperate this time I feel my vocal cords rip uh, from effort. My shout must catch the thing's attention, though, because I see its head swivel in my direction with a snap. It starts forward. Fuck. Its feet pounding the earth as it moves towards me. Not that with their broomstick low out. Uh, something. I've got to have something. Yes, you have. Just get it. Your pockets. Yeah. This isn't how this is supposed to end. This isn't how this is supposed to end. I dig deep into the lower pockets of my pants towards the items that have lain there dormant since we began the final trip down the tree. Stomp, stomp, stomp. My hand touches something soft, latches onto it, the hair curling around my fingers, and I pull it out. The doll. The doll. Oh, okay, the doll. I, I mean, look, the charm probably would have worked too. It's like, uh, we'll probably give it to the actual bucks. It's a uh, lifeless button eye staring up at me from the palm of my hand. Not knowing what else to do, I thrust it up on the air like some kind of offering. Could you guys not mow the lawn so loud, please? Uh, my very soul trembling. The creature skids to a halt in front of me, sending a cloud of dust and dirt up into my eyes and face, burning my lungs. But I keep the doll held high. Eggs, what the fuck are you doing? I see them through the cloud, all three of them running at me. But it's okay. This isn't how it's supposed to end, after all. I see the beast cock its head to the side, studying me. Bucks, it's us. My voice quivers, but I push through it. Even as my knees threaten to give and my heart threatens to stop. It's your friends, Bucks. The beast writes itself, still just staring down at me in the doll, then raises its axe and slices the top of my hand off. We didn't need it. <laughs> I like that it went white like that. I feel nothing at first. My vision spasms in and out, a crackling lightning bolt shooting up my spine. I stare up at it, frozen in place and thoughts stolen, before the pain begins, a quick crackling zipping up the palm of my hand the end of my fingers, blossoming into white-hot fire that steals the breath from me. I jerk forward, arm curling inward. The doll. I stare down at my hand. The doll is gone. I stare down at my hand. Half of my fingers are gone. Blood is bubbling up from the severed appendages, like a pipe bursting. Red. My hand is red. It won't stop shaking. The red is everywhere, gushing across my palm and down across my wrist and arm. I do like that you do this a lot, where it's like, okay, the anime saved the day. We've got the deus ex machina. And then you'll just be like, nah, nah, I'm just going to do another thing that's going to make it worse. <laughs> I'm swaying now, my vision fading in and out. Eggs! Iggy! I hear them shouting for me, hearing the descendant uh, shriek of that thing as they charge it from behind, weapons sinking into plush. This isn't how it's supposed to end. I wobble on my feet. Another roar. Screams. And rage shouts. I love subverting expectations. Hee hee hee. They continue to red pouring from my hand. Bucks. Bucks, this isn't how it's supposed to end. I reach back into my pocket, blood quickly soaking the fabric as the sump's cavity. They touch something cold, the jagged edges of something metal. Oh, okay. So I was right. We should have gotten the axe thing the first time. Cold heavily as the bottom beneath where the doll had been. I curl my palm around it, slick with blood, and pull out Honor's necklace. See? You should have just listened to me. Uh, could have saved yourself some fingers. Uh, I almost laugh. I've been so stupid. Its golden surface shines up at me from within the blood's uh, sleeked grip of my palm. Then I lift it into the air. Hey, that's so badass. Okay. Even as the creature thrashes and howls, even as the shadowy, fi shadowy figures of my friends cling to its legs and back, even as the blood leaks down past my elbow, my hand and body trembling, I hold it on high. The creature must see it because its demeanor shifts. A deep set desperation seems to grip at it, and it pulls first Genzo, then Orlam off its neck and back and slamming them to the ground. Then me. It takes one look at me. Oh, his ears are bleeding from the the growling. That makes sense. Let's add a bellow straight into my face that splits my eardrums in two. Then grabs me in its claws and lifts me straight off the ground. Iggy! I hear Gidget scre screech below me, but I don't fight it. My feet dangle beneath me as my arm clings to the beast's grip on my midsection. Higher and higher I go until I'm even with its gaze. Put him the fuck down! Get those sounds so desperate below me, the tears audible in his voice. But all I can do is wince as the thing grip tightens around me, constricting my chest and making it difficult to breathe. No, oh, Bucks. I squeak out, my voice hoarse. I still have the necklace raised above my head. Bucks, remember. The surface of the necklace grows warm all of a sudden. Not warm. Hot. So hot it's searing my skin. The blood bubbling and frothing. And then my eyes go white. Oh. 
Oh my god, it's so disgusting. It's so big. Oh, not a flashback. What the fuck? Okay. I guess we're... I need to save. <laughs> I'm like just not saving at all. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, how are we supposed to go down the slide? I'm not touching it. It's fucking gnarly. I don't see what the big problem is. Eek! Oh my god. See? It's cute. Don't don't bring it over here. But he's just a little guy. She she's a monster. Ah! <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. You're pretty brave. Those guys are all just a bunch of scaredy cats. What are you gonna do with it? I guess I'll put it in the grass, then no one will have to be scared of it. Bye, little guy. Maybe don't make your web on the playground next time. You're so nice to it. Well, it didn't hurt anyone. My name's Hunar. What's yours? I'm Vox. Want to be friends? <laughs> ah, unless you're scared too. Why would I be scared? You seem like a very kind person. Uh, oh, yeah, let's be friends. I like you, Hunar. Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> like, that's it. That's all it took, man. They're so simple. I'm hungry. I want tomatoes. No, the fuck you don't. Uh, <laughs> fuck, shh. <laughs> but I'm hungry, Iggy. I bet if you shout real loud, they'll give you some tomatoes. Oh my gosh, she has a PlayStation shirt on! Best boy right here. I love all the little outfits. This must have taken so long. <laughs> I'm gonna weep and then they get married. Uh, I bet if you shout real loud, they'll give you some tomatoes. Really? Genzo! I want tomatoes! <laughs> Bugs. I'm hungry and I want tomatoes. Young lady, if you're not gonna be quiet, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Hmm. Give me tomatoes, lady! <laughs> Gets a little instigated as you are! It did take so long, I can only imagine. Fox, oh my god. Alright, Missy, out. Oh. Hi, Hunar, what you doing? <laughs> Young lady. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> You're so funny, Fox. I'm just reading. Oh. Can I read too? Sure. There's so many words. How, how can how can you read it without any pictures? You don't need pictures. You can just imagine in your head. Oh. This book is an adventure about a princess and a farm boy who becomes a pirate. That sounds epic. It's very exciting. <laughs> oh, I like that. My brother likes to play stuff like that. They always make me uh, be the monster. The monster? I think you should be the princess. The princess? That sounds hard. It's not hard. I'll be the Dread Pirate Roberts and come save you. Dread Pirate Roberts. <laughs> You're so silly, Hunar. I'll write my own book about it. Write a book? Yeah, I love thinking up stories. I want to write my own book someday. That's so cool. Yo, crazy ass theory. This is fucking last hour ass theory. What if... What if Wonderland was all constructed by Hunar as a simulation to make everyone get along? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's a crazy ass theory. It's like has no water holds nothing. It's just like, maybe. <laughs> Fucking maybe. <laughs> but I need to learn to read uh, chapter books first. <laughs> it's okay, Bucks. It'll take me at least five weeks to write a whole entire book. Five weeks? Damn, Hunar! Okay, I'll definitely learn to read by then. Hunar's ultimate get-along sweater. Just, <laughs> I mean, if it works, it works. I say you could, t I say you could talk, dickwad. Now you're just asking for it. Oh, gosh. Hey, assholes. Oh, shit, it's the killer whale. Yeah, you better run, you fucking ingrates. Freaking monster. I'll show you a monster. Hey, you okay? Those turd biscuits hurt you? I I'm fine. Orla and Bucks! Oh my gosh, Genzo. <laughs> Gidget's hair. hair. Like, I love how it's just like, it's all over the place. What happened? Just a, a cup. Ah, just a couple of ass hats. I told them off. Told them off more like scared them off. Nothing more terrifying than a fist of steel coming straight for your face. <laughs> the Bucks monster fist of death strikes again. <laughs> Damn straight. Oh. Oh. Orlam. Christ on a cracker. Bucks! 
Are you okay? Hmm? Oh, Hunar. Of course I am. Why do you ask? Well, well, you went up against those guys. There were so many of them. It was fine. I showed him who's boss. Besides, I gotta protect the crew. But what if you got hurt? I don't know what I'd do with myself if something happened to you. What is it? What did I say? <laughs> Huna, you're so sweet! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Help him! Oh, it was baseball all along. Bucks, Bucks, she's our gal. If she can't do it, no one shall. Lambrooks, Buxley, Krill is up to the bat. Krills has been a real terror at the plate these last few games, and with two people already on the base, I can't imagine Dukin isn't feeling the pressure. What's happening now? Bucks is batting. Oh shit, fuck him in the ass, Bucks. <laughs> Gendo! <laughs> Should we stand up now? And that's out of here! Home run! Another brilliant hit by Landbrook's monster. Wait, wait. The pitcher doesn't look happy. What in the world? Oh, Krills did not like that. And, and we've got a fight. This is, oh my God. And now the crowd is getting involved. Holy shit. What's happening now? Everyone's fighting. Bugs punched the other girl in the face. Oh shit, a brawl! <laughs> I'm getting in on this. Genzo, Iggy, wait for me. <laughs> oh, these are cute and sad. <laughs> Would you stop laughing? That wasn't funny, Bucks. You kidding? Did you see the look on her face? <laughs> bam, bam, whoop, right in the kisser. Teach her to say shit about Lambrook. What? I wish you, you I wish you wouldn't do st things like that. <laughs> Why not? Everyone loves it. Homers and Chiners, they can't get enough. I'm basically a bona fide celebrity. What? You could get hurt. <laughs> As if. Haven't you seen these guns or have you seen these guns, huh? <laughs> They're made for whacking. Not to me, they aren't. You don't need to do things like that, Bucks. Yeah, well, what else am I good for, huh? I'm big and loud and angry and I hit things. I'm a fucking monster. I think you're beautiful. Uh, they're beautiful. Bucks, I... I think you're the most beautiful girl in the world. And I... I... I wanted to know if you'd be my girl. <laughs> These sweetie pies. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, Ah, I'm so happy. God, help him. I will be the best, most wonderful girlfriend ever. And I will hug you every day. <laughs> and murder anyone who tries to touch you. And, and, and. Fox, you're choking me. Oh god, not this fucking... These bitches. Ah, oh, Box who are? You guys have fun at prom? Hmm. Yeah, it was nice. Hmm, <laughs> look at you both. It must have been so romantic. I'm so jealous! Romantic. Psh. Box already busted the place up. Bathroom blitz, motherfucker. It's true, I can't even imagine Box in a dress. Would have thought Landbrook's high monster would have a prom date because of any of these fuckers. Am I right or am I right? Uh, yeah, she doesn't match the vibe at all. <laughs> yeah, pretty fucking crazy. Like polishing a turd or something. You know me, gotta keep people on their toes. Else I'll chop them off. Yeah, disappropriation <laughs> violence. Okay, I miss how much Bucks and Genzo back and forth we could have had. I'm mourning it right now. <laughs> Come on, I want to go play bingo. Daddy's feeling lucky tonight. There he goes. But, but I wanted to dance. W wait for me. Bucks. Hmm? We don't have to stay. Nah, it's, you know, the crew. The crew. Come on, let's go win some shit. Bucks. Hmm? You were beautiful tonight. Oh. Buxley Krills. Oh, don't you full name me. You know I hate it when you full name me. Oh, you hate it, do you? <laughs> you want to know what I hate? Not really, but I guess I'm going to hear it anyway, huh? I hate when you don't get home until seven at night. Yeah, because I'm working. I'm the only one paying for any of this shit. Your shifts end at five now. So I've got a lot of paperwork. Yeah, and then you come home and immediately start drinking. You would too if you had to deal with the type of jackasses I do. 
because taking care of a screaming child all day is it better? <laughs> I didn't ask for the screaming child. Oh, and I did? You're the one who forgot the damn pill. My fault, my fault, my fault. Everything's my fault, isn't it? It's both of our fault. <laughs> They're fighting. All the town are fighting. But that means it's both of our responsibilities to man the fuck up and face the consequences. I hate my fucking life, Hunar. My dream is ruined. My life is ruined. You think you're the only one who had to throw away your, their dream? That you're the only one who's had to make sacrifices? I can't take it anymore. I never wanted this. I never wanted any of this. I'm not who I think I am. I never have been. I'm not your perfect fucking wife, your perfect fucking mom. I wish she was dead. Bucks, what happened to you? When did you become such a monster? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm not sad. You are. <laughs> Bucks. <laughs> he screams in the chat, everybody. <laughs> Tummy hurts! <laughs> Real! At least we match with our bay. No fingers. <laughs> I said this when I was testing it, but Hunar saw a person in her and that did not exist at all, but her friend saw a monster in her that wouldn't have existed if they didn't cultivate it. Oh, the tragedy of Buck's sleep. I love sleep Bucks. You don't need to do things like that, Bucks. I did say they looked alike. <laughs> you know, like... We've channeled them. You're the strongest person I know. You've saved me in more ways than you know. But even if you need saving sometimes, and none of us saw that. You're not a monster, Box. So please just come home. It's gonna cry blood. Oh no, it's just gonna cry on top of blood. Come home, Box. No one's going to have any eardrums after this. Monster bucks. Type F in the chat. <laughs> That's so sad. It didn't have to come to this. It never did. Let's go home. Bux doesn't say anything for a long time. We retreat to the edge of the trees to a small outcropping of stones and logs where we can stop for a second. I need to save. <laughs> That's what I need to do right now. 
Oh, and it's at the heart of the woods. That's good. I like that. And then it was the keeper of the woods before. All of us with uh, faces pale and haggard and limbs uh, leaking blood in various quantities. Bucks just sits there with the gaze appointed at the ground, her eyes dark. It's strange how small she looks, despite normally towering over all of us. The bucks in my head has become so warped. The energetic presence that had made me laugh so often throughout the years. The stone-faced killer that had chopped off my leg and arm. Butchered Genzo, strangled Orlon, bludgeoned Gidget. They kind of deserved it. <laughs> Not me going on Bucks' side now. I was like, ah, you know, it's fine. I'm just joking. Um, murdered us again and again. And again and again. Always meeting our final end. As though embodying judgment itself. Judgment for our sins. From the one we turned into a monster. I look at her now and I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. So instead I sit and tremble as Genzo attempts to wrap what's left of my hand. The pain feels so distant. I can't decide if it's because I'm so much in pain and that my brain can't decide what hurts, or if I'm simply become so numb that I'm no longer capable of feeling pain. Maybe a little a bit of both. I lean against Genzo's shoulder as he makes a joke about how I've just, <laughs> I'd just done this for him the night prior. I'm unable to laugh or cry. Gidget is squatting on a boulder across from us, wrapping up their own wounds. Their arms are a mess of cuts and bruises, and the side of their chin looks swollen. Orlon, meanwhile, is wandering around the clearing. I like how this feels like they got, like, as kids, they just got in, like, a big fight. You know what I mean? Like, they just, like, scrapped on the playground. You know, but, like, it's just amped up to its highest degree. Like, we really, truly never do grow up, do we? Like, but, you know, sometimes that does solve the problem. Just, you know, a couple blows, a couple just, like, you know, and then we just all wipe our wounds and move on, you know? I see him kneel down to pick something up out of the corner of my eye, but it isn't until he's made his way back and it's holding in my face that I realize what it is. I'd have collected your disunited digits had I thought they'd be of any use. The doll sits limply in his palm, staring at me, up at me with its button eyes. As it is, I doubt they'll bring you any solace. I accept the doll gently. It's tattered and wet with blood. I knead it between my thumbs, staring down its draggled form. There's a deep gash across its neck and strings and fibers poking out. Errantly from the torn cloth, I twist its head back and forth and watch the ripped edges strain. Don't take your latent homicidal tendencies out on the poor doll eggs. Uh, Genzo laughs, um, the movement rocking me up and down against his shoulder. I sniff, wipe at the snot leaking down my nose. Please kill me, Eggy. I stare down at the doll. Then st that stupid, stupid doll. Then, with an angry clench of my jaw, I grab its head and rip it off. Oh my gosh, Jesus. <laughs> I feel Genzo's body jump. And when I look up, I see Gidget and Orlom staring at me. I sniff again, let the head drop to the grass. Stretching, stretched uh, fluff swells from the torn neck hole. The red stain in my own blood coating the white fibers, making it uh, especially gruesome. But there's something else there. Something dull and rounded nestled deep down in the plush innards. I reach in and pull it out. A key? Open it. No okay. way. Whatever you say. <laughs> oh, I say simply. It's a key. Aged and leaden. A uh, long, thin uh, shank connecting the crown, like bowed to the worn bit at the bottom. What the fuck? Genzo whistles between his teeth. Across from me, Gidget slides off the boulder. Their gaze locked on the key. All of us seem transfixed on it. On this simple piece of metal trembling between my fingers. Where does it go? Gidget finally says, their voice soft. I know. Only this time the voice is no one, it, no one expects, and all of us turn, uh, with a start to see Bucks slowly rising to their feet. There's something pretend, uh, pretentious uh, about the sight as she rises to her full height, thick and stalwart against the horizon. She turns her head towards us, looking so, so, so tired. I can take us there. We've acquired our last party member! Woo! <laughs> Bucks leads us towards the other end of the clearing, if end is even the right word. Because the farther uh, we walk, the farther uh, the clearing seems to extend. On and on. I glance behind us and see our small resting spot, now nothing but a tiny trio of dots on the horizon. I'm still in awe of this poetry. The crew is complete. Am I going completely mental, or does it feel like we're not getting anywhere? Genzo grumbles. I'm not sure if he's addressing the group or talking to himself. Either way, no one responds. I instinctively walk just a bit closer to him as I let my gaze travel back and forth to either side of the clearing. Something's different. Something's changing. Are the trees growing closer together? Suddenly, it feels like I can barely tell one from the other, like they're becoming one wooden mass. And the sky overhead, had it always been this cloudy? Giant, dark thunderclouds have formed out of nowhere, 
pushing and shoving each other in their race to climb up towards the heavens. I glance back again. Blink. Rubbing my eyes. Wait. Didn't we? The line of trees behind us is only a few meters away. Where'd the rest of the clearing go? My chest grows tight and my mouth dry. I turn back. Now the trees are even tighter and twisted. I can see their branches contort and curl, wrapping around in neighboring trunks with like coiled snakes, more and more of them, blocking any and all gaps between the trees, forming an impenetrable wall that seems by leaps every second closer and closer, a uh, pack closing in. Box, I try to whisper, but my throat is so dry it comes out of barely audible wheeze. I bring a shaky hand to my forehead, wiping up the veil of sweat. Why does it feel like the trees are moving? Flickers of movement in the corner of my eyes, but every time I turn my head, everything is static still. Left, right, left, and each time something has changed. More coiled branches, more warped trees protruding from the ground. Or is it my imagination, my emotionally and physically weary mind playing tricks on me, the sheer pain plaguing my body making me hallucinate? I let out a soft, shuddered gasp and wrench my gaze downward. Don't look at them. Don't look left. Don't look right. But most importantly, don't look back. My heart's beating so fast now, like it wants to beat straight out of my chest. Don't look back. Left foot, right foot. One after the other. My breath trembles on my lips. Don't look back. Where are the others? I need to see the others, but I can't bear to look up. Not when I can hear the trees moving, twisting, grinding around us. Kenzo. I reach towards him, my fingers quivering. Kenzo. Stretching, stretching my arm out, desperate. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? In a panic, I dashed forward, only to immediately ram straight into Genzo's back when he stops walking. I let out a stifled gasp and immediately jerk my head up, only to see everyone straight ahead, at the gate standing in front of us. No, not gate. More like a barrier built from warped, knotted trees. There's a lock on it, a giant keyhole carved from dark wood. Open it. I mean, I may. I might, I might. I stand there, slack jaw, just staring. Oh, my cat's so warm, she was sunbathing and she just rubbed against my cold feet. My head's still racing, my breath still heavy and ragged. Bucks turns back to me, then everyone else. Four sets of eyes just staring at me. I quickly grapple for the key in my pocket. My fingers find the cool metal, pull it out, and I step forward. The key fits perfectly in the lock, turns with a crisp twist. And then the gate slowly, heavily, as though it hasn't even touched in centuries, creaks open, leaving nothing but blackness beyond. I turn back to the group, my face grim. We're past the point of return now, hell yeah, with nothing but fate to guide us. But whether the fate leads to hope or despair is anyone's guess. I put my gaze into the darkness, then step past the threshold into the void. Are we gonna fall again? It's dark <laughs> and strangely warm, an odd sort of humidity clinging to the air, a visceral moisture. We walk, surrounded by nothingness, no feeling of grass underfoot, no breeze brushing past our cheeks, nothing but that heavy veil of warm swelter, and a dull, unceasing thump. It buzzes in my ears, thump, 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 making the cilia thrum <laughs> itch, like something crawling uh, around inside my ear canal. It gets louder as we walk, slowly opening up to fill the void more and more incessant, until my whole body hums with it. Thump thump. It appears in the blackness up ahead. Hey, it's the tree! What up, guy? A spot of green, like an oasis in the abyss. Ooh, <laughs> this is weird. This is, we're approaching. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, closer, growing larger as we approach. A thin strip of grass floating as though suspended in the air. What up, Mr. Tree? What do you got for me? Things about to get real. Uh, closer. All of us gazing upon its surreal sense of homecoming as it takes form in our eyes and our hearts. There's the tree! <laughs> and we're here, baby! Grass we once laid on. Grass we once played on. Grass we once laughed on. The tree that started it all. <laughs> and at the center of all that green, a single, enormous... tree we reach the edge of the grass this feels super like i just i feel like i have to keep like saving because i'm like what the fuck is going on uh i didn't even see what it said okay same thing uh we reach the edge of the grass don't even hesitate as our feet stride onto its damp surface as the blades of grass part for our steps all of us just staring up at it at that big old willow the tallest tree in the forest 
its trunk like a massive boulder covered in twisty gnarled roots. Up and up and up. The thumping is relentless now. My brain itself buzzing and whirling inside my skull. And my heart beating faster and faster. So fast they can feel my vision warp. Because as my eyes travel upward, I see the branches twist and wrap and coil. A horrific mass of whining shoots and sprigs. All of them pulsing and throbbing, squeezing and choking. And Sadie's mangled form visible through the nar- Oh, God. I fall to my knees, unable to tear my eyes away. She's... She's... I bring my hand to my mouth, feeling the bile rise to the back of my throat like hot acid. She barely even looks human anymore. Ew! <laughs> yeah, ew! Yeah! A monstrous, pulsating mass of bloating, decaying skin, like a corpse left in the water for weeks. Only somehow still living, bulbous sacks of skin breathing in and out, as the branches of the tree twist and snake and through around the heaving knots of flesh. I wouldn't even recognize her were it for, not for the purple blanket, now ripped and matted and choking the bulging skin. Frayed bits of it stretch between the leaves and branches like some kind of morbid party streamers. Her body pumps in and out of time with the pulsing in my ears, tiny crop of my hair on top, shouldering ab uh, above her swollen eyes. Yeah, it's sick. My children. <laughs> Hello, yes. Um, we had children and we weren't very good to them. Uh, none of us moved. All of us rooted to the spot and staring, staring at the twisted abomination in front of us. Welcome back. Hi. It's a voice I haven't heard in a long time. I DM'd Kara when I got this word. I was like, just got to the tree. Kara, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Like, huh? Uh, it's a voice I haven't heard in a long time. Unlocking a chord memory deep in the darkest recesses of my brain. That's... That's Sadie. Genzo's voice sounds choked, warbled. Bucks takes a step forward and I can see the tears shimmering on her eyes. What have you done to her? Hmm? I can feel the air shift around me, as though uh, synchronizing with her thoughts. Just sitting here with my mouth open. I've saved her. It's saved her? Orlon this time, his face in ashy gray as he looks horrified. He was just saying something for him. She's a writhing mass. Slaughtered by her own mother. Uh, such a horrible tragedy. Bucks wink, uh, winces and looks away, her jaw tight. But from tragedy blooms joy. The joy of innocence. Yeah, you know it's bad if Orlov is horrified. The air curls around me like sickly sweet tendrils. A scent that had once captivated me long, long ago. Never had I sampled a blood so innocent, felt it coursing through my roots. I had to have her. She's a fucking baby! Gidget shouts. I can hear the crackle of shocked disbelief in her voice making it tremble, but she continues unbothered. So I saved her, keeping her alive. But at what cost? So I could taste her wish. You call that alive? You seem displeased. You turned my daughter into an abomination, you overgrown weed. The air goes suddenly tight, choked, and I feel my lungs hiccup as though crushed inside of ice. I clutch a hand to my chest as my body spasms. You abandoned her. The same as you abandoned me. Do you have any idea how alone I was? How hungry I was? Muscles still quaking, I somehow managed to push myself back to my feet. My breath labored. I clenched my teeth, pushed against the clamp around my voice box until the wor words crackle through. We, we didn't abandon you. You abandoned us. Liar. The Lord of Lies. <laughs> At this, the air, the ground, the world itself begins to tremble, to shake, to rock. Thunderous and all around me as I attempt to keep my knees from crumpling beneath me. All explosion from next to us. An explosion from next to us. An enormous tree root bursts straight out of the ground, spewing earth and rock as it shoots skyward. Then another one, from the other side, thick and impregnable as it comes shooting from the dirt, all around us. More and more of them. As the ground continues to quake so violently, I can feel my bones crack against each other. I twist backwards as the grass opens up and straight in front of me, root hurtling skyward. Then I'm running. 
half tripping over myself and panic shooting through my veins as I go sprinting back across the grassy track. A jail! Yeah, but they're everywhere now. Life sentence in tree jail. <laughs> I see Genzo is flying as one of the wooden snakes launches itself at his feet. He lasts about ten seconds before it's coiled itself around his legs and belly, hoisting him up in the air. Orlum successfully dodges one route, only to get shoved forward by another whipping one from behind. In his subsequent stupor, a third cinches around his chest. Bux launches herself at a root, closing in on Gidget, only for it to slam her straight back into the ground with a sickening crack. And when Gidget darts towards her in horror, both of them are snatched up, unable to move as the roots lift them off their feet. I, I can't be the only one let- I ram straight into the trunk of one and go bouncing backwards. Fuck, I need to. But before I can go, as so much as collect my bearings, it has my foot. And I try as I might to clench my fingers into the dirt. Its pull is too strong. Far too strong. My words flip upside down as it dangles me in the air like a fish on a hook. But before another root grabs my arm, coils around my chest, and carries me back towards her. I cough, choke, my head still spinning as I push against the tightly wound um, wooden pincer, keeping me aloft. <laughs> oh, Silly billies, all five of us clenched in our grip and hanging there limply, like toys awaiting the turn as a play. I can feel her looking at us. The way the air shifts, it focuses on each one of us in turn, tightening against our skin. I abandon you? I shudder, ripples through the air. Then the root holding Orlon twist and snap, squeezing around him with an angry crunch. The homicidal urges. I hear Orlon crunch against the pressure, one eye clenched shut, wanting to kill your own father. Then she goes to Genzo, the roots digging into his belly and forcing out a gas choke. Erections in the locker room. Genzo's eyes go tight. Can't you control yourself for one moment? Then to Bux, sending another child to the hospital. The root shakes her so hard it sends her arms and legs failing. You broke his jaw. Then to Gidget, lifting them up as though taking a better look at them. And you, constructing genitals out of toilet paper. It gives them a shake, rocking their head backwards, hiding them in your pants as you went about your day. Damn, just eating us. <laughs> no, I never abandon you. I never abandon any of you. You abandoned me the day you abandoned your innocence. The air snaps around us like a shimmer of electricity ricocheting across the void. I was so happy at how the part with the roots came out. Ex yeah! Uh, <laughs> you think I would soil myself with your dirty, tainted wishes? I push against the hard bar constricting my chest, my legs kicking fruitlessly beneath me. K kids grow up, nothing stays innocent forever. That That's life. Being mean to Gidget for making DIY Packers in the bathroom. That is transgender rite of passage. That's just growing up, yeah. <laughs> That's life. The air shifts back to me so quickly and so sharply that I let out a gasp. You. Then softens, melting into a sickly sweet tendrils that caress my chin and cheeks. My child of nihility, void and intimate, intimate, <laughs> there, before reeling back with a slap that whips my head to the side. I couldn't bear the thought of your betrayal most of all. Not with the sins of your companions still fresh on my tongue. So I cut you off before I could see what you'd become. You think any of- You think any of us give a fuck about any of that, you freaky tree lady? This- <laughs> Ernst goes to a rigorous shake and I hear him let out a yell. Ah! I cared for you. Let you play neath the shade of my leaves. Granted you your every desire. I feel the air start to crackle. Then the root ensnaring us starts to que- starts to squeeze tighter and tighter until I feel my ribs start to crack. My eyes start to pop, squeezing and squeezing and squeezing until it stops just as quickly. I gasp, suck in a strangled horse breath as my lungs rattle and protest. I clutch at the bark, entrapping me and simply try to breathe. But it doesn't matter. Once I have her wish, none of that will matter, which is why you're going to help me. I felt the root uh, slither around me, coiling up around my neck, forcing my chin upward. I tried so hard, you see. Again and again, each time this tragic play reenacted itself, I cared for her, fed her nutrients, tried to help her grow. A distressed murmur escapes my lips as I feel its tendrils curl up in my hair, slither across my neck. But babies can't speak. That's true, that is a fact. A chill runs up my spine. Uh, my body starts to tremble as goosebumps rise up all along my bare arms, no matter what I do, no matter how I nourish her. She'll never be able to utter these words I so long to hear. Now my whole body is quaking, a deep-seated frigidity uh, racing through my veins. To feed me her sweet, 
Sweet. Flesh. Do we have to wait until she grows up? <laughs> You're insane. I hear Orlum's choke scorn next to me, though it's quickly stifled when a root clamps down around his neck. Shut up. Something churning in the air now. A roiling snarl of hot and cold emotions. You think I need any of you? Look what you've done to my world. Poisoned it. Polluted it. Ravaged it with your disgusting wishes and urges. I feel myself to start to rise higher. I kick my legs out of instinct, my body squirming helplessly in her coiled grasp. But I can fix it. You'll help me fix it. The air shudders, almost as though she's taking in the back of her non-existent throat. Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. My empty husk of a child. Doesn't even know what he wants. That, that's not true. Suddenly my words flip upside down as the roots turn me over. I let out a startled cry, legs scrambling above me as the blood rushes to my head. You have zero sense of self. Don't you wonder why this place was able to twist you so easily? To form you into exactly what each of your companions desired? A damsel in distress who needs a knight to protect them. An angry hedonist who can fight back against bullies. The perfect husband for a perfect life. You're nothing. You've always been nothing. A hollow shell that exists solely for the purpose of others. Even the choices you think you make are nothing but a sham. Controlled by someone far beyond for nothing but their own entertainment. That's me. <laughs> uh, I squeeze my eyes shut, feeling the hot sting of my tears as my throat goes tight. No. It's not. It's not true. None of that's true. I... I'm not. Another spin as I'm brought rightward again, so fast it leaves my head pounding and my stomach in roiling knots. This part got meta. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. The perfect shell. For the perfect wish. What the fuck are you talking about? Leave him alone! But already my heart is starting to race. Already my chest is beginning to construct as the anxiety takes hold. Once inside, she'll be able to speak. Once inside you, she'll be able to speak. She'll let me know her wish. The wish she's long kept buried inside. The purest, most innocent wish of all. P please don't. I shake my head as the tears start dribbling down my cheeks. I wonder what it'll taste like. I'm already salivating at the thought. Yeah, because it's like he's the character we play as. Hmm. <laughs> but please. Everyone, every nerve in my body feels like it's going off all at once. My muscles clenching, my heart racing, my eyes trembling in their sockets. She raises one of her spare roots, places the tip of it on my forehead. I can hear my friends shouting behind me, the stricken crackle of their voices. I've waited so long for this, suffered so long, but now, now I'll finally get what I deserve. That's our consciousness. <laughs> our soul. She knocked our soul out of our body. Rude. We need that. Oh, there he goes. No! Come back, Iggy! Oh my god! This looks really cool, though. Oh. I watched him get smaller and smaller. Watch myself get smaller and smaller. Falling. Falling. Falling into the void. I feel no wind, no air whipping past my cheeks, I feel nothing, on and on and on, until the green oasis with my friends is nothing more than a distant dot, until it disappears completely, until I'm swallowed by the void, completely and utterly, alone. I fall and I fall. Will I keep falling forever? Is that it? Am I cursed to be suspended in nothingness? The child of nothing returns to nothing? There's nothing mildly ironic about this. I feel the corners of my lips turn upwards, and I close my eyes, surrendering myself to the emptiness of space. Just take it a little nap. I open my eyes to green. Hey, we're in heaven now. What's up, guys? A soft green. <laughs> a green that caresses my cheeks, tickles my chin. I push myself up to see more of it. All over and all around me. A waving, roiling sea of green grass, backdropped by the brilliant blue sky I've seen. I blink, test my fingers by running them through the grass. It's then that I see my hands are fully intact. No missing fingers, and my arm is healed too. I sit back on my haunches, just taking it all in and letting the breeze brush my face. The window is back on! <laughs> Am I dead? I don't know. But if I were dead, would I be able to feel the wind? If I were dead, would my heart ache at the beauty of the clouds in the sky? I rise shakily to my feet, just standing there, swaying. The green is never ending, extending as far as the eye can see, all the way to the horizon in every direction. Just rolling hills of verdure, 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 uh, except for a single tree at the peak of the nearest hill, large and lush and striking against the overhead expanse of blue. 
I start towards it because what else am I supposed to do? It's where I'm supposed to go. It doesn't take long. Unlike the clearing, these aren't any strange abnormalities in distance or space-time here. Maybe because the entire area is an abnormality in distance or space-time, feeling altogether unabashedly strange, yet at the same time strangely unabashed. <laughs> oh, wow, I approach it. It's reaching branches and glittering morass of leaves, uh, leaving bipoled shadows in the turf below. Hello, little girl. She's so cute. It's Sadie. A girl sits beneath it. A young girl. Reading a book. I watch her turn the pages in contemplative silence. Hello. I say stupid. She looks up. Smiles. Hello, Iggy. She says smartly. The purple of her dress makes her look like a flower nestled in the tall grass. I just reached a good part, but that's okay. There's more important things to do. Oh. I suddenly feel incredibly out of place. My big adult shoes. My big adult hands. My big adult body standing in stark contrast to the soft simplicity of this place. But then Sadie takes my hand and everything's okay again. Come on, this way. Oh, okay. She's just a smart, strong girl. Oh, Her tiny hand tugs at my fingers and we begin to walk. There's a path beyond, behind the trees. A quaint path of golden dirt winding and twisting around through the hilly plains. Sadie urges me cheerfully along it, humming to herself as an inaudible melody in her head. I can't help but feel like we're walking down the yellow brick road. Where are we going? I ask after a while. To see the others. Oh, I say despite having no inkling of what this means. It's like an adventure, like the kind my dad used to read me. Your dad, you can remember that? I could hear him. Every night through the darkness, stories of courage and bravery. Oh, you're pretty brave, you know that? I don't think that's true. <laughs> but you made it all the way here. I laugh at this, a self-deprecating chuckle. Well, but stop as we round the next corner. There's a small figure huddled down in the side of the path. I recognize her brown pigtails. Wah! <laughs> Big salty tears dribble down her cheeks as she hugs her dirty knees. Oh, we're e healing everybody's inner child! Sadie cocks her head to the side. She's so sad. Something horrible must have happened. Buck slams her tiny fist down on the ground with an angry wail. I wish she was dead! Sadie and I both give a jump, which must alert Bucks to our presence because she turns towards us, blinking in confusion. Huh? Sadie steps forward, holding out her hand. Why are you crying? Bucks's eyes, uh, Sadie's hand, her gaze goes skyward. She brings a finger to her mouth. I forgot. <laughs> that's okay. Maybe I'll remember later. Yeah. Come on. We're going to find the others. Okay, that sounds great. Bucks's tears are gone. She grabs Sadie's hand, swinging it between the two of them as they start down the path once more. I follow behind in curious silence. Around the next hill, I spy a familiar patch of orange. Orlam is standing. <laughs> He's so damn cute. Every time I feel Orlam. Orlam is standing to the side of his path. His little fist clenched as he cl glares at the ground angrily. Sadie and Buck stop in the tracks wary. No one says anything. Until Orlam stomps on the ground, tiny tears forming in his eyes. I wish I could make the rules for once. He takes a few moments for the dust to settle back around his foot. Then he pops open first one eye, then the other. Sees us watching him. He jerks back. D don't hurt me. I didn't... didn't... Sadie steps forward. We're not going to hurt you. We're on an adventure. An adventure? Yeah, come help us find everyone. Orlan picks nervously at his nose. O okay. He steps onto the path. Then we start on our way once more. I feel a tickle in my palm and glance down to see him clutching my hand. He glances anxiously from side to side as we walk. Around the next bend. I'm starting to understand what's happening. Maybe. But that doesn't make it any less weird when I spy, uh, spy Gidget's crop of blonde hair come into view. They've got their hands held out to their sides and are walking the edge of the path like some kind of tightrope. That looks dangerous, I hear Orlan mumble. In front of me, Sadie and Bex are silent, just watching. Gidget reaches a small incline in the path and stops, then spins around with a flourish, raising their arms. I wish I was the most beautiful person in the whole world. They blink. Look at us. Then bring their arms down sheepishly. I didn't know I had an audience. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna cry. Everyone is just a kid inside. Exactly. It was great. <laughs> it was great. Sadie laughed. Yeah, you were like super, super cool. I didn't think it was that impressive. Gidget tilts their head down with a shy smile. You want to come with us? We're looking for everyone else. Yeah, just like the pirate and the princess. Pirate and princess? Gidget looks confused, but must not care that much because they quickly, uh, quickly uh, morphs into a wide grin. Sure, that sounds fun. When we start forward again this time, Gidget takes my other hand, pulling me along happily. Come on, Iggy, don't fall behind. I try to pick up the pace. I don't want to let anyone down. I know who will see me around the next corner. So the head of spiky black hair is no surprise. Genzo is squatted down, facing away from the path and drawing idly in the dirt with a stick. His knees are covered in scratches and dirt, just the way they always were. The five of us stand there and watch in silence. 
Once he seems to finish his design, he mumbles something incoherent under his breath and stands up. He turns around and promptly jumps about ten feet. Sh shit When it all you guys? He hastily attempts to scrub out what he drew. It's okay. You don't have to be scared. I am not scared. What were you mumbling just now, huh? Dux clenches their fists together in earnest. I wasn't mumbling anything. Yeah, you did. I heard it too. You did not. <laughs> we we all had to say it. Who the fuck's who the fuck cares? Genzo. It's okay. Genzo points his uh, gaze down stubbornly as I see his fist shaking. Finally, he mumbles something again. Hey, I couldn't hear. I wish I could see eggs again. Sadie laughs, holds out her, her laugh. Come on, we almost found everyone. Genzo huffs and turns away, crossing his arms over his chest. But he follows the group as we start up again for the last time. I try to catch a glimpse of what he was drawing, but it's too scratched out. It was probably just Iggy. <laughs> Nothing but the faint outline of letters peeking through. Uh, oh no, we just, I don't know. We make our way towards the final hill. I can't help but feel a bit like some kind of babysitter as I walk awkwardly in the middle of the passel of children, some of them laughing and skipping. We're gonna see baby Iggy! Others sulking, others with hunkered shoulders and eyes blinking in anxious curiosity, but all of them ushering me along, pulling on my hands, my shirt pushing me from behind. Come on, Iggy! Don't fall behind, Iggy! We're almost there, Iggy! Oh, we round the hill, and my breath catches in my lungs for a moment. It's... Me. It me! Not the current one. Not the current me, no. But as much younger me. The me who has convinced all my friends to cut their hands on that fateful night. Oh god, this poor baby start crying while the tides aren't working. I take multiple breaks. Okay, buckle up, everyone. Uh, to me, who'd never, never, never been able to experience the same unbridled joy of seeing my friends so happy that day. Younger me looks back with a smile as my friends run towards him. Iggy! Iggy, what did you wish for? Iggy, can you believe it? Younger me shakes his head with a smile. I haven't wished for anything yet. Nothing? Iggs! <laughs> You've got to wish for something! Younger me laughs, scratches the back of his head she neck sheepishly. The rest of my friends go running past into the land of magic and curiosity that awaited. I can hear their laughter, their sheer unadulterated elation as they see and feel and experience everything for the first time. Oh. Younger me watches this too, just standing there for the sidelines. Then he turns back to me and Sadie, and I can see tears shimmering in his eyes. I wish. Now the tears are forming in my eyes too, because I know exactly what he's going to say. I wish I could make my friends this happy forever. That's a wonderful wish. Oh, it's fucking got me. <laughs> yeah, real. Oh. Yeah. I might puke. <laughs> Sadie. You and I are the same, you know. We're both children of nothing. Oh. But you still have a chance to change things. So what'll happen to me? I don't know. But wouldn't you like to find out? Rather than repeat the same cycle again and again? On an impossible quest for everyone's happiness? Except your own? I'm crying, y'all. It's real. It's your choice, Eggie. Let me in. Or don't. <sighs> Fuck, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't know. What do you mean, no? I can't see. <laughs> this is my choice. Yes, please make the choice. I don't want to fucking make it. And I'm doing this. Please do. Please fucking do. For me, yeah. Go. Go crazy. Thank you. <laughs> that's what I was going to choose anyway. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I love that. Oh my gosh. Guys, I'm not okay. <laughs> I'm not okay. 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 Um, He's taking control. 
Well, I want to see what happens. Show me, Iggy. <laughs> what is the life you lead now? Sadie. What do you want, Sadie? Oh. What do you wish for more than anything else in the whole world? myself sorry but yes there she is I can feel her I knew he'd be the perfect vessel easy to hollow out and replace eggs is gone Iggy. Now tell me, child. What is it that you want? What do you wish for more than anything else in the whole world? Please kill me, Iggy! Yeah! Did the tree take control of the not Iggy? I'm stressing. No, it is! It is! They just thought it was Sadie. I can feel it. I can taste it. Oh shit, he's back! Let's fucking go! And the ghost axe! They work together! Shit. It tastes incredible. I feel so alive. The innocence coursing through my roots. Gross. <laughs> this is truly the single purest. Most perfect. As you wish. Yeah, fuck this tree. He's got an axe. <laughs> The axe, the tree, I didn't even put it together, that's brilliant! Jesus. Stop, you can't do this. Eh, I'm doing it. My, my wishes. Oh, they're all gonna float out. Wow. Without my wishes, I'll... Of course, who knows? Like, Princess Bride, I say that lovingly. As you wish is the Princess Bride ref because that's the book Hunar was reading. Oh, Good taste, Hunar. The rabbits! Oh my god! Not the tomatoes! Why do they look cute here? What the fuck? Goodbye. Oh, RIP this guy. Please kill me, Iggy. I wish I could see Iggs again. I wish he was dead. I wish I could stop thinking so much. I wish I could protect my friends. I wish I had a puppy. I wish I had fun as Sonic. I wish I was smarter. I wish I was giving me a break. I wish I had tomatoes. Not tomatoes! Why would you wish for that? I wish I could make my friends this happy forever. I wish I could make my friends this happy forever. Iggy finds his happiness in seeing his friends happy. That's so damn sweet. Kill me! I wish I could make my friends this happy forever. Well, that happened. <laughs> I don't know what to fucking say. I don't know. I wish Genzo would pay attention to me. I would not. 
<laughs> when I open my eyes, it's dark. And I better not hear any fucking thump, thump, thumping of, of whatever it is outside. Dark and quiet, quiet aside from the distant buzz of cicadas, a soft whistle of wind through the trees. I rub up my eyes, my head pounding, feeling like I've just woken up from the longest nap I've ever had in my life. The grog then groggily push myself up to my seat. I blink, taking in the sight around me. A sight incredibly familiar, yet unbelievably foreign. Around me are the forms of my friends, all of them lying in the grass. Identical cuts on their hands. There's something heavy in my lap. A book. I look down at it curiously, but its pages are blank. Huh. Unsure what to make of this, I simply stare at it. A groan from across the circle. Well, that just have it. God, that was a beautiful fucking sequence. I know I can't handle it. I can't even process it right now. This part is crazy. A I chime high. Jesus. A groan from across the circle. What the fuck? Genzo, oh God, there's kids. Ah! I was expecting them to be adults. Um, Genzo pushes himself up on the grass. Oh, I'm arriving at the end. Yeah. Uh, he rubs vigorously at the side of his head, jaw clenched. Why the fuck do I feel like someone's been doing road work on my head? Repeatedly. With a jackhammer. His shoulder slumps and he glances at me from across the circle, then at the others, then down at his hands. And why do I feel a strange thrill of euphoria at, at, at seeing my right <laughs> index finger? Move it to my left, I see Gidget starts to come too. Then they sit up with a jolt, their eyes wide. Ugh. They sit there a moment, just staring straight ahead. Then seem to relax. Then look at me. Then Genzo. Then out across the surrounding forest, not saying a word. Then finally, what happened? What happened? What did happen? I press a finger to my temple, face scrunched. Wait, did the ritual not work at all? Oh my god. We tried to do some kind of ritual? No. Whew, I need a drink of water. Sorry. <laughs> There was a tree, a tree floating in the black of space, and pain. I'd been in so much pain. My probing thoughts are cut short when Orlam sits up across from me, his orange hair strangely prominent against the black backdrop of the woods. I don't feel so good. <laughs> yeah, what else is new? The day something not wrong with you is the day we all bow down and call you king. <laughs> hey, I.E., ain't happening. You, you, but they're both cut off by a loud wail from my right. Buck sits up, tears dribbling down her cheeks as she sobs so loud they have to momentarily plug my ears. Why do I feel so sad? She lets out a hiccup as her shoulders continue to tremble. Hey, hey, it's okay. Gidget gets to their feet instantly and moves over to Buck's. I watch as they tuck Buck's against their shoulder and begin rocking them from side to side. It's okay. Now, everything's fine. Buck sniffles, hiccups again. But, but my heart hurts so bad. The rest of us grow silent, just watching. Then, the tears start. First door alarm. I look over and see big salty pools form beneath his eyes. Then he's sobbing, uh, his form crumpling as his shoulders sag inward and the tears begin streaming down his face. Then Genzo. I see him trying to be tough, but it lasts for all of five seconds. Then his face crumples in on itself and snot and tears are running rivers out his cheeks. This, <laughs> this is enough to set me off. I hug my arms around my legs, face buried in my knees, and I let the water works. Yeah, everybody just sees one big good cry. Uh, I can't stop them, my heart. My heart feels like it's tearing in two, bludgeoned, beaten, ripped apart, like a hundred plus years of sadness and pain and trauma is all dumping on me all at once. I don't even have to look up to know that Gidget is crying too, even as they continue to rock Buck's tiny form back and forth, even as they try to reassure her and all of us and themselves that everything is going to be okay. I cry and I cry, cry until my throat runs raw and my eyes turn red, until I feel some of my sadness start to release its grip on my heart. When my sobs finally give way to quiet sniffles, I look back up. Look out at my friends, all of us with our lips trembling and eyes strained. I wipe up my face, take a shaky breath, then slowly rise to my feet, wobbling as I find my balance. I don't really know what to say, so I don't say anything. Instead, I find my gaze pulled to the center of the circle, towards the small oblong object poking up across the grass. I step towards it, crouch down, and lift it tentatively from the ground. Oh, it's a doll, soft and worn, with long dark hair and a purple dress. Its button eyes stare up at me. Hello? I say stupid. Hello, Iggy, she said smartly. I sniff, wipe again at my face. What's that? I hear Orlam ask, his voice squeaking. Nothing. I tuck the doll into my back pocket. Nothing at all. Then stand back up. The others start to rise to their feet as well. So, uh, Genzo starts wiping stubbornly at his eyes. We just gonna, you know, go home now? Gidget helps, pulls Bucks up, who's still sniffling softly. Our parents are gonna be out looking for us soon. As if, my dad couldn't care less where I am. My dad's gonna be mad. I wanna go home! Bucks lets out another sudden wail, then takes off into the trees. Craps, Bucks! 
Gizzard doesn't waste a moment, running off after her with a frustrating groan. Across the circle, Orlin grows visibly ner uh, nervous. E everyone's leaving. He looks right and looks left, then abruptly takes off, following the other two off into the dark. Come on, eggs! Genzo motions for me, then turns to do the same. Whoa, wait! I step forward, instinctively grabbing his wrist. Then we both just stand there, looking at each other. I... I feel like... Like I have something really important to say. But I just can't. Remember. G Genzo, I... I swallow. My gaze drops, and I can feel myself start to tremble. It's okay, eggs, I know. Y you do? I blink back the water forming once more in my eyes. You know what? Genzo shoots a, gr a cheeky grin. That you're afraid of the dark. <laughs> I blink. <laughs> then smile. Smile is a thousand memories, a thousand moments of heartbreak, a thousand moments of joy, a thousand moments of love so strong it makes my heart fucking ache. All pass through my thoughts in an instant, forcing the tears back down my cheeks. I chuckle sheepishly and wipe up my eyes. Yeah. Then I take his hand, and we go running around uh, after the others, leaving the forest and our wonderland behind. Yeah, fuck that place! <laughs> Sayonara! <laughs> That's what I gotta say to that. I'd like to tell you everything was perfect for us after that. After this. No, life isn't perfect though. That we now understood everything we needed to do. Could find our individual definitions of happiness and live life to its fullest, but this isn't a fairy tale. This is reality. And reality is by definition imperfect. There will always be things that happen beyond our control. Your control. Accidents. Mistakes. Words said in anger. Other people, both good and bad. But I'd like to think, yes, I'd very much like to think, that at the very least, we responded to things better. I'm sure you did. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Honestly, like, and, and the fact that, you know, oh. Oh. They look great! Oh, they did the thing that, like, they were joking on doing, but they actually did it. Oh. I like that you can infer a lot from this, too. Like, he probably just came back and apologized later after feeling bad about being such a jerk about it. <laughs> I mean, that's all he can do. Oh, hey, little happy face, little happy face. Oh, how precious, god damn. It's so full circle. Oh, after the accident. I'm glad that wasn't taken out though. I really do. I think this is the best way it could have fucking ended. Like there's, there's no doubt in my mind. I like that it's not perfect, it's just better. That's wonderful. Oh, they didn't give up on their dreams. After running out on their wedding, Bucks and Hunar took a break. Not because they didn't love each other. More like because they loved each other. But both of them, they couldn't be happy if they didn't fight for their dreams. Hunar got his PhD in literary arts before moving back to Dukan to uh, teach creative writing. He's published three fantasy novels and is currently working on his fourth. Good for you! Uh, Bucks was scouted while playing Division One softball in college and went on to join the USA women's national team. Damn! She played in both the 2014 and 2016 women's softball, softball World Cups before returning to Dukan to coach the university softball team. She and Hunar then got married on their own terms. Nothing fancy. Apparently they just went and signed the paper one afternoon. They currently live in a little brick house uh, on the Dukan side of Landbrook. They've got a D&D &D group they keep running every week. And Bucks volunteers to coach for leisure uh, services in the summer. <laughs> I hear they'd even entertain the idea of kids in, in a few years. Oh. They should, because Sadie should be real. Holy shit! Okay, Gidget bloomed after high school upon finally leaving the prying gaze of their mother. After winning a scholarship to Springwood, they'd, uh, they'd go on to get a double major in software development and, crap and graphic design. They also used the time to really find themselves, attending more and more LGBTQIA events on campus and eventually volunteered for Campus Pride, where they first met Cecil, an exchange student from the UK. <laughs> they became fast friends, that's awesome. After graduating, the two of them would move around a bit, living in queer-friendly group houses to save on costs, and they uh, interned for small startups and volunteered for local queer... Wait, 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 Yeah, Sadie could be real still. 
And then Cecil, yeah, it's Cecil's room. Does that mean Jerry's gonna be around? <laughs> Jerry! Um, the local queer organizations, they were finally able to afford the rent for their own place in Lambrook after securing a junior design role at a nonprofit where they'd eventually go on to rise up to senior project designer. I haven't heard much about their love life aside from the occasional gripe about an annoying ex or two, but they seem content living with Cecil for now and attending a variety of local events to support the community. Orlum gets a pet rabbit named Jeremy. <laughs> Maybe. Oh goodness. That's Jerry! That's fucking Jerry! That's Jerry! God damn it! He's here! He's here! <laughs> Orlov joined the Business Professionals of America in high school. Oh my god, he's a CEO! <laughs> though, with his scholarship to go to business school, though his grades weren't amazing, he went on to become president of Alpha Kappa Psi, of course, and after graduating, he interned for a number of high profile firms in Dukan. Oh shit! Jerry Real! Uh, and after a while, he established his own business co consultancy agency, enjoying the variety it provided over the predictability of a single company. He even attempted to start a couple of his own businesses. They've had varying levels of success. It's okay, you just keep trying, baby. Honestly, when I read this epilogue, I was like, our Cinderella is canon, let's go, yes! It is! Uh, still, he seems to be doing rather well for himself and is quite active in both the professional and unprofessional night scenes in Dukan. Oh shit, does that mean him and Cecil are still having a thing? They're all in Dukan, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm fucking saying. Uh, he seems to be going through an on and off again thing again. Ah! I called it! I fucking called it! I'm so glad this shit is fucking documented. I'd be paying attention. I'm locked the fuck in. Uh, so, though, if the complaints from Gidget about Cecil abandoning there, any indication it might be a more on again recently. That's amazing. And I'm not much of a betting man, but I put money on the three of them simply moving in together before the end of the year. Oh, that- I want to read that story! What the fuck is going on in my house? And then the, the occasional visit from Jerry? Please! Please! I'm- And as for me, well- Oh my gosh, Genza confessed to me after after prom! Ah! After prom, sorry. Uh, and then he died. I, being me, became a bit overwhelmed. Oh my goodness! A week later, however, I managed to pull myself together and give him a response. Oh. <laughs> and I didn't say it was a good response. <laughs> He's so goofy, dude. I love them inject them into my brain. At any rate, we started dating after that, mostly a shy, nervous kind of thing. But it continued even after I left for college. Genzo calling me almost daily to yap about this or, <laughs> or that. He'd also visit an, on occasion braving the long distance bus to spend the weekend with me. This led me to figure some things out about myself sooner rather than later. Fortunately, Genzo ended up being fine with it, though part of me always kind of knew he would be. We'd experiment a lot with boundaries after that, to the point that it became kind of a reoccurring joke between us. Sometimes I'd be okay with more, sometimes I'd be okay with less, but never once would he ever make me feel guilty or judge, or that he expected anything of me, even when my boundaries would change wildly from one day to the next. After Genzo opened his shaft, he asked if I uh, would ever consider, potentially, <laughs> just maybe, only if I really wanted to, of course. <laughs> Moving in with him. Also, their fits are going hard. I told him I'd consider it immediately. After that, we kind of just settled into life. Genzo worked at a shop. I started working freelance. Between the two of us, it's never been too hard make to make the bills, even if we both occasionally have our dry spots. I even helped Genzo get his own site online with the digital ordering system. Oh my god, got them working together! How cute! We've helped him a lot with the back-end side of things. And he was able to stock a larger supply of bike parts and tools for sales. Yes, the thighs! I didn't say it, I was trying to be respectful. But you said it, so now I can be like... <laughs> Which helped bring in a bit more business. Sometimes I'll bring my laptop in and work out his back office. I selfishly find the sounds of his shop a bit comforting. Ours isn't a fancy life, an exciting life, nor a romantic life, but it is our life. A life that makes me happy. A life I've chosen for myself. 
and no one else. I still get the occasional deja vu. <laughs> I am being disrespectful. I am looking with disrespectful intent. <laughs> you know what? Have to agree. Sorry. You can't go down this alone. I, I agree with you. The sudden flash of a memory. Sometimes so brief and so intense it takes the wind out of me. Other times long and drawn out. Filling me with a sense of long lost melancholy. My heart knows what I've been through. Even if my head forgets sometimes. The heart never forgets. Genzo remembers too. Sometimes we'll be doing something and it'll randomly bring up a memory. Hey, you remember when... Doesn't this remind you of... Shit, this is just like... And I always have to pause a moment. Let that memory fizzle to the surface. Find it there, buried deep within the synopsis. But I always do. And then I'll smile. Yeah, I'll say. Even though it doesn't make a lick of sense. And then the two of us will go about our day. The end. Oh, not next to the arsenal with the group checkers! That's fucking adorable, what? Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for playing our Wonderland. This game is dedicated to all those who've taken a long time to figure themselves out. And also my family dog, Gasper. R.I.P. Gasper! Uh, this game could never have been created without all the encouragement and support of my fans. Thank you so much for following me on this long, long, long journey. Also, a special thank you to all my beta testers, as well to all those composers whose music helped bring life to this game. Until next time! <laughs> Well, God, that couldn't end more perfectly, could it? Like, I was expecting it to end well, but that ended fucking phenomenally. Are you kidding me? That was so good. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm actually befuddled. Like, I'm actually, like, not that I expected it to end badly. God forbid. I was just like, oh my God. Like, that was wonderful. I love that you didn't make just, like... It would have been so easy for them to just have the perfect life with the blah, blah, blah. I love that, like, because that wasn't what the fucking lesson was. The lesson was is that we just need to do better. The small things make all the fucking difference in the world. You know, just saying sorry when you, when you... When it's easier not to. Just speaking your mind when it feels more difficult not to. You know, just doing the hard things and just caring about fucking people in the end makes it better. It does. It won't make it perfect, it won't make it flawless, but it makes it better. And I think that's a wonderful message. Like, overall, like it is, it's perfect. I had a fucking great time. Like, holy shit, holy shit. I've only, I've only been lucky to only experience the story for a very small amount of time, you know? And I can only imagine how much more it must hit for people who've been sitting with it longer. And I am glad that I didn't uh, have to basically, but regardless, it hits all the same to me, and I feel a, a, an extremely strong attach attachments to these fucking idiots, like all of them, and I'm glad that they are doing the best that they can, you know, because we're all just doing the best that we can, and then the final fucking hit me like a truck because I'm still finding things out about myself. I'm like 25, my fucking frontal lobe just developed. I came out yesterday, n not something I thought that I would ever do again, you know, like, and it's just like, it's crazy. Life be crazy, man. <laughs> Life be fucking insane, huh? Uh, but it's so wonderful to discover that part. And the only reason why I feel like I could is because I had the right people around me who would support me and understand me. And, like, it's just wonderful, you know? It's not perfect, but it is wonderful. Like, I think that's really it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and how our ac actions influence others and how we can make the people around us happier just by questioning the way we act towards them and just choosing to do the right thing. Yeah. And we're always growing and learning new things about ourselves. Yeah. Guys, I gotta take the smallest break and pee. I do want to finish out the other epilogues because I feel like it won't take that long to get the other routes real fast. Um, except gadgets, I might have to go back and actually click all the right things. Is there a guide? If there's a guide, please link it to me. If not, I'll just tell me what to do and I'll do it. But I'm gonna take the smallest break real fast, leave these cuties up here real, and let me do my thing. I'm gonna post the guide probably tomorrow. Okay, no problem. But if there's anything with some hints, okay. But if there's anything I need to do to get the gadget one so it doesn't take like, I guess forever basically, not because of anything, just for my sake, Actually, give me one second, I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. You couldn't keep me away very long. Uh, with most of them, actually, I think you can just replay Arc 5 and make each character specific choice and probably you'll unlock a character you don't have. Okay. Uh, because Arc 5 has some big number choices. Okay, work. I'm <laughs> sure Joy's got to save there. I'm pretty sure I do too. But also include hints for previous arcs. Okay, cool. I think I can go back to the save that I started with this, um, because we did get enough points for Orlam and he's who I want to do next anyway. So, let me find where that is. Unless I oversaved it like an idiot. Like an idiot. Um. No, okay. So it's to be concluded. Cool. God, I actually feel like you know when you come out of a theater after watching a really good movie and the air is like crisp and cold and fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel so just like, there was so many heightened emotions. Like, I wasn't really showing it. I was playing it off. Obviously, I'm on stream. But like, Jesus Christ, at points I was like, God, when's it gonna end? When's it gonna end? How is this gonna end? I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm like, I'm nervous now. Ah! You know, Karen, help me. But you know, we're good. We're good. And it ended great. And like the second fucking Sadie entered the picture and then all his kids. Yo, going back to the kids fucking stroke of genius. How you opened the game with that and then how it basically ended the game with that. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. Like, holy shit. Wow. And I love an epilogue scene. I fucking do. I did a similar thing with Lord of Lies. Like the where are they now? I love that shit. Okay. I don't care if it's corny or cheesy or whatever the fuck. Like that's perfect. Okay? If y'all aren't doing it, do something. <laughs> I just got really passionate. I'm sorry. Uh, but it was fucking amazing. Okay, Orlam, come over here. Let's give you a smooch. Snarky ass. Okay, I should make a save here. Yeah. Uh, and then... Go talk to Ola! <laughs> the option will determine your final ending. Yes! Give me the Orlam. <laughs> I push myself to my feet with a little wobble, blanket wrapped tight around my arms, then start towards the other side of the room. Also, I didn't think we were gonna finish today, so there was that added of like, holy shit, we finished! Like, goddamn, I thought I was gonna have to like carry it over the next week. Psych! Nope! <laughs> no, no, no! <laughs> but I could. Holy shit, that's so much that you had to do though. Like, holy shit, there's so much. It feels strange, like walking through the veil of a dream, not comprehending everything I'm doing yet, feeling more in control than I ever have in my life. When I- oh! And when I make it- he has control! He has control over his own fucking ending! I fucking love that too! Take it away from us! You know, Iggy knows what's best! Uh, Orlov is pointed away from me, facing the wall. I'm not sure what to do. I stare at him awkwardly for a moment, shifting back and forth on my feet, until Orlum say says without even turning around, Did you want something? My shoulders give an instinctive jump and my gaze turns towards the sheets. I, uh, I swallow. It feels so stupid now. Everything. Why did I walk over here? Why am I standing here mumbling like an idiot? I rub up my nose, sniff. You wanna talk? If I could stab myself straight in the face right now, I would. <laughs> Orlam is silent a moment, then slowly rolls over to face me. He's got the most bemused, bewildered expression on his face that I've ever seen. A trio of options preferred and the maestro opts for the autumnal duet in B. Interesting. Orlam, please. <laughs> I have no idea what he's referring to. Uh, neither do I, so I just blink at him blankly. <laughs> but of course, I'm always open for discussion, he says with a sly little smile, and I don't miss. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> the gestures towards the side of the bed. Do sit down, though. I glance away. I glance from him to the bed, to the way he's played out leisurely, almost like Rose Dawson on her couch. I pull a chair over from the kitchen table instead. It groans noisily as I drag it across the wood. Squeaks as I sit down. I wince, keeping my gaze out downward, as Arlon chuckles and sits up on the bed. I can't say I didn't expect that. I run a hand through my hair sheepishly, adjusting myself in the chair. Oh my god, and them laying on the bed is like when Orlum came over in that flashback, and they were laying on the bed and they were looking at the ceiling and they were gonna take a nap, and then they got interrupted by fucking Orlum's bitch-ass dad showing up out of nowhere. We did spend ample time together, after all. Orlum scooches forward until he... Uh, he can dangle his legs off the side of the mattress, his chin propped languidly atop his fist. What did he want to talk about, Iggy? What did I want to talk about? Suddenly all my thoughts seem like they dried up, <laughs> they've dried straight up. Uh, I guess, uh, I cast my hands together in my lap. Well, uh, hiya, holding up. Orlong cocks an eyebrow. Holding up? What is this? Counseling and survival situations 101? I just mean a lot happened, you know, and I feel like no one's even asked you how you're doing. 
No, I don't imagine they would, though I would say the same for any of us. <laughs> a smirk. We all know we're barely hanging on. Why bring attention to it? I wince. He's got a point. Sure, Orlum's part might have been the most recent, but all p four of us are well past our breaking points by now. I've been stabbed, beaten, <laughs> threatened more times than I can count. Genzo had his finger chopped off and is probably still suffering from debilitating pain in his legs, despite him never ringing it up. Gidget still has their whole shtick uh, they've just had to lay to the side until we figure everything out in here. And that's even taking into consideration the mental and emotional trauma weighing down like five ton boulders on our shoulders. But we don't have time to think about it. We don't have the mental capacity to think about it, to acknowledge what we've been through, to start trying to work through things, especially when we don't even know if we're going to make it out of here alive to begin with. I guess that's true, I finally say. I must look especially despondent because Orlum gives a little chuckle. Having a moment, were you? I've been having a lot of moments lately. Understandable. Orlum tilts his head to the side, then brings a hand up and gently pushes a lock of errant bang back behind my ear. The touch makes me shiver just slightly, but I don't pull away. Orlum, I... I start and then all of a sudden find my throat stopped shut. Orlum watches me silently, waiting. Finally. I know that... That I was never that grave a friend to you in the past. Orlum sits back as I begin playing with my hands, but a pause, I lick my lips. You don't actually think I hated you, do you? There it was, the question that had been bothering me uh, since back at the castle. Orlum's gaze goes to the ceiling. He hums beneath his breath. No, he finally says leisurely. He taps his temple with a small smile. I know that here. Even if I haven't always known that here, he continues, then pointing to his chest. Oh, My gaze drops to a small spot of fleshy pink I can see poking uh, out beneath the color of his shirt. The ugly scars stretch across the skin. Oh. But I would say that's more of a byproduct of this place, he gestures vaguely skyward, than anything else. The environment here does kindle the, fl kindles the flames of our worst effectivities. Yeah. I glance down at my lap, pulling anxiously at my fingers. I know that pretty well. This seems to amuse Orlam, who reaches forward to grab my hand, palm pointed skyward. He traces his finger across my palm towards my wrist. Yes, we did get to see some interesting sides of you down here, didn't we? Quite passionate. <laughs> I feel the heart rise to my cheeks and instinctively jerk my head up, head away. Does that embarrass you, the idea of losing yourself to your emotion? My mind flicks back to then. I don't know how else to describe it. That loop. The loop I hadn't seen able to control myself at all. The anger inside of me prompting words I never uh, have said otherwise. Uh, a bit, I say softly. The thought of how I acted shames me, how I must have appeared to others, and the things I'd eventually do. The horrible things. Do you regret it? My face goes even redder. <laughs> what if we're like, nah. <laughs> Something about the way he's whispering the words, the way his fingers are dancing up my wrist and arm. It's making my heart beat like a steam engine in my ears, which is just flustering me further. I don't know. I went to press my lips together. I regret the way I hurt people, the awful things I did, we did. Orlum flicks his gaze up at me, studying me between his lidded eyes. Do you regret us? I don't have a response to this, mostly because I feel so fucking hot right now. I would swear my throat had just shriveled up in it on itself and rendered me incapable of words. Fortunately, Orlum must have expected this, as this only seems to amuse him further. <laughs> he laughs. I'd forgotten how much I enjoy this. Then he leans in, breath hot, soft against my cheek. Making you all Twitter pated? Twitter pated? What? Elon what? <laughs> I, I jerk backwards as though I've just been shocked, uh, chucking, chuckling nervously, smoothing down my hair again and again. This fucking, fucking. My thoughts trail off as I watch him lean back, scrutinizing me. <laughs> this word is from Bambi. What? <laughs> what context was I used in there? My thoughts trail off as I watch him lean back, scrutinizing me. He tilts his head. I've had my fair share of moments down here, moments of awe, moments of despair, moments of overwhelming joy. He scratches lackadaisically at his chin, but I must admit these loops where you would join me, uh, ah, would join me hold a special place in my heart. I blink at this, my brows twitching. Loops? Uh, uh, a pause as I sit on this, as in plural? Of course, his eyes light up and he leans forward in excitement. Don't you remember? I, I only really... But before I can attempt to scour my brain further, Orlum captures my hands in his and pulls me up off the bed. Oh, he's gonna dance with us. 
He does love to do that. <laughs> if there's one thing Orlon's gonna do, it's gonna fucking dance. Okay, I can barely um, keep from stumbling over my feet as he twists uh, me first left and right, turning the cabin floor into a glittering ballroom stage. There were many varieties, after all. Ones where you were more bashful, others where you were more irate. He pulls me in against him to an inaudible rhythm in his mind. Somewhere I'd have to push you more, somewhere you pushed me. Another spin. But always with the same awkward charm, the same red face chagrin. Uh, well, I sputter as we go dancing back towards the kitchen. I still mean what I said even back then, that I'd never have someone show such kindness to me, nor stood up for me like that. Well, I say before nearly tipping backwards, Orlon promptly snatches me up as I go teetering back. It's like you fell right into my lap, exactly what I needed. Someone to care for me as I was, to be calming presence I could return to once the spotlight grew, grew too warm, to keep me grounded with the chaos of life. I I'm glad, I somehow managed to say, despite my ragged breath catching in my throat. He stops for a moment. I'll never forget the sight of you glancing up from your little game when I'd come... Uh, back after one of my parties, then leans up against me and into me, his face pressing against my chip chest as his lips curl into a grin. All snug as a bug in our bed, looking cute enough to gobble straight up. I laugh awkwardly as Orlom moves upward. See, you can't make those jokes, o Orlom, because there's truth behind them. <laughs> his nose and cheeks flush with my neck. Are those times you let me wash your hair, all those beautiful curls wrapped around my finger? And higher. I can feel him tracing his lips up the side of my neck across my chin. Jesus Christ! <laughs> hey, yo! Oh. <laughs> this shit rated poor! <laughs> what is this? Uh, is the only one that gets two songs in this scene because the dance music was necessary. Of course. Or that adorable way you'd always scold me when I'd crossed a line. He pulls away just slightly, uh, right by my mouth, leaving barely a centimeter between our lips. I can see him smiling, feel his breath against my skin. You liked that too, didn't you? Our little game of push and pull. It's dizzying, the effect he has on me. The way I fall back into the same patterns, the same feelings, the same energy. All of it, all those memories of all those loops and all that time we spent together. All of it swirling across my mind and guiding my thoughts, my reactions. And for a moment, I can only stare at him, cheeks on fire and lips trembling. Then I turn away with a shame-faced wince. Ah, uh, but we both know how it always ended. I hear Orlom give a little hum in the back of his throat. Feel him pull back just a bit. Too much of a good thing, as they say. Orlom, we killed people. <laughs> Orlon people died. <laughs> he laughs at this. Memories that will last a lifetime, I'm sure. I feel a frown tug at my lips. You don't feel bad at all about everything that happened down there? Then, uh, let my gaze drop. Those times you killed me? He must feel the gravity of the question because he finally steps all the way back, gaze going skyward. He seems to be thinking hard. It would be emendacious of me to claim I feel no remorse looking back on things now, he finally muses, his arms folding behind his back. You, of all people, should know how persuasive this place can be. Yeah. I can't proclaim I do things differently if given another chance. I see his brows furrow. But I don't want that chance. Mm. If this is to be the end, then let it be the end. Either in death or escape, I won't rewind again. We both just stand there, then our eyes to the floor as the light from the stove colors our profiles. What if we do die? I finally ask, hesitant. Orlam is silent a moment. Then he cocks his head with a little grin, arms up in a shrug. Then I'll look forward to you glancing up from your little game as I join you in our castle in the sky. Oh, How wonderfully, tragically, morbidly romantic is that? <laughs> this makes me grin in spite of myself and I bring a hand to my mouth. Uh, my earlier bashfulness returning. I feel a little awkward again. The momentum that had been pushing me forward now gone as I simply stand there like a lanky gray stick. But Orlom is the opposite of awkward. Tragically, morbidly romantic is basically Orlom's MO. Love that for him. But Orlom is opposite of awkward. He reaches a hand out, palm up and offering. Shall we have our final dance then? On this eve of reckoning. D didn't we just already have it? <laughs> I think this one will be more to your liking. Blinking in confusion, I take his hand. And he pulls me in close. It's slow this time. Slow, gentle, easy. Oh. He wraps his arms around my waist and I instinctively encircle mine around his neck. I am weak as fuck for Iggy being taller than like half of his love interest. I'm actually still kind of dizzy and reeling for the finale. Oh my god, I'm emotional. Fair, fair. The two of us just swaying softly in the middle of the cabin. I feel like I'm gonna have to rewatch this bod back and like really sit with it. And then, <laughs> Cause that's how I always process these things. After our out, I let myself curl in a bit, my chin nestling its way against the side of the head as I close my eyes. It's warm, comforting. 
his arms holding me softly, fingers pressed lightly into my skin, my support, keeping me anchored to the earth, back and forth to a melody neither one of us can hear, a dance with its own rules. Iggy, he finally says softly, his breath tickling my neck. Hmm. I murmur, my body is quite heavy against his now. I feel him nudge his face against mine, so I pull back just a bit. I catch him grinning at me for a second. See his gaze go from my mouth to my eyes and back to my mouth. <laughs> Orlon be doing all the shit, huh? Then he leans in, pushes up a bit on his toes, and kisses me. Wang. <laughs> I'd like to say I was surprised, that I didn't expect it, but my eyes barely even flutter. Yes, we've done this before. We've done this before many times. Stolen kisses on the stairs, stubborn pecks while I'm ten levels deep in my roguelike, dizzing uh, sessions uh, before he'd pass out drunk on the pillow next to mine. I smile against his lips now, letting the whole memory settle back over me. A familiar warmth, a comfortable warmth, my warmth. Oh, how sweet! Orlom leads me back to the bed before long, tugging on my index finger to guide me over. It's an action that with anyone else might have filled me with dread, but with him I feel only calm. Our own unspoken sense of understanding is by all means strange when you think about it. Someone like him with many needs, and someone like me with none. How are we even supposed to work? Or maybe that's just the thing. We don't need to fit inside any kind of pre-written rules. I love that! I fucking love that! That's so good! Well said. Well said. Really does encapsulate it. We don't need to be any one thing. We can just be us. Two people that care for each other. Exactly. That keep each other grounded. Oh, how wonderful. And we got the bed. Let's go. <laughs> and as we lie there, the moonlight filtering in through the window to cast the sheets in warm yellow patterns. Orlam running his uh, fingers across my forehead and through my hair the way he's done so many nights in the past. I feel a sense of serenity wash over me. For once, no anxiety grips my heart, knots my belly. There's no telling what tomorrow will bring. If this is to be the end, then let it end. I like that Iggy gets canonically three love interests, like technically canonically. Um, we love string theory, let's go. <laughs> we love it, baby. <laughs> like, hey, I can say this now, it makes my poly heart happy. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> and be right? It's fucking ridiculous. What are we even supposed to do? <laughs> See this face? Does this face look like it got any fucking answers? You're the one who's always got something to say. Yeah, well, all my words got stuffed so far up my ass, I'm, I'm gonna start upchucking them all over the floor. Okay, I'm not sure that mental image was necessary. <laughs> I'm awoken the next morning to the sound of hushed whispers from the other side of the cabin. I don't move for a moment. I feel too warm, too secure. Tendrils of warmth curl around my waist and legs. Finally, however, I blink my eyes open, bleary. The light is harsh against my eyes as I wince and I push myself up. I'm gonna skip- I'm sure there's gonna be a couple lines that are different because of whatever. The whispers stop. Immediately. And when I creak my neck over to take a look, I see Gidget and Genzo huddled around the table, both of them just staring at me like a deer in headlights. Hey, uh, hey, Iggs. And Genzo's voice cracks. Morning, Iggy. Gidget winces, their eyes strain. You, uh, sleep well? <laughs> my mind immediately races. Memories from the previous night swirling around inside my head. Fuzzy images jerking into focus one after another. I do like, though, that, like, Orlom not being picked doesn't feel as bad because Orlom's like okay with not being picked now, which I think is par character progression, unless he just hides it very well. But I like that he's just like, well, you know, Iggy chose whomever. You know, I got other, I got others. You know what I mean? Whereas like Gidget and fucking Genzo's whole world comes crashing down at the prospect of Iggy being with somebody else. <laughs> but you know, tis life. I snap my head down. The tendrils of warmth aren't tendrils at all. Rather, Orlom's limbs curled up and tangled around me. One especially questionable hand reaching half down the back of my pants. Orlob! <laughs> my head shoots back up, my cheeks burning. Th this isn't what it looks like. <laughs> I start as I notice the two of the table succumbing deeper and deeper into a despondent chagrin. Next to me, Orlob murmurs in annoyance. Yes, it is. He starts trying to tug me back down <laughs> to the bed. <laughs> uh, come back to bed, dear. <laughs> this just uh, flusters me further, and I attempt to extricate myself from the tightly wound um, grip on my hips and waist with a few frantic tugs. I can practically feel the collective bristling emanating from the, from the table. There's a loud creak as Genzo pushes himself up from his chair. Hey, fucks McGee. He's trying to get up. <laughs> Orlam appears nonplussed. He pushes a lock of bang out of his face with a languid sigh. 
No, don't worry. I already got him up. <laughs> Jail! <laughs> Jail for these lines! And immediately after Gunzo's route feels so funny. If only you knew, Orlam. If only you fucking knew! <laughs> Gunzo looks like he's about to blow a gasket. You fu- Gunzo! I interject before this can blow completely out of proportion. It's fine. I'm fine. Nothing happened. We just fell asleep. I finally managed to sit all the way up, my heart thudding anxiously in my chest. This isn't exactly the wake-up call I had imagined. Genzo's face is a pain mixture of despair and barely contained fury. Uh, uh, Orlam, I mean, you were eaten every time this was going on, so this is all news to you. I'm sorry, babe. <laughs> Leaning heavily against me and draping an arm across my shoulder. Yes, we succumbed to the wiry tendrils of sleep, our limbs an intimate tangle atop the sheets. Or Orlam. I guess very much wish wishing this whole situation could just be over. Orlam, however, gives me an affectionate squeeze. He raises a brow at Genzo's uh, growing acrimony. Mm -hmm. it Good on Orlam, though. This is the ultimate stick it to get. Holy shit. This is the ultimate stick it to Genzo. I never even thought about that. I'm so dumb. You know, like, years, years being bullied, and then you steal the one person that they've had feelings for this entire fucking time. That's the ultimate get fucked if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Orlov, you are a master villain. <laughs> You're insane. I love it. He raises a bow at Genzo's growing acrimony. You seem vexed. Would you like to join us tonight? We can share. <laughs> oh shit, oh shit! Uh, Genzo's face goes practically purple. He raises a finger as though about to shout something. But he's shaking so much he can't seem to get it out. Fucking got him. <laughs> Stealing his hand, that's fucking hilarious. Orlov is wild. <laughs> I love it. He clenches his eyes shut, grits his teeth, then blushing furiously, goes stomping out the door. He slams it shut behind him with such force that makes the whole cabin shake. Rain check then? Orla muses, dispassionately. I throw a glance back at Gidget, who's still sitting quietly at the table just staring at us. They stand up at the start. I, I, uh, they run a hand through their hair, awkward chuckle on their lips. Uh, porridge! Are you guys hungry? I was gonna, gonna make some porridge. They point weakly in the direction of the stove. Sure, get it. I respond with a tired smile of my own, my cheeks starting to burn. Right, right. They stand there a moment longer, then abruptly twist back towards the kitchen. I hear Orlam laugh softly next to me. Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. He pushes his face against the side of my head, lips brushing softly just beneath my ear. You're so popular. I learn about 50, I turn about 50 shades of red. Me too! Uh, then let out a sigh. I suddenly very much wish someone would just come and put me out of my misery right now. I will. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, baby girl. I got you. It takes a little while for things to settle down after that. If settled down is even a state of four of us could reach at this point. However, we somehow avoid digressing into even further chaos. Perhaps because of the heavy aura of foreboding seeping into every endeavor as the day continues, Genzo remains irate but quiet, refusing to acknowledge Orlon besides a few glares, and Gidget, as always, tries to keep our morale up as well as they can. Now I'm listening to Carry On My Wayward Son and Falling. I'm doing so well. <laughs> oh, Lord. Orlov's post-choice scene is wild and most awkward, I think. <laughs> I'm handling this so well, Carrot. I'm so normal right now. Holy shit. Uh, throw a glance at Orlov across the room. He's currently splayed out on the bed and staring up at the ceiling. My mind flicks instantly to the night prior. Our dance across the kitchen floor. The way he'd held me. The way his fingers had run through my hair. Yo, the song, We Could Just Dance to This. I think, yeah, by Troy Sivan and fucking Ariana Grande. It's their song. My cheeks grow warm in spite of myself, and I flick my gaze back to the door. My thoughts return to last night, that desperate feeling of needing to talk to someone. That went against every instinct I normally felt. That wasn't the first time I'd felt like that in a recent memory. No, the first time was, I blink. For the briefest moment, I'm back in my apartment. I've got my phone in my hand, having just gotten off the call with Hunar. Oh, okay. Call Orlam. Hello, Orlam. I scroll down to Orlam's name in the list. That's right. I've made my choice, and now I'm going to decide my happiness. Yeah, good for you, babes. And me, by extension. I'll show you a disgusting human being, you. Hush, both of you. Gidget brings a finger to their mouth. I feel like we're... A pause. They flip their gaze back and forth in the darkness. Being watched. I don't say anything. I step just a bit closer to Orlam. I feel... Strange. More scared than I've ever felt in my life. Yeah, I'm reliving it. <laughs> While I'm returning somewhere I've not been in a long, long time. A place I've once found comfort in. I bring a hand to Orlam's shoulder on instinct. Somehow that point of contact helps to ground me even as my insides feel like they're spiraling. He glances back, cocks an eyebrow. 
shoots a sly little grin, almost as if I can read my inner turmoil, <laughs> turmoil all over my face. Though it doesn't assuage my anxiety, it does provide me some comfort. This small shared connection within the void. It's getting lighter now. Come on! Gidget gestures forward and the four of us take off. Orlam shoots me a look of bewildered frustration before grabbing my wrist. Then we're running. Oh, I don't want to relive it. I'm scared. I don't want any more. Orlam's Aristia. Let me go. That deep longing. Despair. And then more action scenes, but specifically Orlam action scene. Then go face first into the ground a few yards away. I hug at the ground, hug at Orlam's arms around me, keeping me pinned. Then try to move, push myself back up, even as my veggie shimmins. My Vigi Shimmons? Bitch, what? <laughs> Would you stay down? You're gonna get yourself killed. His voice crackles with a panicked irritation. And then he's leaping back to his feet. He's so cool. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I see him hit the ground. Oh. Oh. Before running back. Yo, know, this little pain between them, though. Oh, it hurts. I don't see Gidget scream and go hurtling towards it. Don't see Genzo leaping into the thing's tail. Don't see Orlon shoot me a glance of half fear, half frustration before racing towards me. Only when his face overtakes my vision do I realize I've fallen. Iggy! My body is screaming at me, a sharp shooting pain radiating from my back and a cold wetness forming on the back of my shirt. What did I tell you about staying down? He's lifting my head off the ground now. He's fuzzy at first, a hazy outline blob with a blob of orange. <laughs> but he sharpens into view as I take a gasping breath and I feel my lungs expand. I see him giving me a once-over, his eyes sharp as he attempts to ascertain my condition. Can you move? I wince, attempt to move my arms and legs, my fingers. Everything still seems to be working despite the throbbing ache. I think so, I say, because what else am I supposed to say? I can't be worrying people, can't be holding people back if we have any hope of getting through this. I push myself up to the seat, to a seat, Orlom's head going to my back. His face is stony, though I don't miss the tiny glint of concern as his eyes and the blood staining in the back of my shirt. I, I should be fine, I say, then with the greater condition, I'm fine. This is accompanied by another roar, a pain one, and both of us look at the beast finally succeeding in fleeing Genzo off its tail, sending off a shower of blood in his wake. God almighty. I hear Orlom whisper beneath his breath. I can see him calculating wildly in his head, taking every angle, every development of the situation, his brows furrowing. The sight of it taking another swing at Gidget, though, must snap him out of it because he pushes himself back to his feet with a grunt. Do as you're told this time, yes? He snaps, a bit too harsh, which makes me drop my gaze in shame. <laughs> he must have noticed this, though, because his face softens momentarily. Look, we don't want to lose you. A pause. I don't want to lose you. He averts his gaze. So just stay back. <laughs> then he's off again. Okay, bye, babe. Because there's no other choice, I watch him go charging back into the fray, launching himself onto the back of the thing and bearing his knife straight into the bulging muscle and tissue. I need to get up. Get up, Iggy! What do you want, Iggy? The flashback scenes are really cute here. I'm glad we got to revisit them. I can never get enough flashbacks with these guys. I just love them. Okay. Okay. K doesn't work. <laughs> Unless I, like, I have to hold it. Yeah, that doesn't work. It should work. Maybe click into the window? Oh, yeah, that might work, actually. Maybe it's my keyboard. <laughs> hmm. Not me being the new beta tester. <laughs> Ignore me. It's fine. It's a banging cutscene. Boing, boing, boing. The music really is banger. It's hard to find good music. Weeping, it worked for everyone else. God, I don't know why. I'm sorry. Don't worry. Like I said, just blame me. It's probably something I'm doing. I feel that pain so much. But everything else has worked perfectly, so don't worry about it. It happens to the best of us. And I can drink some water. It might be like how in Our Cinderella, like, 
I wasn't able to use the save button or whatever, and then on another thing I was able to. So I'll definitely try it each time and see if it changes. the monster design by the way like it resembles a dinosaur but also kind of like a heart armored thing <laughs> whoa Hunar we can never forget Hunar it also reminds me of like a Resident Evil car uh, like kind of reminds me of Nemesis the way that it has the I don't know to be honest well I knew I was going for a giant creature and it just kind of happened I was just drawing it hey not you just like coming up with brilliant ideas without thinking about it. You know who Bucks reminds me of? That character in Delta Room. Susie, I think? Like, there's so much overlap there. Like, Bucks gives that specific energy. We're gonna relive it. <laughs> I be having Delta Rune thoughts. I love Delta Rune. <laughs> do I like it more than Undertale? I don't think so, but I do like it. About all of this, there's some overlap between the two. It's not a bad thing. I need to play Delta Rune. Actually, I've only played Undertale. Uh, Delta Rune's fun. I think I've only done Chapter One. I haven't done Chapter Two or anything. You might have um, scream. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but crazy with Delta Root. So instead I sit and tremble as Orlam attempts to wrap what's left of my hand. The pain feels so distant. I can't decide if it's because I'm so much in pain that my brain can't decide what hurts or if I'm simply becoming numb, yeah. I lean against Orlam's shoulder as he grumbles non too discreetly about how I should have listened to him and why I'm always going off and doing these things. I'm able, unable to laugh or cry. Kids are squatting on a boulder across from us wrapping their own wound. Their arms a mess of cuts and bruises. Genzo, meanwhile, is wandering around the clearing to avoid looking at me and Orlom. I'm unsure. Neither way, either way, he seems somewhat melancholic as he, as he meanders across the expanse of grass. He pauses, though, when he seems to notice something. Then he's kneeling down, grabbing something out of the sight from within the tufts of green. Once he's made his way back to the group, he shoves it in my face a bit begrudgingly, his gaze pointed away. Here, he says simply. The doll sits limply in his palm, staring at me with its button eyes. Though it might be important or something, he continues. I can hear the pout in his voice. I accept the doll gently. It's tattered and wet with blood. I need it between my fingers and then fucking tear the damn thing off. I twist its head. A bit crude. <laughs> Orlom muses next to me, his voice low. I sniff. Wipe with the snot leaking my nose. I stare down at the doll. I feel Orlom's body give a small jolt against me. And when I look up, I see Gidget and Genzo staring at me. I sniff again. Let the head drop to the grass. Stretched fluffs swell in the torn neck hole. I instinctively walk just a bit closer to the group as I let my gaze travel back and forth to either side of the clearing. Something's different. Something's changing. Are the trees growing closer? Yeah. Queepy stuff. Oh, Orlov? <laughs> Help me, Orlov! Stretching my arm out. Where, where are you? Only to immediately ram straight into Orlov's back when he stops walking. I let out a stifled gasp and immediately jerk my head up. Save you, Orlov! <laughs> Orlov, save me! <laughs> Only to see everyone straight ahead. Good lordy. This scene was fucking crazy, man. Nothing could have prepared me for this goddamn scene. Not a damn thing. And these cuties. Sadie's so cute. Oh god, we're gonna cry again. <laughs> <laughs> when will all the pain cease? 
What a wonderful wish, though. The scene is gorgeous, I know! <laughs> I know! Oh, God! Uh... You can tell us, Carrot. Sadie does come into existence at some point, right? Right? <laughs> I need the group to just be all aunts and uncles to Sadie. <laughs> I mean, it's so bad. Actually, there are no aunts. Up to your own thoughts and wishes. All right, cool. I'll take it. Hee hee hee. Yes, and I love how he wants to make his friends happier rather than just expecting them to magically become as happy. Yeah. What a good move. I'm reliving it. I'm reliving it again. This fucking music. It's probably really loud, actually. I'm sorry, guys. I'm like looking away. I'm like, you cannot hurt me. I pretend I do not see. <laughs> also, just like something, something Sadie has to be the one to like save and heal Bucks and all the adults. Yeah. It's it's wonderful. It literally is like the healing your inner child. Like we were the best. I mean. Do I just have to click something? Okay, yeah, and then it's like, no, stop it. <laughs> I tried to save, and it was like, no, and I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, I won't. <laughs> no saving for joy. But I love this, oh my god. That was so good, so good. Honestly, you work so hard on these damn cutscenes that they should just play. We shouldn't be able to skip past them. We should admire them every time they come to pass. That's what I think. They do take me the longest to- I- yeah, I don't even know anything about art and I'm pretty sure that- yeah, that makes sense. They take forever. <laughs> but they're so worth it! They're so worth it. Sadie. What do you want, Sadie? You know, I was thinking too when we ended the- originally, I was just like, damn. Kara, you feel, like I do not envy you at fucking all. You're telling me whatever you decide to make in the future has to like one up this or or be equal to this at the very least. Like what the fuck? I'm not saying that's the case. You don't have to do that. Honestly, I say just do something that makes you happy. But like the fact that people always compare and then you're comparing this to it's so much pressure, Jesus Christ. My suggestion, don't be carried anymore, be some other thing, <laughs> just make it. it. You're, I'm joking, your art style is too recognizable, there's no way people wouldn't be able to trace it back to you. But like, yeah, it's a lot of pressure and I do not envy you <laughs> for at all. See, that's the one highlight of not being very good at everything. <laughs> you can always do better. <laughs> This is true, I cannot hide with this art style, though it's okay. You shouldn't change a damn thing about it. But I would recommend, at the very least, taking a good long break, okay? Taking breaks is really hard for me, so I get it. You just want to, like, jump right back into it. You've got all this mojo, you've got all this shit going on, but don't fucking do it. Don't do it! It's the devil. <laughs> yes, we'll see, lol. Yeah, you should play Delta Root on your break. There you go. <laughs> this is your sign. Ooh. Holy shit. <laughs> Not being caught in your own shadow. I guess that's really just what it is, huh? Yeah, I feel like that's the only thing you can do in that situation, to be honest. 
Not that I would fucking know, I've never made a masterpiece, but you know, like if I did, we'll see one day, you know. Also, it's a great game with the most banger fucking soundtracks, and I think you will resonate with a lot of the themes in there. Yeah, it's just good. I need to catch up on chapter two for sure. Sorry, I'm checking my messages. This is very unprofessional. I understand this. <laughs> I never saw that man. I don't know who this man is. Every time I, I agree with Gray, best route to go. Oh, I can read the other ones I didn't read. Someone to watch over. I wish I was as tall as a mountain. I wish I had some ice cream. I wish flowers could talk. Dude, who wished that? Who wished the flowers could talk? That's fucking me. Who was that? <laughs> of your creative journey, and now it's time to move forward on this journey. Oh. It's sad when journeys come to an end, though. I'm sad for you. These are your babies. Many of the wishes are directly related to stuff in Wonderland. I mean, yeah, but I want to know who made it. <laughs> who made the wish? Was it Kenzo? Was it Kitchen? Was it... Who was it? Who wanted that talking flower? I wish I had tomatoes. Crap, box. Kitchen doesn't waste a moment running off after with a frustrated groan. Across the circle, Kenzo grows visibly restless. Ah, oh, shit, I'm not staying out here all by myself. He takes off, following the other two off into the dark. Uh, are you coming, Iggy? Orlam starts to run after him before uh, stopping to glance back at me. Yeah, I'm... I stop. Just look at him for a moment. I feel like I got something really important to say, but I just can't remember. Oh, Orlam, I... I swallow. My gaze drops, and I can feel myself start to tremble. It's okay. Huh? I blink back at the water forming once more on my eyes. What's okay? Orlam's lips curl up in a smile. I won't tell anyone if you want to hold my hand. <laughs> I blink, then smile. I have always been like this. <laughs> a thousand moments of heartbreak. A thousand moments of joy. A thousand moments of love. So strong it makes my heart fucking ache. All pass through my thoughts in an instant, forcing the tears back on my cheeks. I chuckle sheepishly and wipe up my eyes. I guess I can live with that. Then I take his hand, and we go running around the others, leaving the forest and our wonderland behind. We're leaving our wonderland behind, guys! Fuck! Uh, I'd like to tell you everything that was perfect for us after this. And I love this scene. I think this is one of my favorite scenes. Like, there's so many, but... God, it uh, feels so cathartic. But I like to think that's just like... Oh, shit. Okay, let's not skip past this by accident. That would not be good. Let's not do that. <laughs> Happy for these two. Glad they're in love. Brilliant. And these two. <laughs> Cecil! Oh, so happy for them with Sweetie Pies. And I love the Pride Flag shirt. <laughs> oh, here we go! Genzo started taking mechanical courses in high school, then went to vocational school for bike repair after graduating. A bit less uh, brusque uh, to his fellow peers, he managed to make a few friends along the way. Besides all of us, I mean. And he had a decent turnout at his grand opening once he finally made enough money to open up his own shop. He spends most of his days tinkering away on this and that, and has even started dabbling a bit uh, in car repair too if he, if, ah, if the busted up Lincoln Park next to his shop is any indication. Having a few cars in the rotation would certainly bring in a bit more cash. I wouldn't exactly call him a social bug, but he does get out on occasion. And he started volunteering his time at a few community events around Lambra even helping start up an annual uh, kids bike race and donating some bikes to the cause that's so fucking precious. I miss my man. Not super sure about his love life. According to Gidget, he's had a few flings every now and then, but considering he's never mentioned anything to me, I assume they were short term. Despite this, he seems pretty content. I think getting out more and having a wider circle of friends has been good for him, less lonely. Last I heard, he's uh, saving up to buy a nicer place for his mom. Oh, I want to meet his mom. She looks so cute. And as for me, well... Oh my goodness, Orlam and I grew closer in high school. Hanging out after school, working on homework and projects together. 
after Orlam joined the Business Professionals of America, he started coming up with all these grand ideas for potential business ventures, and he always wrote me in in the back end side of them, creating websites or crafting up financials. Oh, God. <laughs> and so we both ended up uh, with scholarships to the same school. It felt natural for us to room together. Damn, not us going to college together. Cute. His mom shows up at the OC, too. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, that's right. Though we couldn't have been more important, we uh, com complimented each other well. Orlam would get me out of the dorm room, integrating into some of, my, of his circles, and I would be a great listener, acting as an engaged uh, audience whenever he wanted to practice a presentation or run through a new idea. <laughs> or uh, even when he just wanted to chill uh, night, ah, or even when he just wanted a chill night in as a break from his exuberant lifestyle. We became so accustomed to each other but that by the time we graduated, it seemed like a matter of course that we would find a place together. So we rented a small park, and they were roommates, in Dukan, close enough to downtown that Orlan would commute to his internships, but enough on the edge that I could s still enjoy some peace and quiet. We would continue like that for a while, simply living our lives, growing in our own ways. I started working freelance, gradually growing out of my client base. While Orla moved from internships to full-time positions to finally opening up his own business consultancy agency, I designed his website. <laughs> Orla would maintain his reputation as a man about the town. He was constantly busy, meeting with clients, attending luncheons, and presenting to investors during the day, and hitting the bars and clubs at night. He was always bringing back new people to the apartment, but I did notice a sort of change over time. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps it was the way he started to give me a quick peck before heading off for work in the morning. Or perhaps it was the first time he introduced me as his Iggy when he'd come back with another woman from the club. Oh, I like the subtle, just like they move from being natural friends to being natural, like, more than friends, sor sort of. It's their own very special thing. Or maybe the way he started automatically including me as his plus one for all his business events and dinners. Or even how he'd start crawling into bed with me on nights he was alone. Yes, something changed. Or perhaps it had always been that way and I just never realized. Yeah, probably that. <laughs> to this day, I couldn't tell you exactly what we are. We're two people who care about each other, that love each other, that enjoy life together. And you know, maybe that's all that matters, really. Why do we need to fit ourselves into rules that others have created? We can make our own rules. It's a life that makes me happy. A life I've chosen for myself and no one else. I still get the occasional deja vu, the sudden flash of a memory. Sometimes so brief, so intense, it takes the wind out of me. Other times, long and drawn out, filling me with a sense of long-lost melancholy. My heart knows what I've been through, even if my head forgets sometimes. The heart never forgets. Orlon remembers, too. Sometimes we'll be out in the dinner, and he'll randomly bring up a memory. This is quite reminiscent of... Don't you remember when? My, my, doesn't this make you feel nostalgic? And I always have to pause a moment, let the memory fizzle to the surface, find it there, buried deep within the synopsis, but I always do. And then I'll smile. Yeah, I'll say. Even though it doesn't make a lick of sense. And then the two of us will go about our day. Oh, How nice for them. I love that. I love that their dynamic is that. Oh, it's a buddy! Holy shit! Buddy time! Fucking righto. Righto. I love a bunny. You're welcome, Karen, again. But we're going to do it one more time. <laughs> one more time. Encore. Encore. <laughs> yeah. That was sweet. Look at the stinkers. I love my stinky babies. Sweet, sweet babies. Sweet, sweet bunnymen. Bunnymen. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going insane. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Where does Arc 5 start? Do I even have a start to Arc 5? I'm sure I do. Okay, okay. Yeah. I did have a save. Look at that! We love it. We love to see it. We're about to really flash back. <laughs> so we're still gonna hug him. We're not gonna slap him. Hopefully Gidget doesn't want us to slap him. Uh... Oh, I didn't do it this last time. If he wants to swallow and wave, it's so mean. Just so mean. How to to fix this. God damn it. I bring a hand up towards his shoulders, my fingers hovering just above the fabric of his sweatshirt, but then ultimately lower it. 
Uh, basically, just choose all the gadget choices that I think you'll probably unlock them, like when falling down the tree and they're seen in Jerry's hideout. Okay, that makes sense. On it, wait, could I have just gone to an earlier save then? Or a later save, I guess? Well, you know, we're, fuck it, we're here. <laughs> fuck it. I want to really make sure. If you have one falling down the tree, let me see. I might. What if I saved over it? <laughs> How embarrassing would that be? Hey, yo. Y'all saw what I just did. <laughs> I'm so good at it. Nothing really changes, does it? You just overrun it. <laughs> yeah, my bad. <laughs> oh. Whoopsie. Whoopsie daisy. You know, so much changes, but I stay the same. Oh, you need to go before. They're already there. Oh, fuck. Okay, yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, we were just... Load. <laughs> Not me having to slow down. Load. Okay. We'll just stay. Just be nice. <laughs> and we're gonna fall down the hole, and we're gonna do the right thing. I can't believe I ever wrote my name. <laughs> How embarrassing. I just be doing stuff, you know me. Think about Gidget. My thoughts jump instinctively to Gidget. On her lips on mine, of the way her eyes tremble whenever she looks at me. Gidget. A pang of guilt stabs me. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it took us a couple tries, but we got it. Of the things I said to her, there's something there beneath the mask she wears, the mask I'd forced her to wear. She and I cared about each other, cared for each other, had meant something to each other. But my words had always gotten in the way. If only I could tell her. I don't know. This is all so confusing. I don't know what I want. I press my hands into my eyes harder and harder. Why can't I? Why can't I? My body curls in on itself, heart beating, beating. Just leave me alone. Okay, yeah, that's familiar. Well, what happened here? Okay. Oh god, I don't want to relive the rabbits, man. I can't do it. The rabbits trigger me here, <laughs> like, so bad. We've been through so much, dog. We just yap yapping. I'll try to make sure to save... Well, I probably won't need to. But I do have my shirt. I've got two of them after all. It's not much, but hopefully it will help. I shrug on the outer shirt. I lay it carefully atop Gens' form. I have to make sure not to pick all the Genzo stuff either. What good will it actually do just sitting on top of the coat like that? But I have to hope. Every little bit helps, right? I just to make sure he stays warm. Oh, this is- okay. It's all good. It's fine. I let it aside and wrap my arms around my chest. My anxiety is raging in my stomach. Harry thoughts about if he doesn't wake up. This choice only affects Genzo, so you don't need to, but it's okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. I begin to slouch and I let myself tip over to the side. The ground is rough beneath my cheek, but I don't pay it any mind. Just staring, staring, staring into the fire. I even realize it, and sooner they drift off into a restless sleep. It's coming back to me just how much I've read. <laughs> and how much you wrote. I can't even imagine. Like... Your document must look insane. Everything is sideways. I groan. My whole body aches, and when I sit up, crumples of dirt painted to the side of my cheek. Rise and shine, sleeping beauty. I rub at my, my eyes, my face, my neck, then glance down to see Genzo's coat cover my waist and legs. I must look fifty shades of him confused because Genzo coughs and looks away. You, uh, you were shivering something awful in your sleep, so I thought I'd... I blink. Memories of the night prior are starting to drift back into my mind like bubbles on the breeze. Oh. Oh, right. I snap back with a start. But, but you were... You needed... Pick a sentence and stick with it, why don't you? Genzo just laughs, and I feel shame smarting on my cheeks. I admit I got a good laugh out of it when I woke up. The shirt, I mean. The thing's as thin as a sheet. A pause. But, uh, thanks. I can tell you tried. <laughs> thanks. Uh, I run an awkward hand through my hair and push myself to my feet. My outer shirt is lying neat and folded a few feet from the fire. Still feeling like a hopeless wreck of a human being, I grab it and slide it back on, o on over my shoulders. Some help I turned out to be. Here I try to take care of him, but he'd end up taking care of me like usual. I wander towards Genzo as I attempt to work out the kink in my neck. 
He's sitting near the fire, and now low and crackly, it looks like he put a few new sticks in it. Okay, cool. The Iggies! <laughs> I missed them. I missed the Iggy dolls. Now you're just being ridiculous. She never did anything like that. Besides, she remembers everything now too, right? She knows all the messed up stuff that happened before. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Hey, come on. Was that all the loser stick together stuff for back on the boat, huh? Genzo sighs. I see his face soften in acceptance. Yeah, yeah, I did say that, didn't I? I bring my hands to his shoulders with an encouraging pat. Come on, let's go bag another one of those losers and start towards the manor entrance. What Iggy dolls? I miss them. Goddamn Iggs, do you ever listen to some of the things you say? What was that fucking, did you see that? <laughs> The fucking beanie at the bottom. Oh goodness. No, she's right. It happens before I can stop myself. I throw a hand out at Genzo's sleeve, giving it a shameful tug backwards as I ride to my feet. No, she's right. I say with the slightest shudder in my voice. Right. How the hell is any of what is she saying your fault, huh? Genzo box. No, it's. But all of a sudden, I find myself unable to speak. My throat goes tight, tight as a vice. And I feel tendrils of heat spread across my cheeks, my face, my neck. Genzo just blinks, waiting for me to continue. As a cross for me, Gidget raises her brow. But try as I might, I just can't speak. I press my lips together, then drop my gaze to my hands. My fingers are trembling out of control, and I clasp them together and try and still them. That alarm outside went off again. So sorry, I finally managed to croak. My knee bumping against the table painfully in the process. Oh fuck, I'm gonna have to hide soon. No, it's okay, let's get past it. I bring my hand to my face, rubbing at my eyes. Why is it so hard? I do love that you love Gidget so much, but you're also terrified of spiders. Wow. <laughs> Whenever I try to say something serious, something important, why do I completely cease functioning like a capable human being? Genzo slips back into his own chair, and I spy him watching me incredulously, uh, brows quirked in concern. Gidget continues to watch me, blinking, something I can't read on her face, before finally she yawns. Your unfettered emotions tire me. I must rest. <laughs> the true irony. Love and hate. It's a very thick, uh, thin line. I always say it. This part was so goofy, dude. So much has happened. It's like all coming back to me. In a way, I'm glad that we we're able to go through like a quick. Hey, remember all this stuff? See that? <laughs> like tap out, Iggy. I got this. <laughs> the whole time. Love them. Oh, those fucking tomatoes. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you, tomatoes. The best part of the game was when you guys ceased to exist. Jerry! Jerry! Okay, cool. So now we can save over this. Because that scene was... F uh, go talk to Gidget! Something in me, perhaps something I'm not even sure I myself understand, turns my feet in the direction of the overlook, and I make my way towards the end of this cave, eyes squinting momentarily as the light of the moon overtakes my vision. Outside it... It's beautiful. I suck in a small gasp as I climb out into the overlook, the full breadth of the view heading me all at once. The cave is built into the side of the cliff, and from the overlook, one can look out across the lower level of forest beyond, the dark dunes of the treetops spreading out for miles in both directions before hitting the surface of the lake. Above our heads, the sky opens up, el elephantine uh, expanse of stars and galaxies gazing back down at us. At the moon at its center, huge and milky and white, glows like a firefly, ready to be plucked from all the blue and gazed at between softly parted fingers. Gidget must hear my stifled breath because they turn with a start, eyes widening briefly before flickering away. Oh, sorry, were you looking for me? I was gonna come right back in. I shake my head. No, no, no. It's, uh, I was just, I saw you out here, so I thought I'd. Our voices fall, silence staining the dirt beneath our feet. Then finally, do you, uh, wanna come sit? Sure. Gidget scooches over atop the boulder they've been using as a perch, making room for me to join. And I take a seat next to them, uh, pulling my knees in against my chest. Both of us stare out across the landscape, the moon coloring our faces. Just needed some fresh air is all, Gidget said, their voice soft. It's really beautiful. Yeah. A pause. You doing okay? I mean, uh, with your shoulder and all? Hmm. Still aches a bit, but it's better at least. I see. Gidget brings their hand together, and I see them shifting their thumbs against each other. There's like all kinds of sounds outside, and I don't know what the fuck they are. First right over left, then left over right. Sorry, they finally say. Sorry for what? I, I mean, it's my fault, after all. Eh? I scratch my head sheepishly. Not really sure I consider most of what people do uh, down there, their fault. Down here, their fault. 
but that doesn't seem to help matters much. In fact, Gidget's face seems to grow even more dour. Their gaze drops to their hands, their eyes strained. What? I blink. Their lips part, then close, then part again. I did a lot of really awful things to you. I just look at them for a moment, eyes widening, then turn away. I don't even remember all of it. This place, it, it warps you to the point that you start to lose yourself. Lose who you are. They lean forward, resting their elbows on their knees. Everything's like a jumbled up kaleidoscope in my mind. I try to bring memories into focus, but it just twists into something new. I remain silent, just staring out across the darkened treetops. But that doesn't change what I did, what, what you had to go through because of me. A sigh. I remember the rage. God, I remember the rage. And the resentment, the jealousy, the, the... They bring a hand to their forehead, jaw clenched. The entitlement. I see their fingers shaking. In the beginning, it wasn't as bad, but it kept, it kept growing. And even though part of me knew it was strong, I couldn't stop it. Like this, the, this thing growing inside of me, whispering inside my head, blurring my thoughts. I rest my cheek on my knee, fingers clasped around my ankles. My own chest feels heavy, conflicting thoughts battling at the base of my consciousness. I couldn't stop, Eggy. They turn towards me for the first time and I see the glimmer of tears on their eyes. And the things I said to you, the things I did to you. They turn away with the grimace, wiping at the belligerent water. I just, I wanted so badly to, to be what you wanted, a sniff, that I lost myself in the process. Silence again. Silence save the occasional murmur or clang a dish, uh, where from back inside the cave. I bite at the inside of my cheek, gaze dropping to get its feet. I don't want you to be anything. A pause. I just want you to be you. Then I have to smirk at myself, as, las as laughable as that sounds considering everything I've said over the years. My voice grows small, so small amongst all the black. I'm sorry, too. I feel Gidget shift next to me, their shoulder brushing against mine. I guess we both use a chance. <laughs> we could both use a chance to try again, huh? Yeah, I smile in spite of myself, then turn my gaze back to the sky, watching as the stars swirl around us. It's quiet for a good long time this time. I lean into the breeze as it laughs up my cheeks, plays with my hair. As for a moment, we're back in high school. And the two of us sitting on the steps outside the computer lab, another long afternoon of hacking at our projects, watching as the sun sets, revealing the moon and the stars overhead. We'd spent so much time in that lab. Just the two of us. Gidget finally stirs, I see them playing with the string of the hem of their pants. I know, I still have a lot of my own shit to work out. Work through. A pause. Shit, I've got to figure out for myself. Shit, I finally can figure out for myself. I turn to look at them, brows arced. But if you ever, ever can, give me a second chance. Their voice goes soft, husky. I, I'd love to be your prince. My cheeks grow instantly warm and I bumped my elbow, ow. And I jerk my head away, lips pressed tight. By your rules this time. Their voice cracks. It might take me some time to get used to, but now it's their turn to blush. I never wanted to hurt you again, so I don't really know what to say, how to respond. There's a warmth inside of me, spreading out across my chest, shooting into my arms and fingers. And my brain, the part of my brain capable of forming words, it seems to have stopped working. So instead, I just clasp my hands together over my knees with a little breathy, oh, and stare at the reflection of the moon on the lake until it sear my eyes. Gidget coughs, rubs at her mouth. Anyway, you don't have to give me an answer now. A pause. Or ever. Another pause. B -b I hope you'll at least let me protect you. A third pause, this one long and pronounced. I owe you that much, maybe. Take the hand! Not say something encouraging. We would not say something encouraging. My head is still a whirl. A whirl with a whole smorgasbord of feelings, to be honest. Some that make me warm, some that make me cold, and some that twist my insides into teeny tiny little knots that'll probably take weeks to iron out. But one feeling stands out above the others. How much I love Gidget. <laughs> a feeling of closeness with Gidget. And even though there's still plenty of, plenty about them that makes me uneasy, about what happened that makes me uneasy, that connection between us remains and will always remain tethered. I want to be there for them. N and maybe, maybe I want them to be there for me too. This thought alone keeps the pink flowing through my cheeks as I glance up at them, their silhouette striking against the starlit backdrop, striking and handsome. I drop my gaze, then reach over hesitantly, shyly almost, and curl my fingers around their knuckles. I'd like that very much. At this, our eyes meet for just a moment. Just enough for Gidget's brow to arc and their eyes to soften and their lips to tremble ever so slightly. And for me to just get comfortable enough that I have to break the gaze and turn away with a dorky grin, fire still laughing at my cheeks. We sit there a short while longer, just staring out across the vista of trees and stars and memories. 
until Gidget starts pestering me about staying warm and how I need to rest my shoulder and the two of us wander back inside. I can still feel the warmth of their hand against my palm as I settle into my bed, sleep coating my eyes. How sweet. I awake the next morning to cooking over the fire, a delightful smell that makes the tip of my nose twitch. And when I creep my eyes open, I see a soft sunlight filtering from the back tunnel, blanketing uh, the cave in warm light. I push myself up to a seat with a growl and glance about. The rabbits are already up and moving, scurrying around and doing, well, who knows what really. But they're quite active with a good number of them at the fire hit, holding half-eaten skewers and drinking mugs of what I hope is coffee. Because goddamn, could I really use some coffee right about now. Stifling a yawn, I make my way down the ladder, nearly bumping into scuttling Iggy as I start towards the center of the cave. Once equipped with my own mug, I, a plate of morning comestibles, I wander through the fire, hoping to catch a glance of a familiar face so I don't have to stand awkwardly and eat. Or even worse, make the walk of shame back to my bunk and eat there. Fortunately, I spy Gidget on the far end, and when our eyes meet momentarily, they beckon me over. I take the spot next to them gratefully, then allow myself to finally dig into the breakfast of fried e potatoes and eggs waiting me. The light touch of their shoulder against mine is a comforting presence in my groggy morning state. Sweet. And once breakfast is over, things move very quickly because we're skipping through most of it. Just say nothing, it's okay. <laughs> the word's uh, choice makes my eyes twitch, but I say nothing. No reason to get all up on arms when we have to arm ourselves anyway in just a bit. But we'll say it next time, don't worry. <laughs> Sending mixed signals, we love it. But Jerry ignores me. R.I.P. Jerry, man. We're not killing up. Jerry says nothing. We grow silent, the whole lot of us huddled around the shed just waiting. <laughs> I'm reliving it. <laughs> we love reliving it. I love all of them together, but I love and Gidget and Iggy the most, I think. I just adored... Wait, wait, sorry, I gotta save it and then I'll say it. Yes, I overwrite it. Okay. Uh, I love all of them together, but I love Gidget and Iggy the most, I think. Just, they adored each other in childhood, and they're so sweet and gentle and goofy with each other. And also, it's like they need to understand themselves first before they can really love each other. Gidget had to accept the parts of themselves that were willing to... <laughs> or ready to... And also have to accept the parts of Iggy with him being ace, even though it's not at all what they thought their life would look. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I'm a wonderful ticket. Oh, stick by get it. I'm both shaken and shaky, and the pain in my wrist has turned into a dull throb that travels up the entire length of my arm. Genzo helps me gently onto the lip of the basin. I sit there quietly for a moment, gaze flicking instantly between my arm and the water. I must look slightly bewildered, though, because Gidget steps towards me, not brows knitting in concern. You, uh, need some help? And while I don't answer in words, the semi-pleading look I shoot them is apparently enough, because they sit down beside me, careful as they help me wash the blood off my arm. They finish up by tearing a piece of fabric from the bottom of my shirt and using it to wrap the wound. Not the most effective bandage in the world, but certainly better than nothing. Once that's taken care of, they give my shoulder a reassuring squeeze, and I unconsciously let myself lean against them just a bit. Kara has to go now, Joy. They left a nice message if you scroll up. Oh, shit, my bad. I didn't even read it. Uh, sorry, it got lost. Okay, apologies because my partner is calling me, so I unfortunately need to run now, but I think you should hopefully be on track to get Gidget's ending now, hopefully. So look forward to watching it on the VOD. Tee -hee. Excited! Uh, thank you again for playing. My heart is so full. Thank you for dropping by! Uh, we've dedicated a lot of time together, so... <laughs> uh, but we're almost done, pretty much. Uh, I cut it off with my paragraph. I'm sorry. No, don't apologize. It's okay. I just didn't notice. Uh, the warmth of their skin is comforting in the dank sewer. Of course, I'm so glad I could join for both. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So, Genza takes this time to search our environs. I see him wandering around, finger to his chin. Oh, I can skip this part. Oh, no. And he studies the surrounding walls. After a while, he turns back with a hum. There's like a door or something over there. Guess that's our best way in. Climb's gonna be ox as fuck, though. <laughs> I spy the door he's referring to a small square hatch in the ceiling near the far wall. It undoubtedly leads into the castle proper, though it will indeed be a tricky climb. A few raised platforms seem to form somewhat at an upward incline, though, and the wall just beneath the door seems to boast a series of indented handholds, so we should be able to make it work. We give ourselves another ten minutes or so to ensure we're good and ready before making the climb. Despite my trepidation of what lies on the other side, I can't deny my desire to get out of the damp sewer way. My teeth are starting to chatter as we stand uh, facing the first of the raised platforms, Genzo's brows twisting in worry. I wonder how many people I'm playing, like, I'm playing under our Wonderland right now. I wonder how many other people are playing it, like, at the same time I'm playing it. It's probably a decent amount, honestly. Think about it.
This entire scene was fucking insane. This has got to be one of the most, like, wild scenes in the entire game. <laughs> it's just moving. Are you doing a little dance? Uh, I guess we're gonna have to watch this one again. Remember this? Remember this? <laughs> this scene broke my heart originally, too. I was like, oh. I felt so emotional. The build up. Just gagged. <laughs> Everybody's losing fingers. I ran out of water. This is so sad. I'm trying to protect my heart from the hurt. <laughs> I adore this scene. It's literally incredible. Like... It's crazy that Arc 5 can have this many, like, climaxes, if that makes sense, like... This scene is the one that made me cry the most. Yeah, I'm surprised I really haven't cried too much. I feel like I'm super sad, but it's always the happy shit that gets me, man. Like the second I see something really happy, you're just like, oh. I think I might have cried when I saw this originally. I can't remember. Probably a little bit. I'm actually big and strong, so I don't cry that much. <laughs> I'm cool, don't worry about it. Oh, the fucking flashback. Fuck. Oh, God, I remember. <laughs> it hurts. It, it doesn't hurt until you get to the flashback and then you're like, ah! <laughs> it's coming back! <laughs> Not me having to relive all of part five for Gidget. I'll do it for you anytime, babe. It's coming back. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. I, it's coming back. The second I saw the fucking flashbacks, I was like, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't. It's hurting again. It's hurting. It's hurting. It's hurting. <laughs> I'm in pain. Somebody help me. <sighs> I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna puke. Me when I have to relive all the part five. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me. All right. The rabbits are like, well, this is awkward. <laughs> The conceptual agent- what? The conceptualization of this entire scene is beyond me. Like, I don't even know how you think up this kind of stuff. Like, genuinely. <laughs> oh yeah, baby, we skipping. Back to reality. Back to life. Back to the here and now, yeah. And my little blorbs. <laughs> I just, just said none for them this time. Yes, just like it deserves. I'm still gonna save just in case. Um, we'll write over this one. Why do I have so many saves of sad ghetto? <laughs> what was this? Okay, the option will determine. Yeah, I got it. And my girl. That's my babe. That's my babe. 
Uh, I push myself to my feet with a little wobble blanket wrapped tight around my arms, then start for the door. It feels strange, like walking through the veil of a dream, not comprehending everything I'm doing, yet feeling more in control than I ever have in my life. Where are you going? Orlam rolls over to blanket me curiously from the bed. Mm. I stop, look at the door, at my feet. I suddenly feel as though I'm being judged. Just, need to clear my head. Suit yourself. I see him roll back over to face the wall. He looks incredibly small, curled up on the bed like that. I chew on the inside of my lip, just standing there a moment, then push the door open and step in outside. Um, it's wet outside. While no longer actively raining, a residual scene of moisture continues to cling to anything it to latch onto. The grass, the dirt, the leaves, and the trees. Even the very air itself, cool and crisp with heavy as it brushes against my cheeks and nose. I pull the blanket tighter around my shoulders, still shivering. I spy Genzo seated on a log not far from the cabin, currently hunkered over and cleaning his bloody stump of a finger. I wince, feeling a tendril of guilt curl its way around the base of my brain, but ultimately point my gaze downward and start towards the right. I hope he doesn't see me. Getting questioned by Orlan was bad enough. I'm not sure I could take Genzo's puppy <laughs> dog eyes asking what I'm doing. Fortunately, I appear to succeed in my clandestine endeavors because I make it around the side of the cabin without hitch. I let my shoulders fall just a bit, uh, slowly to a meandering pace as I finish my roundabout jaunt. The area behind the cabin is dark and cool. There's a small hill of chopped wood piled up against the back of the cabin and a chopping block just a few paces away. My mind flicks momentarily back to the first time I'd seen bucks at that block, but I fight the memory away. There'll be plenty of time to worry about bucks later. <laughs> right now, I only have one thing on my mind. As if on cue, I spot Gidget's unmistakable crop of blonde hair over by the threshold of trees. They're just standing there, motionless as they stare off into the darkness, almost like some kind of uh, portentous uh, statue prophesizing the events to come. I suddenly feel a bit out of place. My hunkered shoulders, the blanket clutching around my frame, my aura of frailty. There you go. I feel so small compared to Gidget's decisive profile, and I'm all at once unsure what to say, or if I should even, or even should speak. Um, unfortunately, I'm not forcing, uh, forced to finagle a flustered greeting because Gidget seems to sense my presence and turns their head. Their brows arc in surprise before curling downward, uh, sheepish. Hey, go back inside. You're gonna catch cold. I'm fine, I mumble, despite the tremble in my fingers betraying my lie. Just wanted to make sure you were okay, is all. Gidget smiles at this. I'm okay, just needed some air. Maybe, I don't know. Their gaze flicks back to the black void between the trees. I wait for them to continue. When they don't, I take a few steps forward, the wet grass leaving dark patterns on my shoes. Whether it's from the sight of all that blackness or the breeze slipping up my pant leg, a chill works its way up my spine and I instinctively pull the blanket in closer. Next to me, Gidget has started playing with their hands. It felt a bit stifling in there. I glance over. They're pulling at their fingers, anxious. I do that. Uh, fists twisting and tugging at their uh, left index finger and then mashing and kneading their knuckles up, down, up, down. Eggy. I'm somehow taken aback at our chat in Gidget's car, the way they'd fidgeted uncomfortably before leaning up to kiss me. Oh yeah, I remember that. But this fiddling feels different. Less shy, jitters, and more. Eggy, I'm sorry. They turn towards me with a hairy jerk, their hands to my shoulders, but not looking at me, staring down at the ground, staring through the ground. G Gidget. I start by my voice, swallowed up in my lungs. I can feel their fingers trembling around my shoulder blades. See the glimmer of the tears as the heavy pools grow beneath their eyes. When they speak ne again next, their voices strain, choked. Every second I'm in this cabin, all I can think about is what I almost did to you. I drop my gaze. And all those other times, the pain I caused you. Their throat catches. The horrible things I said to you. Their grip goes so tight around my shoulders that it starts to hurt. And I place a hand over theirs with a small squeeze. Gidget. The pinch loosens, goes slack, and finally the arms fall down to their sides. Their gaze is still pointed at the ground. I don't know how you could ever forgive me. The tears are running rivulets down their cheeks now, their jaw clenched. How can I expect anyone to accept me for who I am? A sniff. They wipe with their nose. If I can't accept you for who you are. Gidget, it was this place. I start. That doesn't take back what I did. They cut me off with a snap, then softer. That doesn't take back how I hurt you. I don't know what to say to this, so I say nothing, just staring at the wet grass. Gidget starts slapping their hand against their forehead with a frustrated groan. G Gidget? What if? What if? They buck forward, and I instinctively put my arms out to catch them, but my strength isn't enough to keep them aloft. And when they go limp, their knees buckling beneath them, they slide down to the ground, body heavy against mine. They wrap their arms around my legs, face pressed somewhere near my belly, and, their sh and as their shoulders heave. 
What if this place reveals all our true selves? I can barely hear them, their voice muffled by the fabric of my shirt. But then they turn their head, uh, taking a gasping breath of air through their tears. What if I would have done that eventually for real up there? I'm not sure what to say at first, so I simply bring my hand to the back of their head, feel them trembling against me. What if that's who I really am? That's bullshit! It comes out before I even register it, and I blink, the force of my words surprising even me. I feel Gidget's head slightly as they turn into their bleary gaze upwards. That's bullshit, I say again a bit quieter, but with more conviction. Is it, though? Gidget asks after a moment, hesitant. There might be a lot I don't know about you. There might be a lot you don't even know about yourself. But, but if there's one thing I do know, it's that you're one of the kindest, sweetest people I've ever known. Gidget doesn't respond to this time, just kneeling there. I hear them sniff, their breath shuddering. Besides, I say slightly, you don't really think Orlon would have started secretly boiling people alive in his basement, do you? Gidget laughs at this, a throaty, crackly chuckle that makes their shoulders quake. <laughs> Maybe not, though he did always have some strange taste. I sigh, then kneel down myself, bringing my arms around Gidget's shoulders and pressing my face into the top of their head. The hair is soft, oh, against my cheeks. Look, this, this place twisted all of us. I've got shit I need to work through too. The pain that I caused. I feel Gidget press into me, their breath still shaky. But that's not who you are. A pause. Only you can decide who you are. Not this place, not your mom, not anyone else. Oh. I give them another squeeze, and definitely, definitely not me. My own eyes burn just a bit as the words pass my lips, an atonement of my own. For so many words said thoughtlessly, the two of us grow quiet, just holding each other, kneeling there in the wet grass as we let the weight of our sins against each other gather and spill out onto our feet. Gidget is the first to speak. I hear them sniff, their throat still choked with phlegm, though their voice now tinted in jest. So philosophical. I have my moments. I'll print that out and hang it up next to my live, laugh, love poster. <laughs> you fucking... I give a start at this, which throws off my balance. And we both tip to the side, falling onto the grass with a cushy thump, our limbs still tangled. Gidget laughs. It's the first real laugh of theirs I've heard in... I don't know how long, to be honest. That sound of it reminds me of orange soda. Oh, they said that before. Then they turn, uh, shifting onto their backs so they can look up at the stars. I follow suit. The heavens expanding in front of us like the world's large largest painting. Despite the chill seeping into my back, I don't feel cold. Quite the opposite, in fact. A strange residual warmth seems to be building up in my chest. A comfortable, honey, a uh, homey sort of warmth. I feel like I have so much to make up for. Gidget finally muses, their gaze still pointed skyward. Hmm? Everything I've done, everything I've worked for, has all been for a life that isn't my own. I'm quiet for a moment, thinking. I get that. Makes me wish I could have figured all this shit out sooner, you know? All those wasted years? How come the younger generations are all able to work this stuff out in their teens? The internet, I guess, I say with a laugh. I just... I see them curl into their hand into a fist, pulling at the grass. Nobody. Nobody talked about this kind of stuff. If you were different, it was just a phase. A quirk. Something you'd grow out of. There was nowhere you, we could go to be untangle all these weird feelings floating around in our heads. No safe spaces to ask questions, role models to look up to... I don't disagree, but I'm also sure what, I'm not sure what to add, so I stay silent, waiting for them to continue. This is gonna sound stupid and ridiculous, but like, like sometimes I actually feel jealous of Genzo, you know? I'm not, not trying to make it sound like he had it easier or anything, don't get me wrong, but at least he had a very physical sign telling him what was up with him. What was up? I bite back a sticker. <laughs> Iggy, you, <laughs> that's messed up. <laughs> Gidget wafts me against the shoulder with a laugh, then groans in frustration, hands at their forehead and clenching at their bangs. Like, yeah, you went through a lot of shit too, but at least he knew who he was. Every time I took a step towards figuring myself out, I get pushed back too. This constant battle. I drop my gaze at this, hand clasping across my chest. I don't even want to think about how many steps I'd been pushed back. This thought makes the guilt gather in my belly, twist in discomfort. Even now, I, I don't know if I know, you know? It feels right. I feel right. But like, I can hear the tremble in their voice, the uncertainty. I just feel like I've been wearing a mask my whole life. And it's been so long that even now that, I'm to, that I've taken it off, I, I don't know what's underneath. Something in Gidget's words make my own brain tingle, I don't know why. Like something hitting too close to home. Though, not in the same way. Nothing to do with gender. Nothing to do with sexuality. But a secret third thing that even I don't understand. 
A mask. The mask. The mask I've been wearing a long time so that I could fit in. The gidget continues before I could dig in too deep. I guess I just... I don't want to waste any more time is all. Not when I'm already wasted so much. I purse my lips, brows furrowing. I don't think it's all been a waste, though, has it? A pause. Just a different path. Gidget's response uh, responds with a non-committal hum. Would he have done things differently if you'd figured things out? If you'd figured things out sooner? I squint my eyes against the stars. Not sure, though it's a bit different, maybe. Maybe. I let my thoughts bounce for a few more moments before attempting to translate them into words. Though perhaps I'd have been less scared. Scared? Hmm. Cause like, I always just avoided people. Whenever they get too close, I'd run away without knowing why. Gidget is silent next to me. But maybe if I knew why, I'd have been more confident in making my own needs known. My own boundaries. I felt less alone. Less different from everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I lace my hands across my belly, chewing on the inside of my cheek. Then again, maybe I would have just been more of an anxiety-ridden wreck, I say with a laugh. Gidget's laughter joins mine as the warmth of our shared insecurities settle over us. Then the quiet returns, nothing but the far-off song of cicadas to accompany our reflection. I think I would have think I would have done things differently, Gidget says softly. I glance in the direction but say nothing. Their profiles stand stark against the black backdrop of trees, stronger, a lot differently. Something about the way they say it gives me pause, and I turn my eyes back towards the sky. It's both limitless and suffocating at the same time. There's still time. We aren't that old. Even if I feel like ancient dust compared to teens these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we aren't. Of course, that means we need to tend- we need to get out of here alive, which isn't exactly guaranteed at this point. Gidget laughs, a tired laugh, but an accepting one. Yeah, that's true. I turn to see them, smiling. Without really thinking about it, I reach over to find their hand. My fingers lace between theirs, interlocked atop the wet grass. If we do, though, I hope we can do things differently. Together. Gidget turns to look at me, and I can see tears bristling once again on their eyes. They give, <laughs> they give my hand a squeeze. A connection in the void. A shared understanding. A single point of warmth warding off the chill. My warmth. I'd like that very much. Oh, how precious! We lie out there a bit longer, until the tendrils of sleep start to claim me. My eyes fluttering closed, my words uh, devolve into bleary murmurs. Gidget must notice because I hear them chuckle even through my dream-weary state. Feel them pull me in close. You idiot, you're gonna get sick. But I'm tired. <laughs> Come here. They pull the blanket more snugly across my frame, arms snaking around my waist, then simply hold me in against their chest. Oh! Warm. A warm cocoon. Silent and still beneath the stars. Yes, this feels right. Even if we don't have all the answers. Even if we still have more we need to work through. At least we could be there for each other. Provide each other with warmth. In that moment before I fall asleep, my worries vanish. No matter what what tomorrow may bring. No matter what fate may have in store for us. We have each other. And sometimes, sometimes that's enough. I feel Gidget's chin rest against the top of my head as they curl against me. Thank you, Iggy. And then I'm asleep. Oh, they're in love. I also noticed that they didn't get a kiss scene there because I feel like the most kisses exchanged were between Gidget and Iggy. That's just a, an observation. Eed, they're not dead. Oh, Ed, <laughs> Ed, they're not dead. Look at them, cold and lifeless on the ground, the cruel cogs of fate having stolen <laughs> their lives with naught but the finale remaining. Would you stop fucking talking like that? I swear to God, I'm one second away from maiming you. I'm awoken the next morning to the feeling of a foot against my ribs. The foot taps gently against my skin once, twice, then jabs me right in my appendix. I let out a pain, yelp, and twist back. What the hell? Oh, still an <laughs> animate. Animate. Uh, tragic. They're so in love. <laughs> Orla uses and steps back, his arms curled languidly uh, across his chest. Iggs. Uh, Genzo steps forward and into my view, brows nodded in concern. Christ on a cracker, why the fuck didn't you two come in last night? I bring a hand to my forehead, side still aching, as I attempt to jumpstart my mind into gear and deduce what happened. Gidget. Gidget and I. I drop my gaze. There they are, still curled up next to me, just as I remembered. Then we really did fall asleep out here, which would certainly explain why my every muscle feels stiff enough to lay a charcuterie on and also to why a deep-seated chill has seeped its way uh, so deep into my bones that my teeth won't stop chattering against each other. 
Great. I mumble, pushing myself all the way up to my seat, running a hand through my damp hair. So much for trying to rest up before the big climax <laughs> or whatever is awaiting us at the other side of that door. Gidget, wake up. I say with a beleaguered sigh as I give them a little shake. They shift, groan, then let out a big yawn as they roll over onto their back, only to immediately snap open their eyes. Fuck, that's cold. You're telling me. I rub at the goosebump, uh, running up and down my arms. Probably not the best idea we've ever had. Fuck, Gidget says again, popping up to a seat. Two fucks in a row. They must be really uncomfortable. We require sustenance, Orlom stares down at Then go make food, Orlom! To which Gidget responds with an angry splay of their hands. What do we look like, your fucking parents? Go make something. Yeah, for real! They rub at the growing knot on their forehead. Orlom raises his uh, gaze towards the sky, almost disinterested. I don't know how to work the stove. Fuck, fucking fuck. I can practically hear Gidget's teeth cl clacking between each expletive. Uh, Genzo slaps Orlon's shoulder with an angry huff. Stop being a saggy sack of dicks and help them inside, shit for brains. He starts forward towards me and just for a second our eyes meet. I see him pause, jaw taut as his brows go rigid. And in that instant, Orlom steps between us, grabbing my hand before Genzo has a chance. Everyone's so moody in the morning. Orlom grumbles and pulls me to my feet none, none too gently. Genzo quickly uh, snaps out of his stupor and offers his hand to Gidget instead, who takes it and stumbles to their feet with a wobble. When her eyes meet for a second time, he quickly averts his gaze. He looks sad, a kind of defeated heaviness to his aura, but he quickly covers it up with a wide grin. Pretty sure I saw some porridge in there when I was scrounging around this morning. Maybe we can rustle yourselves up some grub, eh? The hot meal does sound divine about right now. Uh, Gidget is attempting to brush the errant bits of grass and dirt from their clothes. Maybe between the four of us we can make heads or tails of that stove. Too many cooks, more like, but clearly my opinion is held in low regard. We start back towards uh, the other side of the cabin, our feet leaving valleys in the wet grass. But before I round the corner, I feel a grip on my wrist, and I glance back to see Gidget's face uh, furrowed in concern. You okay? They ask softly. You already look like you're liable to keel over at a moment's notice. Their gaze flicks downwards. I, sh I shouldn't have kept you out. But I just smile in return. The warmth from the night prior is still flush on my cheeks. It's fine. A little hot food and I'll warm right up. Gidget smiles at this, a small blush dancing on their own cheeks. Then the two of us walk inside to have our breakfast. <laughs> this is, I love... They're still mowing that grass, man. Despite a few disparaging comments and a near argument, the rest of the morning goes as smooth as you might expect. Third glance at Gidget across the room, who's currently surveying the collection of jars on the far shelf, clearly deep in thought. My cheeks grow warm in spite of myself, and I flick my gaze back to the door. That's so cute. Call Gidget! Scroll down to Gidget's name. That's right, I made my choice. That we did. Step a bit closer to Gidget. I'm gonna save again, because I don't wanna... Whamp. I step just a bit closer to Gidget. I feel strange. More scared than I've ever felt in my life, while well, simultaneously, like I'm returning somewhere I've not been in a long, long time. A place I once found comfort in. Just looking at this baby and blushing, I'll be oh, oh, you're down bad, no, for real. I see them glance back, shoot me a little grin. It helps me refine a bit of my confidence. A bit, mind you. <laughs> it's getting lighter now. Dots of grayish green. Oh gosh, this whole scene is so scary. Gidget gestures forward and the four of us take off. But before Gidget starts to run, they twist back, throwing me a look of fear and grabbing my wrist. And we're running. We're always running anymore. Get its grip on my wrist. The Gidget yanks me out of the way just as they bring the giant hulk of an axe uh, straight down on the ground to our feet. I don't even realize I'm screaming as I fly through the air. Then go face first into the ground a few yards away. I can still feel the tremors rippling through the earth from the axe's impact. I hug at the ground, hug at Gidget's arms around me, keeping me pinned, then try to move, push myself back up. Gidget pushes me back down. Iggy, stay back, okay? Get as far away as you can. I can hear the quiver in their voice. I feel them give a squeeze of reassurance. And then they- I love the battle stance. I can't bring myself to look, not while my head is still trying to stop spinning. I don't see Genzo shout and jump onto its tail. I don't see Orlon latch onto that thing's claw. I don't see Gidget racing towards me, stumbling to the ground next to me. Only when their face overtakes my vision as I realize I've fallen. Iggy! My body is screaming at me, a sharp shooting pain radiating from my back, and a cold wetness forming in the back of my shirt. Icky, oh god, oh god. They're lifting my head off the ground now. They're fuzzy at first, a hazy outline blob of gold, but they sharpen into view as I take a uh, gasping breath and feel my lungs expand. Icky, are you okay? Say something. 
I wince, attempt to move my arms and legs, my fingers. Everything still seems to work despite the throbbing ache. I'm okay. I have to be if we're gonna get through this. Their faces contorted. I'm okay, really. This is accompanied by another roar, a pain one, and both of us see Orlum sinking. It sends a cascade. My god. For a good long moment, they seem to be lost in shock. The sight of it taking another swing at Genzo, though, must snap them out of it, because they grimace and push them back onto their feet. This isn't over yet, they say with the winds. They look tired, really tired, but they pick up their pole all the same. Iggy, stay back, okay? Then they're off again. Oh, they're off! Because there's no other choice. That's true. I need to get up. <laughs> I need to do something. And we're back at it, baby. It looks so funny when just everything is just, like, around. I'm gonna get a drink really, really fast. Gotta get some water, so I'll be back. <laughs> I need to water so bad. My throat, help. I find this funny because Our Wonderland was the first stream that I technically did. Uh, so like, and this I think is my longest stream to date too. <laughs> you can get water, it's been a lot, yeah. It has, it's been really good though. You wanna come up here? Come here. Diamond wants to join. She was here with me at the beginning of the stream. Hey. Good girl. Come here. I'll give you pets. Hi Diamond. Say hi baby. Meow. Say meow. She's flicking her tail. Close enough. Look at the camera. Everybody wants to see Kibby. <laughs> she's purring so loud her little ears she's so soft she's like a big plush you're not really shutting either good on you good on you that's my baby girl i love her very much she's my happy little thing and she'll probably just stay here on my lap until she's very plush she takes very good care of her coat <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you. I like when you like pet a cat and their little face is mm, like smushy. Oh, don't put your ass in the camera, please. I'm talking so good about you. Don't make a mess. Sit there. I don't know what you're gonna do. <laughs> She's just standing off, like slightly off camera. There, there's her tail. Don't smack my camera away! She's just making her rounds. Gotta flash the bum real fast. <laughs> yeah, for real. Don't make an ass of yourself, Diamond. Alright, she's leaving. She got what she wanted and she left. Queen! In good timing, too. So instead I sit and tremble as Gidget attempts to wrap what's left in my hand. The pain feels so distant. I can't decide if it's because I'm in so much pain that my brain can't decide if it hurts, or if I'm simply become numb. Maybe a little bit of both. I lean against Gidget's shoulder as their fingers tend to mine, their grip soft. <laughs> I can't look at it, can't look down at all that red. It's too much right now. So instead I just stare up at the far line of the trees as I feel the cloth cinch tight around my skin. Genzo is hunkered down on the boulder across from us, his gaze pointed downward. 
Three bloody gashes have torn apart his shirt and bruises line his cheek. His eyes are dark. Orla, meanwhile, is wandering around the clearing. I see him kneel down to pick something up at the corner of my eye, but it isn't until he's made his way back and is holding it in my face that I realize what it is. I'd have collected your dis disunited digits had I thought they'd be of Oh, he says the same thing that he said with Gunzo. As is, I doubt they'd bring us any solace. Yeah, probably not. Time to rip off the thing's head. Iggy. Uh, Gizzard's voice is dour, yet soft next to my ear. I sniff. Wipe at the snot leaking down my nose. Stare down at the doll. Iggy! I feel Gidget's body jump, and when I look up, I see Genzo and Orlam staring at me. I sniff again, let the head drop in the grass. She needs her attention and pets. That she does. Get Gidget. Gidget, help me! Gidget, help! Only to immediately ram straight into Gidget's back when they stop walking. I let out a stifled gasp and immediately jerk my head up, only to see everyone straight up ahead. And here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. This scene will never not be insane to me. Like, I don't think there's going to be, like, way too many times that I see it and I'm brought right back to this moment. And it's cool that it's documented that I get to see it, but it's just like, God. Fucking what an ending. I just, like, I can't get over it. Like, even if I'm here for the third time, I cannot get over how this ending ended. Like, it ended somehow exactly how I imagined it would and, and not at all, at, at all, how I thought it would. You know? Like, it's, it's... Endings are hard as fuck. For me... For me, writing a story, like, I love doing the beginning. I don't even mind doing the middle because there's, like, some fun stuff that happens in the middle. But the ending is always so fucking hard. Um, I left a very rarely comment on the itch page. LaVal! <laughs> Saying the ending is gorgeous. Like, it, it's just perfect. It's incredible. Endings are hard as fuck. They're so hard. Because there's so much, especially for something as big as this, you know? Like, there's so much anticipation. You know you're not going to make everybody happy with it. You know, and you have to stay true to what you want to do and what the whole story is building to. And you don't want to let anybody down. And it's just like, ah! I can only imagine. But even with all that stuff, they still fucking knocked it out of the park fucking did a bucks and home run it like oh my god and the game is huge yeah it actually is a perfect ending like i can actually say that i'm like i don't think it could have ended any better i can't think of a way that it could end better you know and so true to its themes that it's built up and yet added some stuff i didn't even think about and i don't know it just it's really good it's very precious and it hurts <laughs> The ending is the hardest part for me too, in general. That's why it dissatisfies me with most, uh, with my games. But Carrot did not fail. Nope. And I love this. Every time I see it, I'm like, "Damn, Iggy, you tell me." I love it. And I was like, actually, like, I don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> so I felt so good and elated when I didn't have to make a choice. Fucking brilliant, really. Like, like it was catharsis for me. Like, it was euphoric when I was, like, at work thinking about how I wanted Lord of Lies to end. And I'm not going to spoil it. But, like, it was so hard for me to come up with, like, a really good ending for such a long game and for so many characters and all this different stuff. And I wanted it to feel true to its themes. And, like, that was probably the hardest I ever had writing an ending. But it felt so right. And, like, when I came up with it, I was like, yep, yeah, that's the ending. And I, and I can only, like... And, of course... You know, like they might have had this plan from the start in a sense too, of like just, it gives me hope for One Piece, you know, One Piece will end or anything that's like super long basically, like it's possible to end it really well, but you know, it's funny because I was watching a Mass Effect analysis thing and Mass Effect like, like almost universally is agreed that it has like a shit ending, you know, and I don't, I don't envy them though because it's so fucking hard to end things correctly, like it's just and in romance it's a little bit easier i think because you know just get them together and things will be fine but even then there could be like the climax might not hit and maybe it's i don't know like maybe it loses its steam maybe it's boring it's just scary it's a lot no absolutely especially when you have super long running series yeah mm. fucking terrifying to be honest i feel very inspired though i do like, Rectif Rectifier is going to be very long. Like, the main game is fucking humongous. You know, and then, like, the idea of trying to end, like, seven different routes, like, in a way that's satisfying for everybody. It's going to be difficult. Uh, but, you know, I've got a team of writers, so that one's a little bit easier. I can't imagine doing it by myself. <laughs> I'll just say that one for free. Um, 
but that, I, I'm pumped. And in bloom is going to be chill. I don't think that's going to be a big deal, but you know. But we will leave it. And I'm excited for whatever Carrot puts out afterward. I want them to take a break. I will reiterate that again. Take a fucking break. Play some games. Have fun. Refill your battery. And come back swinging. You know? Because you're, I, you've made a permanent fan of me. And I'll be coming back. <laughs> I'll be coming back. Coming right back. Take a break. It's your time to go upstate. Let's go outside. You know, whatever. I don't know the lyrics. Clearly. I know the melody. I know the... I don't know the lyrics. I know you're seeing this on the VOD, yeah. We're looking at you. There you go, point into the camera. I was not expecting Sadie's mangledness to be in the tree either. That's fucking insane. That's crazy. Like, that was giving me Soma vibes, if you've ever seen Soma. But basically, like, it's just about robots keeping, like, some humans alive, and it's, like, actually cosmic horror. It's really scary. <laughs> Uh, that was insane, like stomach churning, yeah. And it was even censored, and I was like, ah! <laughs> Help me! The horror did not end, you know. And this music, god damn. It's crazy that people can, like, make shit like this, you know? I feel like it's a story that I'll probably revisit like years from now as well and like go back and watch the VODs and things and or just play it on my own by myself. I think it'd just be really fun. I I, I don't want to imagine not seeing my babies anymore, you know? I'll miss them. We gotta lock in and see all the wish. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true, I forgot. Thank you. Fucking tomatoes. Good riddance. Please come here. I wish I could see Ithka. I wish she was dead. I wish my mom would leave me alone for a change. I wish that my mom was happier. I wish I was smarter. I wish my parents would give me a break. I wish I had a family who loved us. Oh, there was a lot of sad ones in there. I think the I wish my mom was happier might have been from Genzo. Hmm. And this wish is so sweet and so worth the build up. Like, it's just so good. There's so much build up. This game is just build up the game. <laughs> like, holy shit. We love to see it. I wonder if I was, I wish I was handsome as Gidget after wishing to be beautiful. Maybe. I'm gonna cry. For fuck's sakes, Bucks, you're gonna get yourself lost looking vexed. Genzo takes, uh, takes off across the clearing with a frustrated groan across the circle orlam grows visibly nervous everyone's leaving he looks left right then abruptly takes off following the other two off into the dark gidget looks back at me lips curling into a smile iggy let's go they start to move towards the tree J just a second i step forward hands raised then we both just stand there looking at each other i feel like like i have something really important to say but i just can't remember G gidget i i swallow my gaze drops and I can feel myself start to tremble. Don't worry, Iggy. Huh? I blink back the water forming once more in my eyes. Don't worry about what? Gidget just smiles. Everything's gonna be fine, I promise. I blink. Then smile. Smile is a thousand memories, a thousand moments of heartbreak, a thousand moments of joy, a thousand moments of love so strong it makes my heart fucking ache. All pass through my thoughts in an instant, forcing the tears back down my cheeks. I chuckle sheepishly and wipe at my eyes. Well, when you put it that way. And then I take their hand and we go running after the others. And I like how the pronoun's still stuck here. I love that. It's such a small detail, but it makes all the difference. And this time maybe Gidget knows themselves better and is happier because of it. And our Wonderland, they definitely do behind. I mean, we kind of know already, but I wonder how, how is Cecil gonna play into this? <laughs> no, no. I'd like to tell you everything was perfect um, for us after this. I do love that. Every time I see it, it just makes me really happy. Gidget and I joined the team hackathon spring of senior year. We somehow rose above the competition to take first place. Of course you did, dream team! Oh my gosh! Gidget is so handsome, fucking get me, kill me. And after, and at after prom, we made ourselves a promise that both of us would make it through Springwood software development program and maybe do better than the others in the process. <laughs> 
Come college, we both got to work doing just that. Though I did start to notice some changes in Gidget. While I stayed hunkered down in my dorm room coding or playing games, Gidget was getting out there and making friends, joining groups on campus. They even started dabbling in some art classes, eventually deciding to tack a, a graphic design major on, onto their degree. Little by little, they started dragging me along with them too. First to the occasional LGBTQIA club meeting, then to the off and on volunteer work with the Campus Pride. It was through these meetings and meeting many new people I met that I started figuring a lot out about myself too. And I came out to them as asexual our junior year. That didn't surprise them. <laughs> well, you know. Yes, Cecil! It was through these organizations that Gidget met Cecil, an exchange student from the UK. Somehow they became fast friends and the three of us formed a little trio. Oh my goodness! Me, the awkward introvert, Cecil, the grumpy stooge, and Gidget, our cheery leader. And occasionally Orlov. <laughs> this is so cute, I love this for them. Aw. After graduating, the three of us found a place together. Rent's not too bad when you can split her three ways, after all. Gidget found work as a junior designer at local nonprofit while I began uh, working freelance. Aw, oh, it wasn't until Gidget's promotion to senior designer, when they came home buzzed and ecstatic, that they kissed me for the first time. It felt natural, like it had only been a matter of time. <laughs> and they kissed Cecil <laughs> and Orlov. Holy shit! Cute. He's always over, my god. <laughs> well, I'm just moving. Split it four ways. What the fuck? It's your business money. After that, we just kind of just settled into life. Our life. A life that's occasionally chaotic, but always warm. Always welcoming. Always home. <laughs> Even Orla. <laughs> Orla, just move in. Like, what the fuck? Stop playing around. A life I've chosen for myself and no one else. I still get the occasional deja vu, the sudden flash of a memory, sometimes so brief and intense it takes the wind out of me, other times long and drawn out, filling me with a sense of long lost melancholy. My heart knows what I've been through, even if my head forgets sometimes. The heart never forgets, Gidget it remembers too. Sometimes we'll be hanging out and they'll randomly bring up a memory. Oh my god, Iggy, do you remember when? Whoa, did this just take you back? Oh god, this is just like... And I always have to pause a moment, let the memory fizzle to the surface, find it there, buried deep within the synopsis. But I always do. And then I'll smile. Yeah, I'll say. Even though it doesn't make a lick of sense. And the two of us will go out about our day. How precious, guys. We finished it. We did it. Oh, the, the trophy. Cute. We earned that fucking trophy, dog. We earned it. That was very cute. God damn. Wow. And, that, and I think a part of that too is just it ends so wholesome and it's like Jesus Christ this isn't even our wonderland anymore but it feels so fitting so fitting you earned that fucking trophy <laughs> yeah it's been such a long journey man T take a load off really you earned it I mean you earned it ten times over but you know what I mean excited to see the babies show me Ah, oh, look at them how sweet. I think we ended on a really great note, too. I love that order. I think that order really sandwiches it very well. That's just so precious. Good for them. Good for them. Fucking yeah. Holy shit. What a journey. What a journey. It's been a journey. I started Our Wonderland as my first stream back two months ago. Yesterday was my two-month anniversary, but it wasn't worth celebrating. Yeah, but, you know, uh, ultimately, so... It took me two months to get through all of it, and like, what a two months it's been. I don't know. It's gonna feel so weird streaming without playing Our Wonderland, because we've done it every fucking week. Um, so I miss it. It's very special to me. It will always hold a special place in my heart. Um, you know, like, I have so many emotions and feelings about it that I knew I was gonna have. Um, no, and I love that Iggy- sorry, I'm gonna just read your thing. Uh, no, and I love that Iggy have an unconventional life together, not a traditional when Gidget thought they wanted a traditional nuclear family. Yeah! But this works so much better for them. It's wonderful. I love it very, very much. Um, 
and it's it's just been a journey it's been incredible i i'm so thankful for this story i'm so glad it exists i'm so glad i know the fucking dev it feels good to have somebody who made this like read my shit and find any value in it whatsoever that to me will always be like wait what you know where we've lost the plot you know but regardless i feel like closer to other devs in this space i feel it, this is exactly what i needed you know it was a story that i'd been wanting to engage with for many years you know even before i became a dev and then so many things kind of got in the way of it and i finally made time and made space for it and i think i couldn't have played it at a better time in my life um and it is just kind of like funny that i came to this like huge conclusion about myself yesterday and you know right before playing this today and that being like a central theme of it and maybe in some senses maybe it's one of the games that did help me you know still be like you know do a journey for myself and i think that if it could do that for me who's a fully grown woman who for a while was comfortable with my sexuality and knew things about myself already you know like it could do it for so many people younger people and um it's just a story that deserves to exist and, and i cannot sing its praises enough like i i genuinely am in love with it i think about it all the time you know like it's probably one of my favorite visual novels like uh, indie visual novels for fucking sure probably favorite just stories told in a very long time like it, not much can really hold a candle to it because of just how much work and love that is put into it there there is no shortage of love that is in this project i'm sure that's evident to anybody who is either watching this or has played it for themselves or for to you carrot like that's why stories are good i will always scream it it's stories are only as good as what you put into them you know and you love everybody you love every part of this world these characters this this everything it's wonderfully crafted it's well thought out it took three years but honestly this is the kind of story that could take 15 fucking years you know like the fact that you were able to do it by yourself like what the fuck you know and it's basically one of your first projects too so it's like whoa, what what are you built out of huh you know and it's just it's wonderful it, it genuinely is so great and i i just love it a lot i do i'm a permanent fan <laughs> i stan you know uh yes it really is inspiring when it comes to figuring self out no very much the same as genuinely properly one of my favorite visual novels i've ever seen there's so much love and care and effort put into it I agree it's full of so much passion and so much humanity and sensitivity it is amazing i do need to say that again is like if every dark story was like our wonderland this to me isn't a dark story darks i mean it's a dark fucking story let me just reiterate but what i mean is it's hopeful you know it had a good end and it had a good end in a way that's like it doesn't take away all that bad shit that happened either and i think like that's so hard to do it would be so easy for iggy to just be like i wish that everything undid itself and we were all back but you took the extra steps like there are so many times you could have made it easier on yourself and you didn't you you went for it because it der it deserves that extra leg work you know and it's like that is super fucking important like these topics aren't something that you can just easily wish away these are people's fucking lives like and you're so aware of what you're telling and how you're telling it and and so detail oriented and nothing gets overlooked and it's just like it's brilliant it's 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 generally the only it could only exist if you care that much it can only exist if you're as talented as you are like it, it is a combination of so many things it's incredible that a story like this even exists like and yeah it, so it's a dark story with dark things but it's handled so well like and it's got something in the end that it was earned and worth it exactly and it's so human it's the one of the most fucking human stories in the world even if you're in wonderland and all this crazy tomato shit and rabbits and shit is happening like nothing is more human like everything that happens is a result of like a real fucking thing that we can all experience all relate to you know um and like there were plenty of times in the story that I related. It was either in regards to my sexuality, being a woman, you know, discovering your sexuality, like separate from just like, oh, I'm bisexual, I'm gay, but like actually like how you navigate sex, what it means to you, how important is it to your relationships? You know, your relationship with your friends, if you're not close with somebody, do you still keep it going? You know, maintaining adult life. Like it's just, it is no shortage of like super important things that everyone needs to hear, no matter how old you are. It's a timeless story, you know? And I think it's also brilliant to just like, boil it down to the simplicity of childhood like when you're a child like there's only so many things that you long for but at the end of the day it's the same as what you want when you're a fucking adult you just want peace you just want love you just want you know to be seen that's it like when you boil it all down that's all everybody just wants they just want a place where they could be seen and accepted and loved and if you give it that they'll they'll grow it's like uh this tiktok i saw where she was just like well you know that's why 
telling people to just buck it up and get better or whatever isn't helpful because if you're growing a plant, you don't just shout at it and then it grows. You have to nurture it. You have to give it light. You have to, you know, care for it like a fucking tree, like anything, you know? And it's like, that's all they needed. They all had the potential within themselves to be better, but they needed the tools and the love and the care and all those small moments fucking matter, you know? And it makes you second guess how you navigate your friendships, your relationships, you know, like strangers, anybody. You don't just say shit even when you're mad and if you do you you fess up and you get better and you and you correct yourself you know and it's just like it's great and it's all shit that like even if you're aware of it and you're healthy and you're you know you put all together it, it's still something that it's good to remind yourself of how important it is how the butterfly effect or whatever like how far it can go and how and like how fucking stubborn these people are <laughs> that they had to do it hundreds and thousands of times to get to where they at you know what i mean to even get to this ending and how it all is still relevant too it's still technically all canon that's crazy i don't think i've ever seen a dating sim or anything close to ever doing that so like you know it's just everything i feel like i could just go on another hour of talking about every cool fucking thing that's in our wonderland you know but it speaks for itself. I don't need to say it. It said everything that I'm saying now. I'm just saying it in shorthand. It said it. And it said it in a lot more nuanced and nicer, more emotionally impactful way than I'm saying it. I'm just like, yeah, it's crazy. It's why I love art. It's, you know, it doesn't even feel defeatist. Like, I, I like, it's so good that I'm sitting here like, I'm never going to make anything this good. Like, it doesn't even feel like that. It genuinely just feels like, damn, it's possible. You know, it, it's possible that somebody can make a game this fucking good for free. For the fucking free. You know? Like, I don't think I've ever paid, played, paid for a game that was as worth it to me as an experience as our Wonderland just was for me. Like, I, I don't know if there is one, to be honest. Like... Yes, this is exact. All the side games canon somehow genius. Exactly. Not at all. And it feels like feel good story despite being a horror story. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's the thing. I think horror has a great capacity to really like touch on taboo topics in a comfortable way. It's, it's kind of like how comedy works. And I know that sounds crazy, but comedy gives you like the the tools to speak about something more serious in a lighthearted way. And horror gives you the tools to speak about like you know, those things, but in a very unadulterated, uncensored way. And I think that a lot of art has to kind of like be on the on the fence about that. And people are very bad. There are a lot of people who are very bad at writing horror for that reason, because they lose the humanity. That's kind of the big part. It's like, yeah, there's monsters. Yeah, there's this. But it's like, at the end of the day, we don't really even care about that. Like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it adds. But it's only cool if you give a fuck about who you're, you know, telling the story about. It only matters if what you're saying is actually scary and actually gets in your head and shit. Like, it has to come from a real place and I think a lot of people just think oh funny scary like it doesn't do anything you know and it's why I tend to not it's because it's so difficult that I don't really engage with it a lot same thing with comedy like comedy's hard as fuck and it's objective as fuck so it's hard for me to only enjoy like comedic stories almost exclusively because it's like well it has to have other things going on too and here's the thing our wonderland has fucking both because the story's hilarious you know it has some of the best romance i've seen which is crazy you know because like if i were to tell you oh this is a story about an ace character who you know goes through like this fucking hell world you know you'd be like oh well that's not very romantic it is that's the thing though it is like i don't think i've blushed more cared more felt more like love reading off the screen like so intimate that i'm like jesus maybe i shouldn't be here you know what I mean? Like, and that's what I go come to romance for is for those feelings. And it's heightened because we got to have some tragic romance. We got to have some like badass shit. Like we got to have it all, you know, we got to have it all. It it's genuinely incredible. I like, it's all coming to me now and settling on me. And I'm sure I'm going to be giving this exact same speech to my husband later, which I can't wait for him to hear. <laughs> He's going to be like, oh, cool, whatever, you know, but I think this like, Somehow, even though the game has a decent amount of people and people who love this game, it also doesn't have enough. <laughs> like that's that, that's the thing. It has it doesn't have enough love. It deserves the same amount of love that Undertale gets and more. You know, like in games similar to it, like it deserves to to be seen by more people. But then maybe there's a special thing about the more people you bring in, you know, then you get some fucking weirdos and it's like, eh. you know. So, and it's only possible because of the indie scene you know what i mean like for this to be curated in the way that it is i don't know that's super interesting and the fact that you know we might have helped in some way shape or form or whatever is like it's it's incredible 
completely agreed. It deserves to be known worldwide. <laughs> I'll Look, I'll scream it to anybody willing to listen, though. And I know that the stream did enable me to at least show it to a couple people who were weary about playing it for themselves. So I do feel very fortunate and, and privileged to be able to do that, you know, for, you know, to gain a couple fans here and there. And if the stream's enabled you to do that because it was a little too scary for you to do it yourself, I'm glad I could be that person. I'll do it every fucking day of the week then. Because it, it genuinely was, it was no problem. <laughs> Ain't no thing, baby girl, you know? So I'm glad that I could do that for people. And um, I hope it was fun for you to see me go through all the craziness. I was very wary about picking up the story because I am squeamish and I do have a lot of issues and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, and my anxiety is fucking awful. Like, <laughs> it's the worst. You know, I, I wanted to get on a different image. There you go. That's fitting. Um, so, like, I'm glad that I kind of sucked it up and fucking did it. And you can thank one of the side games for that. O2A2 really, li like, like brought this to my attention and I was like okay I can't sit by idle anymore I really do need to play it now so and I'm glad that we did get to experience it together we trauma bonded great it was incredible scaredy cats stick together exactly <laughs> I don't know if I'm like a horror fan I don't know if I'm gonna be seeking out horror content or anything like that but I am a carrot fan and I will be seeking out carrot content wherever it is wherever it comes um so I'm glad for it I'm glad that it exists and I'm sad it's over you know, ultimately, like I, I knew this is going to come and granted it's only been, you know, it's only been five hours with it basically just in this time, but it's been a couple months of it and add it all together. It's like, a, I'm going to miss it. I, I'm going to miss kids are cracking stupid ass jokes. I'm going to miss Orlov's weird ass, weird ass. I'm going to miss Gidget's handsomeness. I'm going to miss Bucks. I'm going to miss Bucks now, you know, like I, I love that they got some more character too and they feel so like simple, but so you know, well put together as well. And I'm gonna miss Iggy, you know, I miss Iggy. But I'm sure we'll see plenty of them. I know you love these characters very much, so they'll never technically go away, but I just, uh, I'm gonna miss it. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> You're right. It was so good. And then there, it's, and I think what's something special too, is you could tell how much, like, people fucking love this game. Like, you know, I love going through like the Tumblr thing sometimes and seeing what everybody's asking and the fan art and the animations and stuff. And like, it's the kind of story that really brings a lot of people together and makes them like want to talk about it. Like you could talk about it forever and you could speculate and you can put your own shit in. And it, it's just, it's, it's so much to so many. Um, and like, that's the only goal I have for myself is to create stories in which it, it, gains that kind of response out of people where people have to talk about it they have to ask you questions they have to think about it it you know it like burrows itself into your brain and makes nests like it's it's one thing to make a good story it's another thing to like have a story become like your your new identity almost you know what i mean like it's wonderful um it's a skill you know i i'll try to be implementing that into my own works in the future wish me luck and I wish you all the luck in the world, Carrot. Don't feel like you actually have to one-up what you did here. You know, this will always exist. I think what's good for you is to just do what is already working and just be in love with what you're doing and continue to make it no matter how weird or, or anything. Like, you're plenty talented to pull it off, and I'm willing to listen to anything you gotta say. So, you know, that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, good luck. Good luck and, and enjoy your break. You've earned it. Uh, I know your birthday's coming up soon, so look forward to that. You know, just have a good time. Do what makes you happy and what you love. Because I mean, like I said, it works. It, it will always work, I think. As long as it's authentic, I'm sure it'll be meaningful and touching. Absolutely. Oh, goodness. So yeah, that was a speech. Um, well, that was the end of this week as well, in terms of like my schedule. Um, I played a lot of Nano Reno uh, entries this week and just a lot of streams. I streamed five times this week, which I usually do, but I did it in a row, so it felt a lot more like, ugh. And then, um, so next week I will be playing some. Oh, I'll have my schedule out pretty soon, but I'll give you just like the cliff notes. So we are going to be playing Quaint again on Tuesday. That's still a thing. We're getting closer to the end of Quaint, I think. Um, so that's going to be another story that I'm really enjoying that's just going to come to an end. And I'm like, oh, you know, um, uh, great. I'm playing your demo next week, which I'm really excited. And I'll also be playing Snacks and Lacey uh, as demos of like the new Daughter, <laughs> Daughter of Scoundrel. And um, there's also an extended version of ardency heart of the rebellion so if you've never seen those stories or read them uh feel free to come by the stream love them i've played them originally when they came out and released but um in regards to ardency and uh Do <laughs> and dois um but they're new now so i'm excited to to revisit them in preparation because they will be fully 
released come Otome Jam. Well, at least Art and Sea will, and I think Doets will have a couple routes finished for Otome Jam. So getting those out of the way so we can get ready and not out of the way that always sounds so bad it is i don't know what word to use oh quaint though has many endings to explore so we can enjoy it longer he <laughs> good so i think that's and then more and then last is ronde doug doing sandra's route so that will be what next week is which is another like five streams i think um but they're gonna be good streams they're gonna be fun the fun don't stop but r.a.p trauma thursdays <laughs> <laughs> oh no you know and uh, so you fill it with something else but yeah we'll miss it but our wonderland will always have a special spot in my heart and on these streams and period so goodbye everyone it was fun it was really fun and i'll miss it r.a.p drama thursday <laughs> the cycle breaks again so but thank you guys for showing up and keeping me company, especially with this impromptu stream today. Because uh, the second I saw it, literally, it maybe five, it wasn't up like two minutes and I downloaded that shit and put it on here and started playing. I didn't waste a goddamn moment and now I won't be spoiled. Because that's what I was really worried about. I just didn't want to be like scrolling through Twitter or Tumblr and somebody just dropped something and I'm like, no, <laughs> I just didn't want it. So I was scared, but ain't got nothing to worry about now. <laughs> now everybody got to be worried about me. I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna relax now, get some food. My husband will be home soon, and I appreciate you guys dropping by and keeping me company. And I hope to see you next week for the rest of the stuff. Bye bye! I'm leaving. <laughs>